Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the pre-show for week six of LCK Spring 2024. I'm your host, Atlas. I am joined by Orcs and Hooney as we look to delve in to what happened in round one and what we might expect moving into round two. Man, the very end of round one, full of surprises, full of elation and uh, a little bit too much excitement, perhaps, if you were to look on KT's week. Yeah, well, I mean, you say surprises, but I think the Broleavers really just got rewarded for their Broleaf, you know. I'm That's now fair. a Broleaver. Are you a Broleaver? I still believe my Guangdong Freaks. Really? They're still top of the East. They, oh, can, yeah. still, they can still make it. For up. now. They could technically, however, they are, yeah, from the West to the East, unfortunately dropping down below D+. A little bit unprecedented because it looked like they were in a surefire position to possibly even challenge KT for their position in fourth place. And bro, we thought we definitely lost, and now DRX are beneath them. It's crazy. Yeah, and I also think if you look at how Quantum Freak's position could have been, if they'd beaten bro both those times, they would be ahead of KT. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad that they're still in sixth place. They still have a big lead over Fear X, but the fact that they could have been in fourth place if they just beaten Bro, who hadn't won a single series before they uh, beat Quantum Freaks two times, it's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, also, I'm really, really excited. I can't wait for, like, playing each other on the top side of the, the standing, right? Like, T1 Genji, the next yeah. one is coming. Like, also, the ATLEs is kind of coming with the third party as well. So, like, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, our top three is absolutely in flux with the fact that T1 and Genji are so incredibly close. Speaking of T1 and Genji, Trovi and Fake are currently at the very top of our POG standings as well. Mid lane is abound, in fact, with Showmaker and uh, Zekka kind of hot in their heels, with Zeus also there in uh, equal third place. Yeah, I've had a lot of pop-up mid performances. Uh, I think, you know, there was obviously a lot of pop-up Corky games, but he's gone now, but like Orianna, Azir, we've seen those really be pretty impactful. Yeah, I mean, this is the main reason I'll retire. I should have just played mid. I would have played more. Yeah, um, and you know, Rumble mid, I'm pretty sure Trovi was playing a bit of that a little while ago and stuff like that. I'm sure Nah mid could be a thing. Uh, let's have a look at who are the winners on the predictions. Orcs, what do you have to say for yourself, mate? You know, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, go for it. Sometimes you just gotta believe. You know, I believed in Fear X uh, and uh, I wasn't rewarded. I have a feeling it was more about disbelief on your <laughs> behalf there, um, but we'll just have to see. Uh, as now it is time to get towards the Gold King. Very excited to see who this is going to be as well. And we have also a little bit of a presentation here. This is the Gold King medal that Uribank will be giving out. This is in fact silver, and the players' names will be inscribed inside the lid there as well which is uh, going to be very, very exciting. You'll have to take my word for its authenticity. I'm not going to bite it on screen. Shout out to the Kwandong Freaks. Let's uh, have a look at who it's going to be. It's going to be Zekka that picks it up, though. The king of making money in week five. Yeah, and they've employed this really winning strategy on YP Sports in that they pick Yone for Zekka. And it just works. I mean, that's it. I mean, he's the right now, like, probably war, you know, like, probably best player in your as a Yone and it's like known as like he's really good at middle champion as well he knows like how when to pick he knows like how to actually execute it perfectly by himself i think that his main strength is like he's not like reliant to jungler like anything he just like play 1v1 he can actually just go through the lane even though it's like really tough matchup he just becomes a huge become a super soldier yeah he is uh he's an absolute monster i think the right times to pick yone are when it isn't banned for Humble Life Esports, that's the time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds, uh, that's that sounds when you make solid. that one work. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, we have more awards though. Um, as I do bring up the next one, of course, OP Player of the Week is coming in hot as well. So we'll see who's going to pick that one up with a couple of bro victories. I wonder whether some of their votes will get through Humble Life on a 2 0 week as well, toppling KT. And it will be Viper that collects it, the man that was able to. Uh, in a 55-minute game, go up against a Smolder as a, 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 a Lethality Varus and win. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Deft had like 600 stacks at one point. Like, this was as scaling as you can get on the Smolder. And yet Viper had such a good game, consistently getting off tons of damage, able to pick people off with the ultimate, and just pos positioning pretty flawlessly. 
Yeah, I mean, also, I think for me, like, I think all the teammates also play really, really well and just, like, actually be, was be able to build up the, the actual the Viper, how strong he was the, been performing, which is, like, Whoa. I think the, the support, especially, you know, and no jungle, Pina too. And uh, carry a vote for Huni. I kind of knew, I mean, I kind of knew Viper is going to get it, so I was like, this is Alistair, Alistair Believer. I was just, a, I was a believer in our Lord, and I stand by it. I stand by it wholeheartedly. I think Morgan had an absolute renaissance up against Dudu as well. Uh, so I was excited about that one. The Polu votes absolutely based. Orcs and Chronicler, um, amazing stuff. Yeah, you know, I think Polu was just such a big factor in those two. He's Romans. very big. That yeah, is true. Yeah, he is a he's a tall guy. I played a lot of Nautilus, who is also a tall guy, and uh, yeah, managing to land that 2-0 for Bro, which was such a big week for them. Yep. Uh, I think the amount of votes going over to Viper makes perfect sense, though. I think he was my consideration sort of straight out of the gate. And then I was like, but bro, managed to perform this back-to-back -back upset. And so I just had to throw one out for my boy. Uh, and when you can vote for Morgan, when you can justify it, you do it. That's uh, that's my playbook. That's basically where I live. Um, let's have a look back, though. It is time to delve into memory lane and uh, see about what happened in round one. Starting off with OK Savings Bank Brion and the fact that they saved themselves from the potential 0-18. And they managed to get back-to-back -back victories, unprecedented, as we had everything so lined up on our eastern side, and they just threw a wrench into it. And I think there's two sides to this coin. You know, on the one hand, Bro definitely stepped up, definitely showed an improvement, but also Quandon Freaks uh, kind of stepped down, I think it's safe to say. You know, we saw them in a really good form at the start of the season since the addition of Bowl. Bull didn't look in form uh, in this series. Dudu definitely didn't look in form in this series. And the team just looked a lot weaker than we've seen them before. Yeah, I mean, as you guys saw, like our prediction, like it was like so one-sided to yeah. the Freak. Is that because like they were, like as we said, they crept in actually above the KT. They crept in fourth in this week. The standing was starting off. But the thing is like, they're show them actually showing against a weaker team. is like, it's so inconsistent. Like they actually have to get the right to pick, like even draft or like how to execute it. Like there's so Look many the things that was being so rewarded here, by the way. That is raw emotion. The power of Broleaf is uh, is absolutely huge. We're having a look here, though, at the the rise of Bull um, before the collapse that we saw in the last week, because his debut really did breathe new life into this team that was really struggling. Yeah, and I think th that's the thing. If, if Quantum Freaks, because obviously Bull coming up from challenges, expectations were in super high. If he'd never set the shoot standard for himself, I don't think would be so shocked, but he really was playing very well in the earlier matches of the season. And it, it, you know, obviously the team looked like they were a completely different team with him on the roster. And it felt like it was just so exciting to watch them play. And I hope we get a return to that form. It'd be really disappointing if this is like the beginning of the end, because this roster definitely has more to show. I think also the people actually really figure out really well like what Bull's good at it, what actually Bull's strength they've delivered to the team that just bring the victory. So I think that these days, I think it's just more so that people know like what we need to ban against Bull. And so, uh, Orcs, could you remind us what the uh, the Cassante copy pasta is? You know, I don't know it by heart. I probably should at this point, but I just... Uh, this champion's so ridiculous. I'm so tired of seeing it. The damage it does, the fact that, you know, he's just so hard to kill, so tanky, and then he just, like, look at this. How is this okay? He's just going in. Oh, you just one shot, by the way. Have I'm pretty fun. sure it's a skill Good difference. Luck. Yeah, totally skill difference. Absolutely. I mean, he can play really well at the yeah. same time. But the, I think there's only a few champions can do that. <laughs> just few. Let's just, start with yeah. Just start with the K. Just few I think champions. It, yeah, it's both one. K and Sante. Yeah. Both of those champions oh can do it. <laughs> oh my God. And Lahen's saying Keen there instead of Cassante, so that's pretty impressive. And we also had Faker achieve about all of the milestones ever. 3,000 kills, 900 games, 600 wins, uh, all in one round. Pretty nutty. Yeah, really nutty, and I feel like these records are already going to be beaten by Faker when he gets the next set of <laughs> yeah. records. Uh, he has some huge achievements for him and obviously such a long-standing career. The battle for second place uh, is what's happening here in the LCK because Faker has first in basically everything. I think except like losses, perhaps. I think that like Keen is up there because he's been playing for so long and was on the Afrika Freaks now, uh, Kwandong, for a very long time, not achieving too many victories. So the fact that you 
the thing that you don't hold the record in is only the negatives is kind of nutty. Let's have a look at some of the round one data that we did pick up here as Pays the most kills, Beryl the most assists, Chovy with 777 DPM is kind of nuts. Like that number is very high. Yeah, I feel like it definitely helped out when we had like the Corky Jace picks that were very coming true for him. But even on other picks, he's been having a, a pretty masterful uh, performance as well. I think it's interesting to see how things have sort of developed over the course of the split. Like we have the Oriana obviously being super high presence, but the first couple of weeks she wasn't seen as much. Uh, we have the Azir who's on top five picks, 55% win rate. He actually started with a really low win rate and then it kind of came back with a resurgence after the Lunar New Year. For me, I think it was a really interesting to KT the, the most about this was on barrel, which is yeah. I think the reliant on the barrel on the barrel like on KT. That, that could be a you know, it's it's pretty good thing. At the same time, I feel like they also kind of have to do in the, like the individually well the other lane because like I think the barrel trying to be participated in everything. The KT I think could be should be more become a pro, proactive like by just by themselves by just player, and I think that's gonna make a little bit better. Yeah. Let's have a look at the pick ban uh, for week five. Uh, going less far back, it's not all of round one. This is just last week. And Senna sitting at 7-0, uh, 100% oh, win rate and 100% presence. This champion is bonkers. There are seven victories before this as well. Yeah, and you know, we were calling for this champion just to be banned constantly um, and teams really need to adhere to it. You also, uh, I feel like it's been banned away a lot, but you can see, I mean, the numbers here, if you take away like that 100% win rate, like it was a lot more even before this patch, which is interesting because we had the double support items nerfed. We're thinking maybe that's going to hurt Senna. Feels like it's actually helped her. She's not farming, but getting more stacks. And then your support ends up with so much gold. And the thing is, you're not dealing with an opponent doing the same thing, right? We don't have like the Blood Song Lucian coming out. This is the issue, right? Yeah. Of the Lucian. Uh, this is the downside, yeah. right? So I think the uh, also, like it was a 7-0 straight up. And it's like nine losing streak and makes the actually negative win rate. So I think that hurts a lot for them. Yeah, it uh, really did go from, uh, you know, the prime duo towards the bottom side of the map to being not so great at all. Smolder as well, bit of mixed reception as he debuted last week. Five and six is going to be that win rate. And then Twist of Fate on the top side of the map. Uh, Keen picking up a victory. I think Kingen was the one that debuted it and looked fantastic as well. And all around the world, this one has been picking up steam. Yeah, I feel like it's one that in the right situation, really strong in the right matchup, it's very oppressive, but we're still not seeing it show up too often yet. Yeah, I mean, because the weakness is like pretty clear and also like, it's really like, you know, it's like it's, it could get really easy to get risk. Like, I think that also the reward is like not too big yet. I think the big people haven't really actually proved a lot, but I think it's still one of the pick that it could be like really strong for the later in the game. Yeah, next one is going to be Nautilus. We'll have a look at that one as well, because this guy has been a little bit around the track, right? Because a lot of priority, but is being paired with a lot of different things to mixed success. Yeah, I think we saw the start of this patch that Senna Nought was really strong. And so what happened is people would leave Senna open occasionally, and then they'd pick the Nought to deny the combo. And then Senna's 100% win rate, so Nought just kept suffering losses as a result. Uh, and as a result, his, his win rate has tanked. I don't think he's as weak as this is implied. I think it's really about what he's being picked into and also sometimes what he's being paired with like this smolder which hasn't really gone too well yeah i mean the pair was like we saw some like the few games actually they got dual kill on the bot lane which is like not really ideal for smolder especially like no one's want to hook but smolder doesn't really want to fight and they actually become just losing 2v2 it's like pretty much the same as a virus too like i think they, if they want to pressure more like wouldn't be a nose pair yeah, I agree with you. I think that like this is one of those things that looks fantastic with Senna. Picking it away though, and generally pickaways just don't feel that great. Um, but let's move on. Let's have a look at what to expect this week. There are some uh, some banger matchups, and there are some very important matchups as well. Of course, your eyes get drawn to Genji versus KT. That rematch could be a bit of a banger, but we'll see how it goes. KT versus DK as well. It's a tough week for uh, KT in general, but it's also a potential tough week for Quandong Freaks trying to find that bounce back. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in the Quandong Freaks Nongshim because up until this point, it definitely would have been Quandong Freaks, but Nongshim, you know, they've had some decent performances. They have. Uh, Huni, congratulations. First on predictions for round one. Easy. 
Uh, second place is Chronicler. I'm in third, and I just keep predicting the same things as Chronicler and Hooney, so I'm never going to create any sort of uh, of a comeback here, because as you can see, we're relatively aligned. Valdez kind of went off the deep end with the Kwandong Freaks prediction in comparison to us, but I don't think that that doesn't make sense. I just think that a lot of us have felt the Kwandong Freaks collapse. You know, I went for a vote against D+, that was just me alone, and it backfired. And then I did it again with the Fear X matchup. I doubled down, and you know what? It, it backfired again, and the only response <laughs> is to triple down. <laughs> I've got to win eventually. Okay, my house is on this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe like wait, wait for the T1 matchup or the Gen G matchup perhaps. Um, then everyone will vote T1 in it, right? It has to be the upset. That's the only way I make my points back, right? You it go up or you go down. Yeah, exactly, right? You're not staying at the same Am I the genius or you guys kick me off the show for being so wrong? Do you know what? You're still going to be on the show even if your predictions are god-awful. So don't you worry about it, Orcs. Your job is safe. But now it is time to get into the intro and start week six. Yeah. 
방동 파이팅! 파이팅! <웃음> Hello and welcome to the LCK. We are back on Wednesday to start off week six with Kwangdong Freaks up against Gen G. I am Valdez. With me is Wolf tonight, and we're going to be jumping into this first series. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, Gen G definitely the favorites coming into this one after Kwangdong had a very rough week against Bro. Yeah, really tough one. Back to back losses there against Bro and against Old Nemesis Gen G. It is going to be a very tough match up there. So, you know, we talked about this a lot leading into the switch from round one to round two. Will we see a mid season collapse of Kwangdong Freaks as we saw in summer? I'm not ready to say we're there yet, but the strength of schedule is very tough for this team right now. After taking those back-to-back -back losses to Bro, it could happen. It could happen, and we're hoping that it doesn't for their sake. And for, you know, we liked having another team on the west side to really shake things up with Kwangno Freaks having that big uh, surge in the middle of round one but we'll have to wait and see. Quantum Freaks looking to rejoin the west side as they are currently in sixth then have joined the east side versus Genji racing to the top. Genji only, I believe, a couple of games score behind T1 sitting at eight and one. So pretty good at the moment. Yeah, uh, very much a race to first place between Genji and T1 right now. Any single game you drop in any series that isn't the T1 series as either team, you know, or the if you're T1 the Gen G series, uh, could hinder your ability to actually get that first place spot. That's assuming, of course, they go one and one in the first place. Lee San, a very key pick for both of these jungle players here. Cuz and Canyon have a very close win rate between the two of them, 29 to 26 here. And you see Canyon four and zero on the pick. Cuz has played it seven times. He's six and one, so a very key pick, very strong right now in the meta. One of our safest blind pick jungle uh, champions right now. It gives you a lot of mobility. Gives you the ability to steal objectives, for example. Great in the bottom lane. Very strong pre-6, uh, so very high utility. And then in the bottom lane, there are rookie 80 carry battle. Bull sitting at 90 uh, or si <laughs> versus currently at 99 wins. Pay, so Bull is just playing his first season. Pay's looking for his 100th win. Um, you know, Pay's no longer a rookie. You know, it's it's fun to say they're very both, you know, very young players, right? They're very new to the LCK, but. Pays is a veteran now. I wouldn't call him a rookie at all. Uh, he's won multiple LCK titles. Yeah, it does feel like he's been around for a while, even though it's been, I, I think, just the one year last year and uh, having a lot of success. Uh, certainly looking for more and more wins. Will he get 100 wins tonight? Feels pretty likely, I would say. And Bull did have a bit of a rough uh, week, so hoping he can bounce back because he was really the light uh, that burned bright here for the side of Kwangno Freaks as here they are on to once again joining in this roster and I'm sure CV Max and the team went over a lot of what went wrong over the last week and hopefully that practice can get them back in the right mindset. Hopefully they can practice some stuff today even if they're not getting wins and come back strong for the rest of the week. Kwangdong Freaks really led the charge on Huey. They were very strong when we had Bulldog playing that pick. He's been banned against him a lot since. But CB Max, I'd like to see him not reinvent the wheel. We don't need to see any more Garen top. We don't need to see any Aurelian soul mids. We could just play strong meta champions, be it tempo-based or scaling. And that, I think, is going to be your best approach against a team like Genji that will punish you at any stage of the game. Yeah. Um, CB Max. He might just reinvent the wheel anyway, because that's... I'm just hoping not. Kind of the coach he is, but uh, yeah, I do agree with you, Wolf. I hope it doesn't quite happen that way. As here is Gen G, one of our strongest teams in the LCK. They did, of course, bring in some big names for this season with Canyon Keen and Lahens joining this roster. And yeah. they had a wonderful round one, and they only dropped that one series to KT. And if you're Gen G, you know, you did take that loss to KT, as you mentioned. But we know now, looking back at that series, that it was really a loss to Senna more than anything else. I mean, KT played a good game in that series, but I think Gen G just weren't really fully grasping the power of that pick. Thought they had the answer in the Lucian. They did not. I think we'll see a very different approach there. Now, this is a really exciting matchup here in the top lane because Dudu was a player that on a struggling team last year, we were saying was a top three top laner. We were all discussing like, what would it be like if he was on Gen G, for example, but it's Keen who joins the team instead as Doran leaves. And these two players, very strong. Keen definitely the better of the two right now and is on the more successful roster. 
But what's so interesting about this is, of course, Keen was once a Freak of Freaks' franchise player, the top player, the one they didn't swap out, the one who stayed with the team for so long. He left, of course, went to KT, found great success there, and now he's looking to pick up a title potentially here with this Gen G roster. So, Guangdong Freaks fans, a long, long, a long time Afrika fans, uh, are definitely looking at this feeling a bit of a twinge of nostalgia, you know, a little feeling of, that's my boy on the other side. I, I still want to root for him a little bit, but now he's the enemy. Yeah, he's the enemy tonight, and that is going to be a really fun matchup at the top side. Both these uh, top laners, very balanced, rarely die, you know, lowest solo deaths, number one and number two between the two of them. They don't have the top solo kills in the in the entire league because uh, Zeus is number one, and of course, Dunden is number two. Um, and you can't beat those guys at the moment in terms of solo kills, but either way, uh, definitely very strong top laners. And, you know, is there a chance for Quantum Freaks to come out here and get at least a game win against Gen.G? What do you think, Wolf? Uh, I'm going to say no, to be honest. I, I'm going to say I think that with the slumping Quantum Freaks drafting style right now and with how dominant Chovy has been versus Bulldog's weak laning phase, I think that's going to be the biggest hole here. And Bull, I don't want to say he's regressed, but he certainly hasn't had great late game performances. And a lot of his success was around strong early games leading into a powerful mid game where late game just didn't matter. But they've changed their drafting style quite substantially to where he has to be able to pop off late game. And so far, he's just showing that he's not as experienced as the rest of our AD carries here in the LCK. Yeah, I mean, at least in the LCK, right? Certainly uh, does feel like he needs a bit more time but he'll get there, I believe. It, it has been a nice surprise so far for that player. CD Max <laughs> does look very happy, but you know, that's, I, I guess, kind of par for the course. As Coach, Coach Kim, Kim, he does. The exact opposite, <laughs> yeah. all smiles. He said in the last series afterwards in the interview, he's like, you know, it wasn't perfect, but we got the win. And they did showcase some pretty interesting drafting with the Smolder and the Aurelian Soul, the Double Dragon coming into the LCK. Saw that a bit in Challengers yesterday as well. Is becoming kind of a thing slowly. We'll see what happens in this draft, though. Yeah, let's take a look. You know, at the beginning of the season, Chovy was getting a ton of counter picks. And nowadays, it's just, you know, half and half average uh, across Genji's games. But I think the mid matchup, one that we didn't highlight in terms of key player, because we like to kind of make the stats look even, make it look interesting. But the laning stats are Chovy's second best to Faker and Bulldog has surpassed Call Me uh, in terms of his stats in the laning phase. So, you know, it's the top of the table versus the bottom in terms of the mid matchup. So I hope Bulldog gets to play a champion he's comfortable on, but also one that can scale because the laning phase is just not going to be him making big impact on early objectives. Senna's gone also. Always have to shout that out and give that a thumbs up. The Lucian, I feel a little bit unnecessary to ban here, but it is Genji after all. Yeah, uh, it does leave stuff like the Varus available. The Renata is also going to be banned. I mean, they already took away Kalista, and Renata was, uh, you know, the most common partner for that bottom lane duo. So pretty interesting one there to take away from Ondil. Yeah, maybe they want to play something like Yone that struggles a little bit into that Renata. And so if they don't take it, maybe they'll go for something like a Sejuani Yone. They left the Vi open, so that's definitely a possibility here because has played fantastic Vi games. It's been targeted against him a lot. See what they get with this Varus here. Don't necessarily have to lock in a support. You could just get the jungle pick and then react to what the bottom duo is going to be here for Kwangdong Freaks. Of course, you'll only be able to get half of yours, though, if you do that. I'm just going to take this Nautilus with it. We've seen this so much uh, in R1, R2 on the red side. And it's a denial pick a lot of the time, but also now it gives you a safety net against a potential Zeri lock-in. Yeah, also denies, uh, as you are mentioning, uh, in terms of denial pick, it takes away the Vi Nautilus combo, which could be pretty rough for the Varus. Um, but either way, Smolder is available, and I think they're just trying to decide if they do want to play it here. And, you know, we saw what Viper was able to do against the Smolder on the Varus. Can Pays do the same because the Smolder is going to be selected and if you go Aurelian Soul here, I feel like you're kind of... You're pricing yourself into, I need to not get Gen G'd. Um, and, and most yeah. teams don't... The Most teams aren't able to uh, survive 20 minutes saying, okay, now the real fight begins against Gen G. Uh, most teams could say that up until about 10 to 12 minutes, and then uh, and then we move on. Uh, Hui getting locked in here, though, a good pick for Bulldog. Going to shore up some of the weaknesses in terms of the uh, 
Smolder range, and you can have a lot of poke that allows then Smolder to come in and finish off those kills with his Q once he stacks them up. As Chovy looking for an Azir here, feeling very confident into this immobile mage in the mid lane that maybe, you know, with a strong jungle pick here for Cannon, he actually might be able to push Bulldog down. Again, Bulldog's laning phase very weak. Chovy, second best in terms of CS difference next to Faker at the moment. So I feel like this is a pick that if you're Chovy, you should be confident you will have some pressure with. And now I think moving into the second banning phase, you're looking at supports here. You know, what is going to be the support for the Smolder? Because you have got the Varus lane. You have bottom side control by default already. And yeah. they're going to take away the Alistair, which has been so common with the Smolder pick. Yeah, I think it's a good call. Uh, just take as much power away from the Smolder as possible. The other angle they could have gone for is try to get a really strong top lane pick for Keen and take some, you know, picks away from that. Um, Meanwhile, the TF is banned, so that's kind of where Quantum Freaks' uh, thought process is going. Although they could also try to target away, you know, a top jungler like Lee Sin if they do want to take that off the board because Genji have not selected it yet. I think um, Aatrox definitely a pick that needs a look here. Keen, fantastic Aatrox player. See if they want to take that away from him or not. Genji, of course, have that pick priority. They're actually going to ban it themselves here. Very interesting to see. Asante. Yeah, it looks like the angle. Lee Sin going to be banned here to prevent a snowball of that bottom lane with Chovy getting prio mid and having that Varus lane. You're so scared of Lee Sin coming at down there and just ruining Smolder's early game, but this does leave open the Cassante that you mentioned. And the options here are quite limited now, I feel like, for Dudu. Is this the Rumble angle where you're just hoping you're going to sit back and scale, drop that Equalizer? I don't, I don't really like it with Vi here. You're not going to have that much kill pressure on a lot of these champs, especially with the Nautilus. They don't really much have better. much tankiness as well, so they could go for the Poppy. Uh, Gnar would be another choice, but I feel like Poppy is a bit more consistent, offers better peel, and does also have a pretty decent matchup into the Cassante. The issue is that a lot of champs have a decent match in the Cassante in the top lane, but Cassante oftentimes has a much bigger impact over the game and the team fights. I actually don't mind the Braum here. You know, it's not my favorite, but I think it is going to mitigate a lot of the pressure in the bottom lane and can be quite good into Cassante and good into Nautilus as well. If you counter ult when the engage comes through and burst down that initial target, can be quite strong. And in the late game, Cassante will not be immortal into this comp if Quantum Freaks are able to stave off the early game because there's just so much range with this way. And then you can, of course, just burn him down with Smolder as he tries to engage and go through with the Braum there. Uh... Middle sticks! <laughs> All right, Gen G coming out with an interesting one for game one. You saw Coach Kim, he was right over his shoulder and he was really almost looked like he was goading him into it. But this is a very interesting one to pull out here against the Kwangdong Freaks. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how this was going to fare, but it does feel you know quite strong into Poppy. It feels quite strong into Smolder in the bottom lane with the prior they're going to have there. And I think with this draft, Canyon has a ton of agency. You won't necessarily have top side prio, but you could put your focus on the bottom side instead. And you know, even if you're seeing Keen struggle in the laning phase against this Poppy, which we have seen a few times in the first few levels, maybe you can make an early gank impact there. But the Fiddlesticks is going to be a lot of damage later on and pretty guaranteed engage into this composition. And if you ever get a fear off on these backline carries, that's just the end of the fight. You're going to get Emperors divided. You're going to get collapsed onto by Keen on that Cassante. And the Varus can layer the CC and put off that insane damage. So you've got to really track where the Fiddlesticks is. And it's a pick that a lot of Korean players aren't used to battling. It's even a, an experienced player like Cuz because it's just so rare. Who's from Australia and a first time watcher of League of Legends as well. A couple of fans coming down. Cool, cool stuff. A lot of disengage, a lot of trying to keep you at range with the Hui Smolder and Poppy Braum on the side of Quantum Freaks, and we get Fiddlesticks coming out here for the first time this season. Let's jump into game number one. All righty, game number one here on this wonderful Wednesday, match 51. We have passed over into round two. And Gen.G, they looked fantastic against Fear X. Quantum Freaks coming off a rough week, but hoping that they can turn things around and not just crumble under the pressure because 
that's a really rough thing to get through mentally, to, to lose to the team that didn't have any wins twice, not just yeah. even once, right? So Exactly. It's rough. It really is. And I think a lot of that is not necessarily about Kwangdong Freaks underperforming. They, they did do some wacky drafts. They left themselves exposed in a lot of ways. And then we had players like Karas really show up two series in a row. And I didn't really think I'd ever be saying that about Karas this season. It looked kind of doomed, but... It's like they suddenly sign Pull Bay, and the guy is under pressure, <laughs> and then he starts to perform. So, yeah, you know, I think Bro winning more than Kwangdong lost in a lot of aspects in terms of the gameplay, in terms of the drafting. You know, that one's on Kwangdong, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, certainly, you know, some competition, some pressure can lead to kind of a wake-up call many times. And, uh, you know, we, we don't know all the time what's behind the curtain, but I, I think it could be a nice guess, Wolf. Uh, that could be part of why Cars is, is turning up his game just a bit. Uh, First strike, fiddlesticks, uh, futures market, trying to get those item spikes online as soon as possible. Very common to see on AP jungle picks like this one. And, you know, I, I want to see how, exactly how much of an impact he can make in this early game where Genji want to kind of snowball this Varus into a very successful lead as uh, it's his first pick of the season, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's the day that Chronicler is off um, because Chronicler's always <laughs> asking for fiddlesticks and the one day yeah. he's not here. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, now he gets to comfortably watch from home at least and enjoy as it has been. You know, the last player to play this was Canyon 1,341 days ago against Bono in 2020, guys. Think about that. So, four years, well, four score and seven years yeah. ago. Yeah. Canyon. I'm just going to watch Fiddlesticks uh, go for the double camp. So you can see you can link them together, obviously, with his drain. Very common to do, even with the nerf to the leash range. It's one of the only champions who can still very successfully pull this off. So your speed of clear is very high. And this bottom lane is going about as you'd expect it to. They're just trying to prevent him from successfully stacking. Great positioning there from Lehens. Just not going to be hit by any double achoos. Um, which is the W, I just wanted to say it <laughs> once. A choose. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. A choose your fighter. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. The sneeze. It looks like um, Chofi actually taking a big chunk of damage somehow. We didn't get to see how they were trading as we were watching Fiddlesticks farm the jungle, understandably. I'm in a little bit of an awkward spot here, but just kind of walking it off. Flash in from Lahens onto Bull now. As he's just gonna use the heal, will Ondil to try to get him away so Bull can hold on to his summoners. That's uh that's a support you wanna have on your team, man. He flashes, he heals for you, you don't have to cleanse, you don't have to flash, you can keep your sums. That's the support you wanna have by your side. As uh Andil will help him get away, but this is still gonna be a really bad situation for Bull. We'll now have to try to flap his way back to lane as soon as possible here. Doesn't have boots, of course. It's going to be a really long while before he can return, which means the plate's going to go over. It's a cannon wave. So, you know, some of this will be mitigated, but you do not feel good about those lost stacks, the lost farm. He's already doubling the CS here, which is exactly how these Varus lanes are supposed to go into Smolder. Yep. Especially when they're getting aggressive and they're trying to make plays. I like that from Lahenza. It's not even like, okay, we're going to get a kill. It's it's just, okay, we're going to push them out of lane. We're going to deny early farm from the Smolder. Here's Andal in mid. Um, Toby does have Flash and he's Azir and you're Braum, so. I mean, there's nothing he could do bottom lane. He, does, he just wants to give a Bull some more experience and, and roam because he knows the back timing of pace. So he's like, oh, let's see what we can find. Can't find anything? All right. You know, no, nothing too bad here for... Uh, the side of Chovy, but nice attempt at least for Andil to get something. He was down sums as well, so Chovy just looked at him and was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, misses some XP down on the bottom side. Ping comes down immediately. They do see this with the Scuttle Crab they have, and we do have Cuz coming up here. Look at how quickly you can clear this uh, as we're going to see Cuz check this out. It's the first one here. That's my pretty interesting, the second one, because yeah. Cuz is still going to get it. So a bit early from Canyon on his smite, as Cuz will take down two of them. And you're really hoping you can get those on spawn, and as you are mentioning, just the, the triple suck and try to take them down as, as fast as possible. Yeah, really unfortunate he's not able to do so. Cuz actually gets the better end of it. He at least gets the first uh, one for his experience. It's another hook. Yeah. What the Braum offers you, I suppose. You put up the door. 
you get engaged upon, just try to keep your smolder safe. But oh, Lahens is so mad that Pace decided to go for that instead of getting the cannon. I can see it in his <laughs> movement. Oh, missed the cannon. Didn't get any, get any poke down really either. You hate to see it. Yeah, that's rough. Look at his face, Lahens is disappointed. <laughs> he's lecturing him right now. You can see the way he's moving. He's like, oh man, you're not going to get the cannon. I got to get it. Then he doesn't get it either. Oh, it's a tragedy. Everyone's been there. Everyone's been there with yeah. your, your bot lane partner. You're like, oh man, get that cannon, please. I'm gonna, or I'm going to get it, and then you don't get it either. You're like, oh, it's all your fault. <laughs> yeah. And then you just go support mid instead, um, at least in solo queue. <laughs> we do have Canyon. He will pick up this early Ocean Drake, which is very nice. If you're going to get a Ocean Drake, it's good to get it as the first one. Uh, just offers you some good laning potential to just sustain up and stick around for as long as possible. Yeah, very good for just you know making sure you can take as many trades as possible and then you know, just eventually win out long term. Dudu going to get hit by that turret, but nothing will come of this. It's the noodle fight up here for now. Uh, that's what that bottom side probably was going to get you, though. Early Dragon goes over to Cannon. He was trying to go for double objective, was unsuccessful at getting all three of the buffs, but at least in some regards was able to get double objective because he got the experience. Now has level six, so the Fiddlesticks with uh, his Sork Pen boots is going to be an engaged threat uh, in any skirmish that does occur or any overextension in any lane. He's now relevant, uh, except just PvE, you know, which was the early game Fiddlesticks relevance that we saw moments before. See what he can uh, make of this pick right now, going aggressively towards bottom side as we speak. And this is what mid prio is going to get you, bot prio, so the dive potential here is real. And, uh, you know, until it's set up, you could just take camps away from Cuz. Yeah, I mean, he's taking camps there, but Cuz and Bulldog able to get a nice amount of vision in the enemy jungle and steal a bunch of their stuff as well. Took the red buff away, did Cuz. And Canyon was spotted on the control ward as well. So you see even Bulldog trying to come over here, maybe support this red buff take. As Canyon is, is trying to go for it with some of the prio from bot. Lehen's now coming up and might be able to hold on to that red. You win this 3v3 under turret, but outside of that, I don't think you do, as this is going to leash here, and they are going to help support the take, as even Chovy is here, and Bona Freaks just need to cower on that turret and just say, Bull, I hope you're hitting those Q last hits on the stacks, because we are not going to be able to do anything to keep them out of this jungle. And so far here, just that one red buff really going over here, and it's a lot of time for Cuz spent down here, but absolutely worth it. He's going to try to hide here and look for a potential counter gank. Yeah, I mean, they're expecting this. As Ward comes down, you see Cuz is going to back away. Kind of awkward now for Canyon because Quantum Freaks don't want to push forward, and that's not going to make it easy for him to gank. Yeah. So just two junglers looking out for the bot lanes. Um, a more aggressive option here for Canyon, but Cuz also covering super well, so neither player can actually make a proactive play. But they get the red buff. And as you mentioned, the jungle was stolen away by Cuz earlier, so ends up being kind of an even trade. It's only a small gold lead here for Genji as we press nine minutes. They were able to get that first dragon, which is very significant. It's ocean into cloud, so we could have something like an infernal soul. That could be very relevant. Canyon still looking for that first ult as Dudu in a bit of trouble. He is going to ghost, and he does get the knockback as Keen will not be able to unstoppable that. So Dudu does survive with this ghost traded with Keen. Can you at least be able to drain these down here? They have Lehens in the area as well as Chovy's Pryo, so it should not be Cuz coming over here to get the better of him a second time. So really nice timing there for Keen to kind of go all in and look for the play topside while Canyon's there because Canyon could turn this into the Void uh, Grub take. And then there's enough time here, 96 seconds, before we actually get into that next Dragon fight. So really good macro play here using the Pryo very well and the all-in potential there from the Cassante. And Genji, yeah, it's a bloodless exchange, but it's a very strong one. Good pathing there from Canyon. Yeah, you know, they catch up a bit in the buffs. They don't get to five, which is kind of the, the break point. But to be honest, um, true damage feels a lot more strong than the little dudes that have, like, zero health and take one tower to, uh, shot to kill. Um, so they get those, but they also get the Ocean Drake, and they are winning the bot lane. So about 300 gold in the lead, no first blood just yet. And just trying to pick up the pace. Now, I will say, if the Smolder just gets to kind of farm out and never dies, and even if he does farm a little bit slowly, it's okay. It just kind of delays when you're going to have that really strong first Smolder fight at 225 stacks. 
Yesterday I was casting, or co-streaming rather, uh, Challenger League, and Taehyung got 225 at like 27 minutes. It was like really late, but he ended up being a powerhouse anyway because they were able to, you know, delay, 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 and then actually go for the really important fights after uh, the 27 minutes. No, mark. it's exactly right. I mean, it, the Smolder pick does become relevant kind of no matter what. It's just a question of whether you can live to, to tell the tale in that fight, right? And this is what we were yeah. talking about earlier with Genji. Most teams don't live to get to late game against this squad where they're standing on two feet, where they have any sort of control to get to an objective or fight a neutral. Quano Freaks are still at that point now, and even though Smolder is pushed under turret here, he can come over and help contest this objective. Chovy just teleported back in. So this is going to be the first real fight of the game. Now, Quano Freaks going to be so careful about losing this one. Yeah, Ando just face checking in. He should know that Fiddle is around. He put up his door in the wrong direction. He's just dead. Um, kind of confusing. But uh, that's going to be the end of the support on the side of Guangdong, so Genji should be able to pick up two drinks. I mean, I'm guessing... Oh, okay, this could be bad. Yeah, Cuz clearing a ward, and Flash comes over the wall. He's going to R into the Azir, and somehow he gets away for now. Flash forward from Chovy, trying to shut him down. One more auto will do it. As Cuz just not respecting that either, just hitting the ward right in front of Chovy. Yeah, Chovy's engage range is so big. He had Flash, they knew that. And he just was really greedy. I think super frustrated, maybe just tunneling a little bit on like, well, I guess we lose this. This is not the fight I was looking for. I was hoping maybe and we could surprise him. Tech soul. Okay, well that's <laughs> good news for Guangdong at least, but I mean this this moment here is really just a little bit inexcusable because you don't have vision in the area. You've got to know that like, Canyon is nearby and Hayes obviously has control of the bottom side. The only thing I could think of was he wanted to rush back down there because he thought maybe they were looking for a dive onto the Smolder. And then this is just an attempted ward clear gone extremely wrong. Doesn't even get it, by the way, to add insult to injury as the control ward will survive. He will not. Chovy, the really nice follow up there at the flash. Going to put him in range. Sand shoulders go up. Last few autos take him out. And that's disastrous here for Kwangno Freaks. It definitely is. Now Cuz looking to get his own revenge, looking for Canyon as that plant not really going to help him anyway. And he's trying to get some health back. We'll see if he can even challenge the red buff as now Dudu has joined. And Canyon will just give it up. I mean, red buff, not the most important for Fiddle, but still would be nice to get it. And we haven't really talked about the fact that he's playing Fiddle into Vi, which is in itself such a terrifying uh, concept. And the 1v1 is not going to go your way, especially if you've used cooldowns on a camp and the Vi comes in and invades you. But Canyon's just avoided Cuz so well this entire game and has put the pressure on when it's required. Like here when he has Chovy to back him up, he will challenge the Vi, right? It's not a true 1v1 there. And he knows how to use the pressure points so well. Is Mom going to be used here to try to clear this? Yeah, uh, it will delay some of his stacking. But again, just trying to survive, trying to get not to get too far behind. They don't have any control of their jungle, so I think it's the right call from Bull to just say, well, I don't know what's going on. They could be here. And I'm just going to back away because if Fiddle dives with an Autolus, you're dead. I don't care how much you flap <laughs> down there in the bottom side, it won't get you away. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And so much deep vision here around the red buff just means that Bull has never been able to comfortably do anything but try his best to Q minions. And that's what Smolder does. But now he doesn't have a turret to hide under here. He's going to go mid, of course, but... Uh, there is no answer to this push right now, and Genji might even try to push the issue even further because Harold is not really contestable. Keen has teleport, and see how much they actually want to commit to here. Oh, just hoping maybe that someone was going to come down here and they'd catch them, Poppy namely, but the yeah. timing doesn't work out. There's a chance that maybe Bulldog like TP's bot if there was a big wave, but two ranged minions and Bulldog is top, so just going to send Dudu down there and it should be fine. So Harold goes over to Quangdom Freaks, but there's not a great place to use it because they don't have Pryo mid, and I mean they do at this very moment until the Paze shows up, and then they will lose it very quickly. And bottom side, obviously, they don't have a lot of control. All the turrets are healthy, and the objective doesn't spawn for two minutes, and it would be the first Chemtech Dragon for them of the game. First Dragon in general, and just a solo Chemtech. So, yeah, you got the Herald, but what does it really mean? What does it really do for you? Unfortunately, here, not a whole lot. Yeah, uh, they're going to struggle to find really the angle. Bull here, 15 minutes in, only 76 stacks. So that pressure down on the bottom side has really worked out. We've seen smolders that have hit 225 at 20 minutes in some games. So um, certainly very behind in terms of his stacking. Of course, it will speed up as you get some of the, the upgrades as yeah. you hit those breakpoints. But yeah, it's going to be a bit rough. 
from there's, it. Yeah, there's a huge spike at 125 where you start to really, obviously, stack much easier. So, you know, that's the point you're really searching for before 17 if you can. And then you start to really stack them up. But Chovy here. Yeah, Chovy. He did go for arm guard, by the way. I wanted to mention this pretty early on. Uh, generally, you want to rush out like Nashers, Leandres, and go for more damage. But he does get this defensive itemization as his second item, essentially. Allows him to engage deeper. Will choose to burn his ultimate uh, instead of using the one arm guard that he has when encountering Cuz in the jungle just moments before. So, a zero ult down, but again, what does it mean if you don't have any pressure here on the map as Kwong Dung Freaks? You can't really punish this Azir who's ultless, and you just have to sit back and farm. And Genji have done such a good job in this game. I mean, look at the goal here at 3,000 up right now. And they've done such a good job of just making sure they use their prio to steal camps on the map. You know, only 10 CS up is Canyon, but he's been able to threaten Smolder, force Ondil to come down, force Cuz to babysit that, which allows Keen to have a free laning phase. You know, it's not an easy matchup into the Poppy, but he's maintained CS. He's not been under really any pressure or threat. And this Vi pick feels invisible, unfortunately, because of it. So far in this game just hasn't been relevant. Will be relevant later on in team fights, of course, if they can engage on top of Chovy when he doesn't have Zonias, or engage on top of Pays if he's out of position. But the strongest point for this Vi to maybe counterplay some of the aggressive prio has been missed by Cuz. Yeah, now we have Bull in kind of an awkward spot here. He's gonna be forced to cleanse and flash uh, to get away from that one. Looks like just uh just not a whole lot of info. Yeah, he just got scared and had to flash away. We do have, um, oh, Cuz uh, decides not to crash into the turret just for his own sake. Now, he is a great driver, but kind of unfortunate on that one. Yeah, maybe looking for a knock up there to try to find something with the follow up, um, but wasn't really in position for any follow up. Toby just gonna ignore this turret, take it out. Well, that wasn't the uh, the Herald look they were looking for, but like I said, it's hard to use it in general against Gen.G right now. Yeah. Again, for Kongdong, you really just need to try to delay as much as possible. Honestly, even giving up this Drake, I think, is fine, but they don't want to let them get to Soul Point, and that might come back to bite them as now Keen is here, but the damage is there as well. The first coming in from the Vi, but the stopwatch is just so good. Can Chovy get out? Yes, he can. Puts up the soldiers, and now Kongdong are in a lot of trouble due to he does ult, but he's dead anyway. Does not matter, and it's nearly a full wipe as the two damage dealers survive, but the entire team has to run away. Bulldog also has to flash. And I think they just really underestimated the power of the arm guard. They're, everything is used on Chovy, and they don't. They only have one carry. Bull doesn't do anything at this stage in the game. Yeah. He, he's, he's practically a second support at this point. And so if you spend everything on Chovy and he just stopwatches it, that's the end of the fight. And I get it because... If you get that dragon, what does a Chemtech Soul do for you individually? One dragon, nothing, but what it would have bought them is five minutes of time. So it is valuable in that regard. They win that fight, they buy so much time, they get some needed gold. But unfortunately, Chovy is just able to shut everything down. He's Azir, so he has the ability to get out and then shuffle, or rather, and then ult. So it's even a flash committed to this Bulldog's ultimate here going down. They're trying to chain CC him, but they don't have enough CC to stop him from arm guarding. And then after that, Bulldog can't do anything. Good positioning here as well from Canyon on his ultimate to prevent any sort of additional follow-up after he gets out of the stopwatch. So really nice defensive play there. And Genji just walk away from this massive victory. bigger than they would have been if Pona Freaks had just given it up. So double win here for Genji. And I'm not saying this game is done by any means, but it is definitely a much more uphill battle from here for the Smolder now. Yeah, I mean, it's five and a half thousand gold at this point. And if there is a team in the LCK that knows how to push advantages, uh, that isn't T1, it's Gen G, right? It's these two at the top. So absolutely, they'll be looking to try to end this before Bull is even a factor at all in this game. As you can see, they're trying to make him not a factor right now as the ult comes over the top. Mom will be called in and does clear out the wave. They go pretty deep for this one, but they will get the Braum anyway with basically no follow-up here from the side of Quantum Freaks. A lot of damage going into Keen, but he's Cassante, so we're not worried about him. Because, you know, I was just going to say, don't, I don't think you're getting that kill. Please do not chase. We'll get the ward this time. This time he's able to get the ward successfully. That's yeah. all they're going to get. And, I mean, a lot of tools used in this fight. Three ultimates down here, and Canyon loses Flash. But they still catch the wave afterwards, and it doesn't matter because there's no objective to fight for. Quantum Freaks can't start a Baron. 
It's going to be a really long time before they could ever consider being like, I'm starting a Baron, what are you going to do about it? I don't know if that's ever going to happen this game. I don't know yeah. if they're ever going to be the first to hit the worm. But, yeah, just a really nice dive set up there from Canyon. Once again, over the wall, good ult. Looked a little bit scary, but he also bought Seeker's Arm Guard. Everyone's going into this now. It's very expensive, but if you can itemize yeah. into Zonia's, it's 100% worth it. So he's allowed to make this play and absorb all this pressure. And once again, just like before, everything is used on the Seeker's Arm Guard, and then they juggle aggro and get away. Yeah. I mean, Stasis has always been OP. Uh, the fact that it was only 650 gold in the past is actually mind-blowing. And it was a rune, so you could just get it for free. And it, now, the fact that you see players buying it for 1600, it kind of shows you, right, that uh, should have been building it all along. And as you mentioned, you know, a lot of players will build it early because they can go to Zonias, but even later on, AD carries will still build the Arm Guard, even with the new price tag, so... Stasis is what it is, especially if the enemy team is going to go all in onto you. It is uh, incredibly powerful, and yeah. Chovy identified that early. So really, it just comes down to Chovy with really smart itemization. Absolutely. I mean, Faker, Faker started doing it first. I think a lot of Azir players have followed suit since, and I mean, it's just one of the weak points of Azir we talked about in like weeks one and two as to why he was struggling. And now, with proper itemization, you can use him like you did in the old times, obviously a little bit weaker but still definitely viable. And when you're setting up engaged, that arm guard is going to be so valuable for dives as well. And Canyon is new that if he gets caught in the jungle, he's going to need it, but it also allows him to make an aggressive play when they have map control, which they have now more than they had even moments before. And Gen.G, this comp actually can start Baron because there's not a whole lot that Quantum Freak can do about it if they're super far away. I don't think they're going to be starting it up right now, but the threat is real, and this is something Quantum Freaks have to scan out, have to be diligent about. They know Keen has teleport. So you can see a big group even from Bulldog here to make sure it's not being done so they can clear that vision away. Yeah. Uh, nope, not going to do anything here. Uh, Paze did go for the Lethality Varus, so it's a bit slower if it were, you know, on hit Varus, but that's still fine. As you mentioned, they still have very fast Baron damage and have to be careful about that. It does look like Genji do want to just wait for the Chemtech Soul and not really rush this one too much. Again, you are on a little bit of a timer with the way getting items. The Obviously, the Smolder is the big one, but Chemtech Soul, not half bad, especially for champs like Cassante, yes. especially, who are just going to utilize it uh, to an insane degree. So good for him. Pretty good for his ear, too. So... It's also going to function as the Elder Spawner, which you definitely want as Gen.G is. This turret is not safe. Yeah, uh, he's going to TP. He's going to get it off and immediately get just a uh, change of corruption. So he's in a lot of trouble. The back to front here is good from Kwangdong, but immediately the Braum dies. As now Mom will be called in a bit of damage. Nearly takes out Paze, actually, who did have to ghost. But still a trade up here for Gen.G right before this dragon spawns. And it looked like Gen G even intentionally wanted the teleport to finish there. I think they, if they all focus, they could probably actually deny the teleport, but they actually wanted it to finish and guarantee at least one pick as Keen's going to get back here to lane. This is going to be the soul going over. So Gen G, so you don't even get to have that fight for the soul. We're going to set up the dive onto the turret, dismantle that, and then there's just no recourse for you. There's no contest. So oppressive the way they play. And scaling isn't is just not gonna cut it. And I get it because Bulldogs had weak laning phases, so I think generally Phantom Freaks have kind of tilted towards our best chances in the late game. Our best chance we play slow, that's why he's played so much quirky, for example, is this just really clean play, the teleport finish, and then they put the focus on to Andil. Canyon wanted more. They're just gonna get the flash out of Bulldog instead. But the Sun Disc means they knew they were safe. There was never gonna be any sort of follow-up chase there or any sort of punish. But this is why we're seeing Quan on draft like this, is there's that hole in the mid lane. Even the Bulldog has been a great late game player. Like, he has done so much despite early deficits. And so it's either the Hui and the Smolder, or it's the Smolder and the Double Dragon with the Aurelian Soul that they've, they've leaned towards so heavily recently. But against teams that are so good in the early game, like Genji and recently Bro, it's just not being successful, unfortunately, for Quan of Freaks. Trying to go for a Scuttle Crab, and yes, it is a powerful Scuttle Crab, but it's not worth Bull's Flash and also not getting the Scuttle Crab. So, kind of confusing position there, but if they did get it, you know, that would have been nice to maybe delay if they are going for Baron. Um, still, that is going to be Bull now Flashless. Slahens just going to hook away. 
Cuz has great game really sense fine. there though. He's he's kind of like I I know that if the if they don't think that I can kill him, he will die and forces them to regroup, waste a little bit of their time, at least getting something out of that. But uh I mean, this is just so oppressive here for Genji. And the Scuttle Crab would have allowed them to clear some of that vision and also would have given them permanent vision towards that Baron so they can know if Genji are starting it up. Because now every time Genji are missing for just a second, they have to start grouping towards that. It's so frustrating here with all the deep control vision now that Genji have set up. Like, in this moment, are they doing Baron? You've got a blue trinket that. Every yeah. single time, you just don't know. And now you, you're, you're like, well, I can't even walk towards that brush. We have no more vision anymore. Genji are so impatient almost, they're like, oh, they're not even going to come to us, we missed the window, they trinketed us, can we find something else? Yeah. I mean, Genji's turn is insane, and I, I think that you do have an opportunity to just go ahead and start it, but Smolder did just hit 225 sacks, so an opportunity, potentially, for Bull to begin to do a bit of damage, as the burn will come in, and the Braum is pretty difficult to take down, the Chains of Corruption used, as well as the Nautilus ult, so immediately that's going to go down and it's just a bit of chip damage into Kwang Gong Freaks. It's not really what you're looking for here. They need Bull to hit Poke, and they need it so desperately. If he can, or sorry, Bulldog, that is to say, if he can hit Poke consistently, then maybe they could actually turn as they're actually split here. Gen G slowly starting Baron. This is not something Kwang Gong Freaks are aware of, and they could delay so well here with this Nautilus, with this uh, Cassante. Yeah. Also the poke from the Lethality Varus, now it's beginning to hurt as Bulldog gets too close to the sun, the root comes in, and he's got a Cassante right on top of him, as he is not going to survive that for very long. You see Bull is doing a nice amount of damage, but again, Cassante and Genji are so far ahead at this point. Nice hook comes in, they're going to take down Ondale, and we did have also, <laughs> goes very far behind, as that's going to be Bull going down as well. Uh, just trying to do his best to do some damage, but immediately pays the price. Yeah, I don't even know if his flash would have saved him there, but he didn't have it from the earlier scuttle mishap that you pointed out. So he's not able to do anything when Chobi comes in for the sweep. And down he goes. And unfortunately, Bulldog's just not able to hit enough poke there. They just don't have vision. You know, the control vision is so oppressive. And by the time they realize this, they're walking into a Cassante. Pays is here on the cross angle where he can actually just toss arrows in. And Bulldog, he cues him once, then Cuz goes in by himself. And then the turn with Keen is just so unreal. It's so strong. And yeah, your bull at 225, but each and every Q isn't just a default win button at this point. You actually have to hit enough of them. You have to have a team with you to frontline for you to actually keep stacking those. Because I think this fight he hit maybe, what, three um, in the actual fight before it was over. And it's just not enough. You need a lot more. You need a lot more setup and you need pokes so that you can actually guarantee kills with those. So, oh. He's fine. He's okay. <laughs> He's okay. Um, but yeah, Genji, slow and steady wins the race for them. They, they don't seem very threatened by Smolder. They're not rushing anything. They slowly pick up a Chemtech Soul. They play it very slow around getting the Baron. They send two guys over, three to block. And yeah, I mean, Quantum Freaks, they're just going to have to hope and pray that Genji can't end this game anytime soon and, and try to go 40 minutes here. Otherwise, I think this one might be kind of done and dusted. Yeah, and the timing of this Baron that they take leans into Pryo for Elder, which they were able to forge Drake take. So it's spawning very early in this game at 30 minutes. And, I mean, look at bottom as well. Quantum Freaks is leaving that lane to the wayside because this Baron push is so oppressive and there's just no way to actually free farm down there. Even, you know, Bull, who maybe could be down there getting additional sacks, is just trying to help stave this off so they don't end up losing an inhibitor turret. But with no one bottom side, that Elder is basically guaranteed here for Genji, barring a huge mistake. Doo -doo. Doesn't look like he's got his W up. He's going to use it now and does get over the wall nicely, taxiing onto the Raptors. But yeah, Genji really making their presence felt here. They're like, no, we are going to move in towards the Elder Drake, and we are going to take this objective down. And are going to take the red buff as well. He gets out, and red buff goes down. They're looking like they're going to try to teleport Keen back into this one, but they could practically do this on spawn right now. I mean, look at the mid wave that is sent through here by Pays. Bulldog also has teleport here. They get the scuttle. They see that nobody's around the pit. Eight seconds to go until spawn. Keen's teleported in. He's going to push this wave, and Janji are just crossing their, <laughs> crossing their T's, dotting their I's, man. They're like, we get every objective. Once the Elder is there, the game is over. And here comes a potential contest here, but it's so dangerous to even be close to the pit. Yeah. 
nice zoom out from Jonas Strong. He just says, okay, there's zero vision. <laughs> like, they don't know anything. There is one uh, ward in the Dragon Pit currently. So that is one that's NG. If they do want to start this up, they'll have to take down. I'm sure Chovy can just go over there and just whack it once. And... Maybe he's out of range, huh? <laughs> okay, they're going to get it now. Yeah, just a blue trinket they put up right moments ago. Yeah. And, and they can start this. I mean, again, their turn is amazing. They don't necessarily... Even Cannon can slowly solo it. Exactly, because he's got the damage to do so, and he's got the heal with the drain. He should be fine. He's kind of in an awkward spot. But again, Cassante. And pretty well fed at this point, so he's not really scared of uh, taking too much damage even from the smolder. I feel like Genji are just not willing to flip this Elder. They're not willing to actually fully commit to it, so they're just hoping that Quantum Freaks will make a mistake and they'll catch somebody. But Quangdong actually holding their own pretty well, delaying here, and every time Bull toss a W and accuse somebody, he's getting some stacks. So, you know, eventually you really do need to hard take the Elder, and they are going to do that just now as Keen's going to block the door here in the tri brush. Somebody's got to go in, but look at that massive all coming in from Canyon. They wait and they find the angle as Canyon is going to be traded back, though. It's only going to be him to go down, though, as Dudu, very far behind, is not here to peel for his team, as I suppose he was trying to steal the Drake. But at the same time, maybe not especially knowing which angle Kenny was going to come in from, and Genji executed perfectly. I mean, Quantum Freaks, such a patient team in that moment. I feel like making very few mistakes, really respecting the fact that there was no vision, trying to count members of Genji so they knew that there was no possibility the Elder was going to be completed as Dudu going to get his back stopped. That's really <laughs> annoying. But eventually you stretch a rubber band far enough, as Quantum Freaks there did there, and it's going to snap. And that was the moment when Canyon just flash ulted over the wall into the tri brush where Keen was being collapsed on. Is this just... <laughs> um, just a sad moment here for Dudu yeah. as he cannot defend the Nexus. And that's going to do it. Game one will go over to Gen G. They say zero mistakes today, guys. We're just going to make sure we play a very clean game of League of Legends to start off and don't leave any regrets on the rift. And that they did. They take game number one. And basically no mistakes across all of it. Quantum Freaks are going to have to come back with a new strategy. Yeah. Pryo is so strong. I think a lot of teams have been, based on their scrim data, a little bit fooled by the fact that some teams don't use mid and bot Pryo as well as teams like T1 and Gen.G do. So, you know, maybe Quantum Freaks scrim D+. Plus. Maybe they scrimmed against Fear X, and they were like, all right, we can actually play to this Varus. We've been doing it really well. We're going to leave that up, pull this pull this out with the Smolder, and then we'll scale up because we're a scaling team. Bulldog's lane phase isn't too great, but we get to the end, we'll have that poke. But you play against Gen.G, and then suddenly the whole map is dark. You can't see anything. You can't go anywhere, and you can't contest objectives. It's a four dragon into 30-minute Elder that Gen.G to slowly push you out of. Yeah, and then eventually... Canyon gets his moment to shine. Pretty quiet the whole game until the very end, but he had an excellent ult to clean it up as that is game number one. A very clean one from Gen G. We're going to take a break and have the space afterwards. We'll be right back. Yeah, 
나 빠질게. 우리 용 일단 일단 퍼피 좀 봐. 아 퍼피 좀 보기 나. 아 보자 보자. 아 보자 아래 보자 퍼피 퍼피 없어 퍼피 없어. 퍼피 없어. 아 잡았어. 퍼피 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 궁 끝났고. 일단 디거 끝나냐? 디거 안 끝나. 끝나 끝나. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the space. I'm still Atlas. I'm still joined by Ox and Huni, and we're ready to dive in to this Gen G victory over Kwandong Freaks. Unfortunately, Kwandong not really able to take too much. I think it was uh, two bubs, a kill, and a turret um, is the extent of what they picked up in that game. A little bit unfortunate, but let's dive into the draft to have a look at where some of the problems first started to arise.
Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's having the Varus and the Nautilus is obviously a pretty powerful duo for setup. I feel like it gives them a lot of engaged tools. But what I really thought was interesting is picking up the Fiddlesticks. Like, there's not uh, a lot of champions who can easily stop the Fiddlesticks from ulting in. You know, there's there's obviously champions who can immediately CC him and make him disengage. But here, like the Braum, Shea, if you have vision of him, you can maybe ult. And ultimately, the goal of Gen G is to try and reach this backline. Uh, and I think the Fiddlesticks does that pretty pretty effectively. And like, if you're playing Braum, you want to be standing on your AD carry, Fiddlesticks fears in, you just both get feared. Yeah, I mean, also this is a, you know, like re really important to mid pick as well. They they, they pick the, they pick up the Huey, but it's like, still, it doesn't really matter. The Genji just pick up the Azir and it's like having a lot of mid prior and actually gang pressure. From there, it's like a lot of the fight, a lot of the actually pre-15 minute. The, that's why the main reason why Chubi could be everywhere. And it's like, you can't really stop the exhalating the, the Azir, the, the getting the farm. And also it's just everywhere, it's like, it was going just really well for the Genji. It's like smoothly with this draft. It's just so easy for them to be just executing all the fight. Yeah, and I actually think like illustrating the the Hui as well, the Fiddlesticks does work exceptionally well because what Hui really likes is to have this neutral game where you can see where everyone is, where you have information. And Fiddlesticks plays the game of make sure they don't have information and that's how we win the game and really wins more with control. Yeah, like we even had that like 50 minute A round mid like previously yeah. where uh, Bulldog was in Hui and just smashing people. You can't do that against Fiddle. He will just ult over the wall and end that immediately, so you never get that uh, chance to set up. But honestly, not a lot of that was relevant. Let's jump into our first highlight here and have a look at where things started to go wrong for the Kwandong Freaks. And from here, um, it was there was just wasn't a good news story. Yeah, and I feel like Kwandong Freaks are trying to establish vision, but you see how ready Gen G are in comparison. They have three members there. You can see Chovy's already moving. If you look at the bottom mid from Kwandong Freaks, they're nowhere near. And it's just the readiness of the team to react. And then, cuz, I'm not sure about this one. I mean, I think this is like, it's so disrespectful. So like enemy like has a lane prior, as I said, like from the draft, like Azir kept with first, even bottom, like the by just playing the virus into uh, Smolder with the Nullus, it's like just can move anywhere and they could be there. And it's like, still, they gotta respect like where enemy could be and not actually using the greedy path. But these, these times just got the punish like so hard that it makes like really unplayable after this. It certainly was, and uh, things only kind of got worse uh, from this position onwards. Diving into our second highlight here, this was an engage that looked kind of okay, apart from the fact that uh, Chovy had an arm guard. Yeah, he ends up teleporting into the route from the Huey, and the stopwatch ends up being perfect. Not only that, he pops the stopwatch, everyone's ready to try and counter, pick him off when he comes in, when he comes out, sorry, and then the fiddle six just comes in, disrupts the whole fight, the fear is so effective. Yeah, the instant flash as soon as the uh, the the, the arm guard is over, and it's like just after the fight, it's just so just done because like you focus the one guy and he just absorbs so much pressure, so much ability. Then after that, they just don't have damage. Especially they are already behind, and based on their playing, the team comp, they don't really have any the burst damage after they missed all the ability. And now it's time to have a look at the stack counter because this is where things were pretty sad uh, for the Kwandong Freak. Ugh. Having a look at the best stacker that we have so far on Smolder, that was Viper. And uh, Bull was at a w at 140. Yeah, I mean, comparing it to Viper's best stacking, That's it's a always, bit, it's it's always hard, gonna yeah. look rough, but we felt like when we were watching the game, it was really slow. I think he got 225 at about 26 minutes. The enemy team already had Soul. I mean, fortunately, it was already a chem tech, so it didn't really matter. But like, if you're letting Dragon Soul go over before your 225 stacks, it's too slow. Uh, and I think ultimately, giving him the chance to farm up, giving him the resources, and also not getting punished in lane enough that he can actually stack up is so important. You're not a champion until you're 225. I mean, this is the main, main reason why the Smolder is not like super just broken no matter what, just winning every game. Because like, you, you, you do get punished in lane. And so also when you get behind, like it's just so hard to pick up after. Because like, it's just so reliant to the team that they have to kind of carry carry the Smolder for like certain amounts of time. And they couldn't. So that's how they lose. They just they, That's how they falls off. Yeah, and also like the more stacks you get, the easier it is to farm and get more. You know, you get the AOE explosions and stuff, and it's easier just to blow up waves with it. So if you fall behind, it really feels slow. It certainly does, but it didn't feel slow for our player of the game. Let's see who picks it up here. Is it an 800 points? It is. Clear first place now for Chovy as the Azir grabs another POG. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this game, uh, really for me, the two plays we showed in the highlights were kind of the standout ones. He had this good pick here. I think Lahens also did a good job 
picking off Andal. I wouldn't be surprised if he got some votes. But the main thing for me, the thing that really clinched the game uh, was this next clip where the uh, Seeker's Arm Guard was so high value. He just basically just won himself, just like the whole solo who just win this actually team fight. And I think it's still like, I think he just didn't really make any mistake and he's just pop off until actually Nexus, Nexus exploded. There's so many highlights that he was like, be able to even this highlight, he just find a way that he can actually sh shuffle because the enemy, the smolder just overstep. He knows like when to actually punish. He knows like actually just the champion so well, obviously. So it's pretty, it was like easy game for him. He just kind of did trophy things. Yeah, he certainly did. Did uh, trophy things and Azir things. And when both of those come together, then uh, things certainly look very, very good for Gen G. Eight out of 12, uh, a couple of Pays votes, um, one cheeky Lehens vote and a Keen. Um, huh, I, think it, I think it's fine, but I do think that, you know, Trovi had a fantastic game. Honestly, it was just a Gen G. Uh, Masterclass and uh, Quantum Freaks. Freaks game. Yeah, uh, Quantum Freaks really going to have to change things up moving into game number two. I would suggest some early power in the bottom lane. Bull doesn't look like he can play these scaling picks. It's not really working out, but now it is time to throw it back to Valdez and Wolf to get us into game two. Thank you, Atlas, Ox, and Hooney for that big breakdown of game number one. And yes, uh, pretty interesting votes there. I think that Pays' poke damage was pretty relevant going into the Baron, but I also feel like the game was kind of over by that point. But either way, you know, nice team play, I would say, from the entirety of the side of Gen.G. Yeah, it was it was a game that was decided by Gen.G being the stronger team and not by one specific moment, one specific play. Although I think the coolest play was definitely the Chovy, you know, uh, breaking the arm guard into the defensive ult from Canyon we talked about earlier, um, which was also illustrated there on the space. That was definitely one of the most critical plays in the game. But yeah, it's the difference between the strengths of Bull and the strengths of the um, of Bulldog. I always struggle to say the names together because they both start with Bull. Uh, the strengths are so different in terms of where they are strong in the game. Bull, great in the early game. Bulldog, great in the late game. So, you know, maybe something like Callista could be the way to go. I mean, we've seen Bull look very good on this pick. Maybe pick Varus up yourself. I don't think you want to be on the scaling end of things, but CB Max disagrees, and that's why they've been drafting like this. Hopefully they can turn it around. Yeah, it does feel like Quantum Freaks are kind of doing the, we're going to keep playing this until it works. <laughs> and... Uh... You know, that doesn't, that, that can send you through some rough patches, of course. But let's see what they do. They have uh, gone back onto the blue side, which I think is the right call. As Maokai going to be the first ban. In game number one, Udyr was the first ban. So maybe looking to skip that one. I wouldn't expect the Genji bans to change up all that much. No. Uh, especially the Senna Callista. Renata Glask was kind of an interesting third ban. But maybe they change that one if they would like. I just don't think you want to give the Callista over because Jandy probably have the same opinion that we have about, you know, where Quantum's power is at. So just want to make sure they don't have a prior lane down there. And I really don't want to see Smolder again, to be honest. They're not going to change the ban either. But I feel like they're going to do it, Valdez. I feel like they're going to lock it. I mean, camera on bull. <laughs> it's, it's like everybody knows. He didn't look too pleased. I mean, maybe, the, you know, you're taking away the Renata Glask um, for, like, a potential Draven all-in kind of situation if you did want to play it, but I don't know. This, I, I do agree that the Smolder angle is probably not it. This way, while in isolation isn't the strongest B1 in the meta, definitely hides what your plan is a little bit more. So this Varus Nautilus might be not necessarily what you want. It was one of the strongest lanes in the game right now in general, but... See what they want to do. You know, they could go for their own pushing lane bottom side and try to counteract this. And really just get bottom side prio and still scale up with the way. Chovy could still pick the Azir into this. A trucks. Okay, they're changing it up a little bit here. Do like to see this quite a lot. This was banned against them last game. Have a little bit more agency to do do in the laning phase as well. Graves. I don't think any of these picks are gonna get locked Lee in. Sin. Yes. That is the jungle pick that you want. And that ooh, is what they are going to get. We talked about the win rate of these two players. I believe Cos was six and one on the pick. Four and zero for Canyon. It's taken away from him. Yeah. 
Span in game number one in the second phase because uh, Genji hadn't picked a jungler, but it was first pick by for Quantum Freaks in game one. So going away from that. Now you don't even necessarily need to play Azir here. Twisted Fate, they're going to actually push up the prio list here. This could be a flex pick, in fact, between mid and top. And, you know, I was going to mention this pick in the previous draft, but they just kind of slam locked down the Azir. And this is really frustrating to draft against now if you're Quantum Freaks because. You know, Hui is going to feel pretty comfortable in the early laning phase into the Twisted Fate, but that, not, that might not be necessarily what you're facing. You've already put your top pick uh, onto the table. Both your soul lanes are exposed. And even though one soul lane is shown for Gen G, you don't know which one it is just yet. So it makes uh, this draft a little bit more complex. Now, obviously, the bottom side focus is going to be there for Gen G in the second phase because we're going to find out very soon what that scaling pick is going to be for Bull. And the Alistair has been one of the safest picks into the Nautilus so far. Taken away a second time. Yeah. I don't mind the Sejuani ban, um, especially with Maokai already off the table. I feel like if you add even more CC into this, then it can be pretty rough for the side of Quandom Freaks, especially with the point and click of the TF, and then everybody just kind of follows up after that. can be very oppressive to play against. Yeah, and you don't know if they're going to lock in a top laner or a mid laner right, right now, but you know they're locking a jungle no matter what, and it's one of the strongest ones uh, left in the pool. I really like this Karma ban because that's the one thing I was talking about earlier, where they might just go for a pushing lane instead. They could have gone for Ezreal Karma and try to counteract the Varus in that way, or a different variant of a, a Karma lane. Really smart ban here by Gen.G. Basically saying you're going to have to play a scaling pick. It's not going to feel easy. And then they get the Vi. So now you're like, I can't play Zeri into Nautilus Vi. I don't want to play Ezreal here. I don't want to play Aphelios. And it might just be a Zaya Rakan. I mean, I think that might be where we're, we're headed with this one because that's the only viable lane that's left. Okay, this is a different pushing lane. This is a different pushing lane. <laughs> this has not seen a lot of success here in the LCK. Let's just put it like that. As I, when, yeah. the, when the Ziggs locks in with the pike, and we've already seen uh, Fiddlesticks today, when the Val Vlad hover happens, the whole crowd is like, wait a minute! I don't I don't think it's going to happen, but it certainly could, as Chovy will play LeBlanc, and Twisted Fate going into the top lane here, into the Aatrox. This is the matchup we've seen it in, where Keen has destroyed, Ke uh, Kingen has destroyed into the Aatrox. It feels so good here. And to be honest, Valdez, I mean, there is so much power in this draft here in the early and mid game for Gen G, plus the fact that they can get on top of the Ziggs relatively easily. And there's Twisted Fate who can be anywhere at all times. And there's a ton of CC, so it's difficult for Andil to roam. Yeah. I mean, I don't, if, I don't, I'm not about it. If this were last year's Ziggs, I, I feel like this isn't a bad situation because you can kind of keep them at arm's length. You can have a lot of zone control. You can use your satchel to potentially get away from uh, the hard engage. But that can also be really rough when you're dealing with both Vi and Nautilus who can just point and click you, right? So uh, Ziggs can't do a lot about that except keep his distance. Same with Wei. Um, but again, it's going to be really difficult, especially if they get behind because you don't have any vision and you're just trying to send out Poke and then eventually Gen G just get a really nice collapse. Just kind of like game one, right? I think it'll look a lot like that. It crumbles like a house of cards if you make one mistake as well into a team like Gen G. And we have seen so many teams try to emergency zigs and it has not, not gone well. I think this might be another one of those times. It definitely is, as well as the Pike, which is kind of interesting in its own right. Uh, one and four currently, but guys, we are going to jump onto the Rift. Let's see how it goes. All right, game number one. Dudu going to see his top lane opponent. He doesn't see the rest of the team that is hiding in this brush, and he is not going to tempt fate. Yeah. Wise choice. That would have been, and very well, nice wordly uh, smithed by you as well there. <laughs> um, I do do the words sometimes. He does, he does the words, but in a clever way. Mm. Um, so we'll walk away from what could have been a potential disaster. Side note, you know, we talked about the mustached man that comes to LCK all the time. Yeah. It's actually brought up. Um, I haven't seen him yet today. Now, it's a Genji match into a T1 match, so very difficult to get tickets for both of those. You've got to be lightning fast. And he's, I have faith. I feel like he's going to show up at some point today, but 
you know, it could be the first day we don't see him. He's very consistent, uh, the mysterious mustache man, aka 3M. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see him at the moment, but maybe he's hiding uh, behind just, the big projector. Just a little mini game for you, chat. Let's see if we can find him. <laughs> kind of a where's Waldo situation. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, he kinda, you know, he's got the glasses. He doesn't have the same color hair, but no. Nor the uh, striped t-shirt, but no. Nor the hat. But look, the game is similar, okay? <laughs> Um, yeah, Lehens will just proc his root onto Andil here, level one. There's no damage throughput for the Ziggs. It is Comet Varus, actually, and not Lethal Tempo, so won't be able to do the insane amount of damage that you could do otherwise here, yeah. but I think it's the right call in this comp. Yeah, I also want to mention the Ziggs runes. We always like to talk about them, uh, especially me and Ox, some Zig players. Um, he did not go for cutdown. Uh, he did not go for it. Honestly, in this game, it's not as good, although, you know, Vile builds some health, and the Nautilus will at least, but um, doesn't have presence of mind either. So he did not go for that tree at all, and just went biscuits and probably just, uh, you know, the cooldown rune. So kind of disappointed by that. We'll see if he goes for a tier next, because that will be the next step of disappointment in the in the <laughs> Ziggs tree of disappointment. Yeah. What's really cool about Twisted Fate into Aatrox is for Aatrox to actually get his combo off, it's kind of a multi-step process that usually starts with chains and then you obviously hit sweet spot. But it gives Keen enough time to draw a gold card in almost every scenario so you can kind of counter the combo. And every single time Dude doesn't have level 3 and he has the opportunity to gold card and even red card in this case, you can just put some damage onto him. So by the time he has level 3, you've already chunked him down so low that even if he does all in you, you're, you're not going to have the ability to actually kill him. You're just too low. So they've Basically, Keen is now, with Twisted Fate, taking his resources, health, away. That's going to allow him to try to be aggressive here so he can continue to snowball this lane. And it's just such a great matchup for Twisted Fate if you play it well. It can be volatile because one mistake or one gank basically means that Dudu then is in complete control and just does so much damage that you might not even be able to get your gold card out in time. Well, we've seen both uh, Canyon and uh, Jungle Player for uh, D+, plus Lucid, struggling for that one for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the X Canyon spot. Yeah. Um, deal with jungle pressure very well, as we see here. So the Twisted Fate can just hard push, and he's protected. Uh, running straight into Andil here is Jovi. Now he is LeBlanc, but over the wall he goes, and he will be fine. But he does have to flash. So nice little advantage here in the mid lane for Quantum Freaks at least. Yeah. And it's going to give Bulldog a health advantage here to try to pressure Jovi, who's already teleported. If Bulldog can actually chunk him out here and push him out of lane, and that's disastrous. It's still early days here, still just sitting on a Doran's ring, so it's not like he's really going to be putting the hurt on Chovy, but if Chovy made a mistake here, it could have been disastrous. He's not. So, there's that. Yeah. Could have been really impactful, though, and getting the flash for a significant amount of time here is uh, going to be relevant. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, as you mentioned, uh, Bulldog with TP advantage and Bull, uh, Chovy had used both of his uh, pop charges, so... Not uh, not in a good state at the moment in terms of health. Andal is in the top lane. As the flash comes in on Akini, will use that ghost, but might have to flash away from this one. And yes, he will. Double summoners burned as Andal on the roam. This yeah. is why you pick the pike with the Ziggs. So two successful flash gank uh, attempts here do come through. And, you know, obviously you want to get the kill, but getting these flashes is really important. Uh, it's Keen now down both summoners. Chovy down both summoners. And Bulldog can teleport back here and try to put the pressure on further. Ando going to head down to lane. Ziggs has teleport. He's teleported back to lane, so he's going to be able to maintain CS. See if he gets hooked. Satchel prepped. Kind of messes that one up um, on the angle, and he will take a massive chunk of damage. He just TP'd back into the bottom lane. So... Yeah. Well, at least he didn't build a tier. Um, <laughs> he has lost chapter, which is necessary. Uh, Ando getting in onto Chovy. They do spot that cannon. Did start this as well. Bulldog level 6. But I think they're just going to let this one go for now, as they don't really have a bottom lane at the moment. No, they certainly don't. Um, Bull happy to be able to get most of the farm out of that turret. And now this can wave it will be lost. The Hens wants to stop his back and actually will be successful. And yeah, so it's a different variant of lane that will struggle into Varus, unless you get the all-in with Pike, which is very difficult to do. And then when Pike roams, you're just kind of a sitting duck. And Genji are not just going to go, oh, well, I see you have teleport, and I see you can just farm up and be relevant later. They're going to put the hurt on you. They're going to put the pressure on you. They're already bottom side because they got the dragon. 
And, you know, Keen in that last moment did have to use both of his summoners, was able to gold card during the chains and escape there, so well played. And he's relatively vulnerable. Guess what? Cannon's top side now. So is the Hens. Yeah, the Hens here, but so is Ondil. This is kind of an interesting 3v3. They're trying to burst down Canyon. The flash over the wall, and Canyon's in a lot of trouble. That should be first blood. Yes, it will. The Q lands as Cuz goes in. Maybe a bit overzealous on that one, but they still get the first blood. Yeah, very well played, actually. And Canyon finds himself the target here of a really nice play. And, they, you know, obviously they made the play bottom side there. They zoned out bull from a ton of CS, but now he's recovering down there, and then even though they had Canyon topside, they were prepared for Kuzgang, because this is not done yet, by the way. Andil is lurking. Yep. Guess who's back? Back again. The Q's not going to hit, but now it gives an opportunity for Dudu to get in there. There's the Q3, and he takes him down. And Dudu is getting a lot of help to get through this lane. And it looks like this is something Kwangdong have been very well prepared for, is the Twisted Fate topside, you know, pick when they have the pike, and they're using it very well. They know he's down summoner, so this is the initial play, right? So Canyon's here, and he thinks, okay, that's probably enough, but Andil also being here means Lehenz needs to be in the area, but unfortunately, Lehenz isn't able to do anything here, Ooh. and it's a fourth flash over the wall. Andil is so quick to go and follow him. That was just a really clean play. Cuz wants to go back in there, but he's unsuccessful. And then this is really just about, Kane only has one gold card, right? You instantly prep that, gets it on the second draw, but there's just not enough Mitigation here of the damage. Yeah, I think that's the big call, Wolf. As you mentioned, the gold card, it goes down, and Aatrox gets to do whatever he wants. Now, Anvil, um, he's very squishy on this the pike, and the second he gets caught out, he's dead. They do use their R button from the Vi, though. Cease and desist has immediately kicked away his canyon, but Cuz now isolated 1v4. This Bulldog not really able to help him out. A bit of damage does come out from Bulldog. As oh, from the Ziggs will take him down, and they actually do trade a kill back. Bit of a smirk on Canyon's face when that one comes through. I think they definitely expected it, but he wasn't able to get away. Good angle from Bull. And Ziggs, you know, semi-global. Uh-oh. Uh oh, denied, actually. Uh, <laughs> Dudu helps out Andil, or yeah, Andil is there as well. But now he's in the top lane. Moby Boots coming in. Still no flash available for Keen. Only one gold card. One hook, and that's it. I mean, Keen is just dead. He doesn't have flash. There's no way for him to get out of this one. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it like straight up at the beginning of this game. It's so good into Aatrox because during the time where he wants to set up for the combo with his chains, you gold card. But if you get hit by a pike hook, you don't have a gold card for the follow-up on the Aatrox. And it's happened several times now, really three times here. He was able to escape the first time, but the next two just out of luck, even with the ghost here. And that's after a deny on his teleport. Andil is just making big plays here. Of the attempts we've seen on this pike, he is by far looking the best here with the Ziggs. And you know, down here on this one, unfortunately, finds himself caught because he's trying to make this roam play, but they end up trading it back as Canyon is just a little bit too deep here. Pays coming over here has tons of damage. We'll be able to take out Cuz, but then Bulldog happens plus Ziggs bomb. So two for one, still at least they got the one. And then up here, Andil's making his way back topside. Keen does not have any defensive vision, and just in the face of the Aatrox, just calls him out saying, like, I don't think you'll sweet spot me. He instantly does. Yeah. And then now Gold Card gets used here onto the pike, but the hook still goes off before he can get the stun. Yeah. I mean, the second he stops to throw the card, you just throw out your hook. So even if you get stunned, it doesn't matter because your hook is going to land. Yep. So the pike having a very fun time into the TF. And they pinged that a bunch. I mean, the ult, the destiny, came out from Keen, and he saw the pike on the top side of the map. And someone was pinging a bunch that he could be there. And yet Keen... Still got caught by it. Had the ghost, maybe thought he would be okay. He was not, as we know. So a bit of an issue for him. And the Ziggs, finally, we get to see a game where he's he's having a pretty good time. He's just farming against Savaris. This is pretty nice. I mean, he's not getting any plates or anything like that, which would be ideal, but still able to get through lane and pick up a kill here and there. Not bad. It's a gold lead for Kwangdong Freaks, you know, here at this point. It's about a 1,000. I mean, it's very... Very seriously, a, a big issue here for Gen G if the Ziggs gets to start taking objectives as well. As second fight here for Dragon definitely looks pretty good for Kwangdong. Nice buffer from Lehens. Throws out the hook right as the hook from the pike is going to land onto him. Bulldog's got good wave clear here. Bull in trouble. Yeah, did I curse him is the question. Looks like a Q could come out here, and Bull will have to flash away from that one. That's really smart from Pays, but can he uh -oh. get away? 
Yeah, Pace does have Flash. He elects not to use it. Pulls him out of the Ziggs Bomb as now coming forward, trying to take a bull. Yes, he will, as Pace will be able to trade it one for one. Kind of an unfortunate. You look at Bull, he's got his hands up in the air. He's not happy with that. No, he's definitely not. Pays just with a big uh, ball in there, ends up trading it back despite the nice rotation down. And now the health bars are so low here for Kwangdom Freaks. Tough to imagine them sticking around for this fight long term. Lands with these hooks today, just so good on the buffer. Oh, the hook was saved here actually from Anvil as now Lahens is in a lot of trouble. Q comes through and Bulldog will pick up the kill. There's no teleport here to save the play. There's no one who can come down here and, and actually make something out of Lehen's delaying as much as possible. And Kwangdong Freaks uh, bouncing back in a huge way in this second game. Plate gold going over as well. And this Ziggs is going to be a problem in sides later too. The standing gold he's going to pick up once he starts to get into satchel range of these outer turrets. And pays his biggest worry for this dragon fight that they don't have 100% prio on is that the global impact of Bull's ultimate could actually be the, the deciding factor. So he decides to all in, gets the flash, and then finds himself in a bad spot. And instead of just peeling back towards his team, as yeah, that hook out of the bomb is definitely what Bull was mad about. Um, he decides, okay, well, I'm gonna be dead no matter what. Let me see if I can kill Bull. Yeah. And that that bomb should have hit. Unfortunately, it did not. Yeah, Lens here, he thinks that Andal is charging a Q, he's not. And so Andal just saves, waits, and gets uh, the perfect opportunity with Lens and his own dredge line down. I know those take a turret shot, but it's excellently played. And the 4v1 takes out Lahens. As a flash used here by Chovy in the mid lane. Looks like Anvil got some more work done. Yeah, exactly, because Bulldog doesn't even have ult. I mean, Chovy wouldn't have been under threat from anything else. But a hook, and that's plate gold going over. And this is starting to feel like a game where, you know, Genji are the better team and, okay. <laughs> Genji are the better team, but they're, Wind conditions are becoming so narrow here, Valdez, that if they end up losing this dragon, it's going to be real tough to crawl back in. Yeah. You see that they are setting up for this dragon. Machovi kind of low on health. They're looking for Bull now. The Satchel comes out, and it's going to get him away. Very nicely played this time around from Bull. He's going to throw out his own Mega Bomb here on the Canyon as he's in a bit of trouble due to his not hitting those cues, but he will eventually and takes out Canyon. That's the jungle of Gen.G, and that should be the dragon to yeah. Kongdom Freaks. Now, Keen will be able to get some plate gold up here on the top side. He has been for a long time ahead in CS, as Andal is not done yet. I think he should be, though. I think maybe don't, don't go too deep for this one. Don't think I'm out of CS, though, and he's going for it. Yeah, he stops the backs, and now Pays in a lot of trouble, not respecting the power of the Pike and the Aatrox. We've seen this so many times. This time onto the Varus, who had no flash, no ghost, no ult. I mean, this might just be what breaks the back of Gen G. Getting that additional kill in the face of everything. Keen got, I think, one plate topside, and then we saw the t uh, Bulldog comes up and answers him. So he doesn't actually get us a, a second plate, I don't believe. And now he's in trouble, losing half his health bar. <laughs> this game is off the rails, wild. But it's just constant action because Andil is being the playmaker. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that after game one, where Genji were in total control, it was a very slow, you know, nice tempo game. They denied vision. It was like a macro game where they were just able to control it entirely. Quantum Freaks come out in game two and are very proactive, and they just change the whole tune yeah. of the series. This is not something you see very often. And I think it should be noted that, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult to do mentally, but also just to come out in game two and totally turn the tides in this big of a way. And to be frank, I mean, the, the main thing that we were talking about in the draft was we just didn't think this pike was going to work out. It's just not, it's not been successful here in the LCK, generally speaking, with comps like this. We saw Kellen try it. That was probably the worst example. Ooh, bit of a jump uh, cut there, but, you know, down here on this bottom side play is, He's yeah, dead. yeah, he died. Um, down here on this play, obviously, Dudu has a teleport to come through. Canyon is dead and just underestimating Ziggs' satchel potential to get out of that one. I don't know how deep we're gonna go. Okay, we, we skipped the boring part. And then once again, pays no sums, and sweet spot on the second Q into, or, or the first Q there into really nice play from Mondo, closes the gap. Nothing Lehens can do to save his bottom laner here. Yeah, he just is found by Jovi. That's an AP LeBlanc. <laughs> yeah, that ain't AD. No. Nope. And yeah, just must have walked over a ward somewhere and Jovi immediately shuts that down. So, on Hill. 
So Chovy's a big threat in this game. You know, he uh, he certainly is going to be able to destroy Pike if he encounters him, uh, as we saw there, and can be a big threat onto the Ziggs. Doesn't have great way to peel against the LeBlanc. So the game is not over by any means, and Gen.G bouncing back with that kill feels really nice for Chovy. The question is, how are they going to deal with this Aatrox? Uh-oh. Yeah, that's a very well-timed question, Wolf. Uh, I guess just Ghost away, at least in this case. But again, that's a Ghost down now for Keen. World Ender used here by Dudu. Uh, you can see, though, that that's not a safe lane for TF to just bully anymore. No. Satchel being used here with the Herald. Can to get a second charge? Yeah, should come through. The Canyon's the only one here. I mean, and now he is going to be feared up. He's going to be poked down. We got TF behind them as well as Chovy who has TP'd into this one. But all five members of Quagdo are here. And now look at the kick comes in from Cuz, and they set up the kill on Keen. Very broken up, and Quantum Freeze just stick together as a five-man unit. Yeah, really well played by Cuz, and now uh -oh. Canyon in trouble. Yeah, he's barely going to get away. He has to use so many summoners. This has happened so many times. Now Chovy in a bit of trouble. He is LeBlanc. Would expect him to get away here as the Q does not land from Cuz. Yeah, unfortunately not able to land that one. Chovy going to escape here with his clone. It's Infernal Soul, and the next dragon is going to spawn in 90 seconds time. So Genji will have a moment to collect themselves here, get those respawns up, and then come over and contest. Keen, no ult. And look at Dudu. He's free f pushing into the top lane right now. Very difficult to answer this. Bull also free farming in mid. And things are really just very quickly becoming difficult to play out here for Genji because they have backline threat. And in moments like this, you're looking for that backline. But the coordination is just so good here from Kwangno Freaks. And I think Genji really just saying, OK, well, they're not prepared for this. No, they were. Uh oh, Keen, uh, once again, his arch nemesis, the Pike, comes in and Andil, I'd say deservedly, picks up that kill. And uh, yeah, once again, Keen now 0 and 4. I mean, he's so far down the lane, they don't have vision in their own jungle. He, he moves right at the five-man unit when Canyon was running away. It feels yeah. like kind of the mental of Genji has been broken a bit, especially Keen not playing his best game. Definitely not. And, I mean, Keen, he really just did not expect this bike to be as good as, uh, or rather, to be, to be piloted as well as uh, Handel did. And that's what I was getting into earlier. You know, we got broken up by that last fight, but I just didn't trust that Andil and Kwangna Freeze get it done. It's a comp that on paper can work. And Andil has, and, and, yeah, and Andil's had some high highs, but not with this type of play style really just yet. And I think no one was ready to just blindly trust he could pull it off, but CV Max was, and they've been scrimming this for sure. And it is working out. What is not working out though is being a little bit late to this dragon spawn here necessarily. Let's see if Chovy can actually find a way to be relevant in this fight because he's the real carry right now for Gen G. If he can actually get backline access, maybe get a flank off, maybe that's your angle to contest a dragon like this. It's kind of interesting there. Pays wanted to farm the wave, and Chovy just kind of pushed him off of it and took the farm instead. Maybe getting close to a break point as Pays just has two completed items. Uh, but either way, yeah, you see that Genji are just going to give up this first Infernal Drake. They just say, well, we can't really fight it right now. Objective bounties are up. That's how far ahead Quantum Freaks are in this game. Don't see it every pro game, but this is not the game two I was expecting at all. No, definitely not. <laughs> if anything, you know, generally speaking, the teams that get destroyed like that in game one and come back way weaker in two. Last time Kwangdong played against Genji in round one, they played a close game against them in game one and then got obliterated in the second. This is the opposite scenario. Genji is still in this, and the gold lead, I think, obviously tells a big story. But it's not, it's not telling the story of this Twisted Fate that isn't a champion, that isn't relevant, that can't Destiny Gate for relevance. I mean, he's basically a giant vision button at this point for them. And if a fight goes longer and there's a mistake from Kwangdom Freaks, yeah, maybe he can help chase somebody down. Maybe he can help you uh, chain CC Andil if Andil goes way too aggressive. But this is now no longer the time where Andil has to fish for picks. He's been able to get enough that the rest of the map just becomes Kwangdom Freaks's, and he can just play a, a quiet, chill game now. He's going to be clearing vision with his Umbral Glaive, and that's his job now. He's more of a supporting role now than an assassin at setting up Gen.G, or rather putting them behind. Now he just maintains the lead, which is so frustrating for Gen.G. And you know, this Baron group up here for Gen.G is kind of required because they don't have vision. They don't want Keen to just press R and lose that tool. So they need to come over here and try to clear. Ooh, because jumping on over as now Andal is going to get ulted. They go very deep for this one, and they will pay the price. Two kills going the way of the TF after all. 
Quantum Freaks, they certainly overstep here in a big way. Dudu now in a bit of trouble. He's Aatrox and he's pretty fed. So Keen will have to flash away from him, but 5v3 you would expect this should go the way of Gen G as Dudu. Little snipe from the Baron as he's gonna go down. And Keen now, he's looking for revenge. I mean, he is getting in there, hook. It's not gonna land on a Bulldog who just flash away. We got Canyon coming in from behind as well. And the TP, they really want to get a big swing in gold on this play as they will be looking to dive into the turret. Lahenza, a bit of a mistake, but it's fine. He's trying to give up his life for the team as Zonda wants to trade it out to Toby. He'll at least get that kill. As now he will flash and he is piking, should get away, but that's four kills going to Gen G. Yeah, four kills, a massive swing of gold. It's a much smaller gold lead now than it was just moments before. And Bongo Freaks losing too many members, even with Genji overextending there, Chovy going down, Lahens going a little bit uh, hard on that dive, let's just say. There's not any way for them to start up the Baron. It all starts off with this call here from Cuz to chase, and then Chovy goes back onto his clone, and unfortunately, there's just no fall of damage. Like, Bulldog is speeding himself up here. Bull is trying to get over here and be relevant, but they're just too far away, and you can push deep vision, but that's... That's too deep. You know, you, you already got the job done. You already cleared it out. You could have been trying to start up Baron and forcing a flip and forcing Gen G to come to you where you have so many different tools. You already did the vision denial job. You've got good poke with Bulldog. But overextending there is really just what's going to potentially be why you lose this game. And, you know, in the VOD review, it's definitely going to be a moment where you look back and go, we really, really didn't realize how much control we actually had at that moment. We didn't need to hard force that. And then. Obviously, Genji continue to punish here. They have Twisted Fate. They follow with the ult and then come in here and do a ton of damage. A little bit of an overextension from the side of Chovy and Lahens, but still getting it done in the end. It's now only a 2,500 gold lead, so they've halved the gold deficit they had moments before. See what else they can get done here is Chovy is still the biggest problem for Quantum Freeze. Yeah. I've seen this story before. It's Andal and Cuz going way too deep. Andal is going to get away, but now Cuz in a lot of trouble. Vile comes out, and he is going to go down. That is the jungler now of Quantum Freak's gone. Like you said, I mean, it's deja vu. We just saw this on the other objective, and now we're doing it again. Run to Baron. No jungler. No jungler. No vision here as Toby's going to clear the last of that away. And there's just nothing Quantum Freak's could do. It's not even like... Bulldog can get value on the side, on the other side. He's not going to be able to get a turret, so there's no cross map. You have to just try to get in there and see if you can get any exit kills, but I think it's just too slow. Here for Quantum Freeze, they had to try something. Yeah, definitely a nice amount of poke damage from them, but as you mentioned, they're coming in here. 5,000 gold, or health rather, on this Baron, and they will have the smite pretty easily. There it is at 1,100. Bulldog's going to get hooked here as Andal's in a lot of trouble. Chovy just escorting these people out of the pit. This Bulldog desperate, but he just puts himself in a bad spot as Quantum Freaks, they are floundering, and Gen G have now retaken the gold lead. And I believe Bulldog actually had teleport that entire time, so it could have maybe come over earlier. He's the one who could do the poke damage. He's the one with the range. As Andil and Cuz are threatening a Nautilus, who by default will root you, and then the follow-up CC comes through. Gold card on to Cuz, and then Canyon just commits the ult, knowing that if I get this kill on the jungler, they cannot contest Baron. And Bulldog just does it. He walks all the way up here. By the time he shows up, it's already over. The story is done. The show's over. And Andil, he's just not very tanky, is he? He's just a very, very fragile pike. And he did his job in the early game, maybe doing his job a little bit too much now. Maybe it's time to retire on those shenanigans with Cuz. Yeah. Uh, Sovi, he's a menace, as you mentioned. He can kind of just do whatever he wants. He's like what Andil wants to be at this point in the game. He's like, Andil's like, I can go anywhere. I can do anything. That's what Chovy's doing. Yes. And you have to identify that the game state has changed. I feel like Quantum Freaks, freaks uh, a bit behind on doing exactly that. Now, dude is up here pushing, but Gen Z are getting an Infernal Drake as we speak. It's so aptly put. I mean, the, the timing has changed, and it changed the moment that they got caught around the Baron. A chance to take down Chovy? He has Banshees. Bill. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Yeah, then down here, the answer is a little bit less. Uh, promising for Guangdong Freaks. Bulldog's got good wave clear, but it's Baron buff minions here. And that's going to be the turret going down. They defend topside. And unfortunately, Genji are now in control of this game. 3,000 gold the lead. Probably get that gold graph up in a moment to show just how wide um, the swing has been. And Guangdong Freaks, you know, we hate to say it, but this is a team that has been able, or has very rarely been able to 
push strong mid-game leads into strong late-game wins against teams like Genji. They put them to the brink in game one the last time they faced off, yeah. but then stumbled when it mattered most. And once again, just some overextension here. As you can see, Andal on the player cam as well. He's got this kind of grin of, Man, I think we might have botched this one, guys. <laughs> and they certainly have, as Chovy loses Banshees. Uh, okay, this is a bit much from Chovy, I would say. Can they take him down? The stun does come in, and he is going to flash. He has another distortion, and he will get away. Nothing's too much for Chovy, Valdez. I guess so. <laughs> I guess not. Um, okay. And now now he's actually just baiting the entire team. This game is getting messy. His dude is in a lot of trouble. He will world ender, but no resets for him. And no regenning of health for him either. Andil, once again, looking for something, but you just lost your Aatrox. Baker's got to be so mad, man. Chovy just walking into this oh, one, getting the solo POG. <laughs> <laughs> Passes him in the stand. He's going to be 200 up. But yeah. Baker's got He's got to get the solo POG in the next series today if he wants to keep up. As uh, Chovy is just hard carrying this game, even if it looks silly uh, while he's doing it. In the second scenario here, where he baits them all into a poor fight, especially Dudu, who really wanted it. Um, and really is just going to die. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate as well as we might have a fight here, actually. They're going to turn it around on Akuz as he is just, oh man, really, really struggling in this one as he gets caught out by the gold card. So much CC on the follow up as they want Andil. They'll find Bulldog and they'll get another flash. But yeah, it feels. Kind of sad for Quantum Freaks. They never really got to utilize their poke comp at all. It mainly was just a big early lead with the Pike and the Aatrox getting ahead. I mean, they never got to a game state where we saw like Ziggs and Wei put two and two together and their decision. Out of places. Yeah, the decision on the Baron to go that deep. You know, we go all the way back to Cuz and Andil's wild ride. If they just start <laughs> the Baron instead. Episode one. Sure. I mean, yeah. if we go back to that moment. Everything was in their favor. They could have tried to start the Baron. They could have then gotten Baron to further their lead, made it impossible for Chovy to flank because there's no vision for him. They can always spot him on the flank. I mean, that's what you could trace all of this back to in a butterfly effect. And then, yeah, Bull drops the satchel, gets the ban Banshees here, and then it's like, oh man, Chovy might be in trouble. But guess what? He's got Flash, he's got a second distortion, and he's got a Blast Cone, your favorite. Yeah. So he's out there. Then Dudu, I mean, he just walks straight into Canyon. They had vision. Oh boy. Yeah, now Chovy's just doing this to people now. Find Battle enemy champion done. and 100 to 0 them. Yeah, he, uh. No one is safe. Let's just say that. Yeah. Not even the Aatrox at this point. Has Edge of Night. I think if Chovy has enough time, he'll take him out too. And. Yeah, Chovy just going to be alone in the mid lane. He is the one to the four. And they're going to utilize uh, Keen to the top side as well. Not even having the Baron buff anymore, as the Baron is going to spawn in about a minute. Yeah. They have a turnaround here. They don't have Lahens, but they're still just going to kill Dudu. It just doesn't matter. Everyone's just so disjointed here. They don't have a tank support, so it's really difficult for Andil to actually support that or appeal for that uh, engage there. And I feel like Twisted Fate is straight up one of the best picks you can have into the pike, to yeah, be totally yeah, honest, yeah, even yeah, though he got yeah, destroyed yeah, in the laning phases. Yeah, Joby just waits in the brush and Cuz walks <laughs> face first into his demise. He's just saying, you know, come over here, come over here, uh, look for this. And he doesn't need anyone else. He he does the damage. He is the danger. And he picked up a Storm Surge as well, because why not? Are you saying he's the one who knocks? Yeah. No, he, he knocked multiple times. Are you actually. saying he won? <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's, you're right, though. I think it is just going to be the Toby POG again. I mean, he it, this game is all about him. And keep in mind that Andal also attacked his lane, but LeBlanc ended up just not really caring about losing Flash and not really caring about falling behind in the very early stages because just farms the enemy champions instead. <laughs> Certainly did. Uh, and now they're going to start this Baron up, and there's just 2v3 down here. They're zoning them away. What can you do, cuz? Andal's not even going to try for it. No Ziggs bomb to save them. This game has well and truly gone off the rails. But Gen G are still the train drivers, namely Chovy. I just, I'm so hung up on their attempt to get a pick on the other side of the Baron pit. Because I feel like this game was 100% in their control. They were the ones pulling the strings. It's cuz oh, no. no way a second time, oh, right? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be okay. Onto Will as well. 
They've and got mobility, at least. Control wards are like 3-0 on Cuz this, uh, this <laughs> series. He is not winning the battle against them. Yeah. They do have value. They're just really good into Cuz. It's his weakness. <laughs> Buy as many as you want. As Joby's gonna see the teleport coming in, but the, the dragon's already gone, guys, so not really finding any value. And now your Zigs isn't bought either. So this is gonna kill Andal instead through the Celestial Opposition. Yeah, he just, um, he's a glass cannon. The glass is broken now. Yeah. Uh, uh -oh. This is just... Walk in the cuz, and he's dead. That's gonna be the end of him. Put him out of their misery, Genji. Yeah, probably the end of this game as well. Flash comes in, Lahens gets to have his moment. He's had a lot of moments where players are running into him. Now he's the one running at them with his Flash. As, oh God, Jovi, you didn't have to do them that dirty, but you know, just to secure your POG vote, it's fine. As Genji will take the 2-0 in a fun turn of events halfway through that second game. Yeah, I mean, look, Keen was punished super hard. The Guangdong draft was risky, and we were like, oh, one mistake, and it's it's over. I didn't expect that mistake to be after they had full control over the game, but that's when everything fell apart. But Keen, even though he stumbled through that laning phase because obviously he was collapsed on and ganked many, many times, he still farmed. He still pressed gold card on people when the overextensions happened, and yep. he was a huge part of why they were able to turn some of those uh, misplays out of Quantum Freaks into a victory. Never lost sight of what he needed to do on Twisted Phase, just press gold card. Doesn't matter if he's AD, doesn't matter if he's AP, he gets the stun. He, he had a decent game, all things considered, after just being in uh, Andil's prison for the entire early yeah. game. And pretty good series from Canyon as well. But Chovy, he just stole the show. Game one, some flashy plays wasn't as clear. This one should be a 12er. There is no doubt in my mind he picks up 12. Church of Chovy. <laughs> I like how he's fully embraced it yeah. now. He does it every single time. He just knows, man, there's going to be more Photoshop because he deserves it. Yeah. Definitely fair. Um, my hands he says, thank you. Puts up the double thumbs up. You saw Keen wasn't too happy. That, that's going to be one that definitely tilts you as a pro gamer, but it's okay. A win's a win. You see, he's yeah. getting talked to by the coach. It's not, not the best feeling, but at the end of the day, as you mentioned, you know, sometimes you're the guy that rides the bus. Sometimes you're the guy that, that presses the, cold, uh, the gold card button or the Nautilus ult or the Vi ult, and then the rest of your team that was fed. Chovy While you is were taking all the pressure, does the job for you. Chovy is the bus driver in that second game, 100%. Yeah. Like, pays Lehens. Not relevant. Keen, very not relevant. Uh, and and Canyon, not really. Uh, as Andil, he and Cuz had such a great early game. They put the Twisted Fate down. The Twisted Fate that's so comfortable into Aatrox alone. But plays like this that were just so clean. And then Keen is like, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. But all of this doesn't matter. We could just skip to the highlight where they overextend behind the Baron Pit because all of this just disappears like sand in your hands, slipping through your fingers the moment that call is made. But I think we can appreciate good coordination, good utilization of a draft here that we were very skeptical about. We can give them that much. Yeah, absolutely. This is the moment and you then, were talking about, Wolf. Double knock up, press gold card, King gets two kills. He's right back in the game. And more importantly, Gen G are right back in the game. They turn this into a 5v3 and they chase them under the turret. And, and they get a bunch of gold back. Dudu's decision to teleport here to try to help out also just ends up being him going down. I mean, he might have been able to get a bunch of damage off on the inner. Loses his teleport here. Just such, I mean, you couldn't really even imagine a bigger swing of momentum. Yeah, this is really the big fight where Toby got uh, so many kills. And then he followed up with even more. Finds Ondil, finds Bull. And again, this was just desperation from, from Quantum Freaks because this happened after they checked another ward, another control ward, another brush with the Nautilus in it. They get caught, Cuz dies, Baron started by Gen G, and immediately the game is swung wide open in a massive way in, in the span of like four minutes. So, the last moments. Go for the end. Yeah, I, I think they called out Lee Sin had no flash and no ult, is what it sounded like they said, but that, that must not be right, because he, he does have both in this moment. <laughs> um, or maybe they were right. Yeah, they, maybe they just mistracked it, but either way, um, Chovy gets the really fun ending here.
Didn't even need the chains. Yeah. Uh, that was a, a hard game. Same they were dizzy. After that one, yeah. it's kind of what it sounded like. Yes. They're just like, oh, wow, that game was disorienting. Dizzy. Yeah, disorienting, dizzying. Um, it definitely swung very fast in the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, look at that gold graph. Uh, guess where Guess where that moment, ever, anybody pivot into seeing that moment where, you know, if you could think about one specific time in the game where everything changed. Yeah, I, I think Control Ward gets uh, 12 out of 12 for this one. Chovy just benefiting from the... <laughs> Cuz and Andil going in on that one. But yeah, either way, uh, thought we were going to have a series on our hands, but they look clean to me, guys. 2-0 from the side of Gen G. We'll pass it over to Space to break down that game. Thank you so much, Valdez. Really glad that you washed your hands. Good stuff. And a 2-0 for Gen G that did not look like one from the offset. I think that we do have to echo what Wolf was saying um, in the fact that Andil did manage to play a pretty decent game of Pike, especially in the early stages of the game. They just maybe didn't need to run that far down. So, uh, Huni, Orcs, how do we feel about the draft, at least initially? I thought it was an interesting approach because, I mean, Andil had a very rough game one, but they kind of played the Ziggs Pike uh, lane where the whole point is not to lane. And it kind of frees up the Pike. And particularly when you have this Aatrox and the TF matchup, this matchup is very rough in the isolated 1v1. So we saw the Pike go up there frequently. We saw that really push the uh, matchup into Quandon Freak's favor. I also do want to mention LeBlanc. It's actually very hard for them to deal with LeBlanc with his composition. A lot of the CC, like Lee Sin, needs to get on the LeBlanc. Pike needs to wind up his Q. And she's just permanently a threat to Ziggs and Huey. And you know, on the offset, wasn't immediately an issue, obviously developed to be a huge one by the end of the game. Yeah, I'm gonna add coin like what I said in the from the pre-show, like TF, like the reason why it's not actually just, you know, playing every single time when you actually probably could, it's like, it's just the risk is always there. And I really liked it, the draft, like from the Guangdo Freaks trying to make a really volatile Oligi. And that actually affected in all the game phases, like which is like Guangdo Freaks was up like above like 3000 gold ahead. And they were be able to like actually stack in the, the the Void Grubs, like even like Dragon, Dragon Control was like, it was good. Until like, I think it's just Genji just like has a better, there's momentum it's just at the team fight, just they just win with the, just the amount, same amount goal or like slightly lower goal, like it doesn't really matter. Cause like they have a bet, they are, the composition is like actually they they use really well, they abuse really well the distances they had. And also just generating the, pre generating the pressure with the long vibe from the side lane. Also TF ulti. There's so many factors that they can actually pressure, even though it's like, they don't have to fight with an even number. So I think it's just like the, the Genji's like as a team, they were just playing much better this game. Yeah, and things like Huey and Ziggs really do like to sit behind a front line and fight in neutral with, you know, big tanks in the front if you're actually going to play out a mid to late game. And we saw that it was very difficult for Bulldog, often found himself quite, uh, himself quite far up. But that wasn't before uh, Kuz and Andal found th themselves far too far up. Yeah, and you really just don't want to be taking fights in the jungle against this Genji composition where there's so much mobility to get over walls. But also, like, this is so much pick potential on the side of Gen G. So they pick up those first initial two kills, and then you have the Chef on the flank, you have the threat of the LeBlanc over the wall above. It's so hard to escape this team once you're at a deficit, and I feel like Gen G opted, uh, sorry, Quantum Freaks opting in there, it just completely threw the game away. It's just, when you see like above the red wall, the red side jungle, the wall, like that's, I call int zone. Like we call like actually just do not yeah. mm -hmm. do not cross the line. If you cross the dot line, that's we're called in zone. Just watch out that. And I think that's always it actually happened. It's just like even professionally, like when I was just actually player, like I was telling to my players, just like please do do not cross the line. <laughs> they cross the line. They, they no in zone, everyone. They went into the end zone. So you're actually so it's sort of like the Lion King. You know, it's like everything the light touches except for the in zone or the Elephant Graveyard. I, uh, now I completely understand I'm never going to go there ever again in my games. Unfortunately though, Konong Freaks, they did. And then immediately afterwards, things just really fell apart. Yeah, I mean, you saw the first play, which went from a 5k to a 2.5k gold lead for Konong Freaks. This is the one that put them behind. And it's just, again, it's Andal and Kuz leading the charge. They don't have support from the uh, mid and AD carry, but also, you know, they're going to a position where you really don't want to be to fight. 
And then we have this scenario where they have to approach a Baron with very little vision. And it's kind of doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. You don't want to give over the Baron for free, but against like a LeBlanc, how are you supposed to safely approach this? And look how much work Chovy ends up getting done in this play. It's just a Chovy just make the really, really great play. They can't really do anything. It's just like he just, they, they're just, I mean, this is like thing that like they probably have to just give up the Baron like pretty like clean, like cleanly, and just go like mid or bottom, just push the wave or just get the jungle. It's again, like, there is an in zone on the top side, but there is also in zone again on the blue side. They also enter two times now in two minutes, and that's where actually game end. They found both the end zones. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of in zones in this game that I'm learning about uh, here today. Thank you so much, Huni. Always giving us the content that we need. Is it time? to give Trovi his POG? I think it absolutely is. Not Rob this time around, it's guaranteed. 900 POG points. We've seen, I, I feel like I mention this all the time, but we've seen players win with just a thousand and he is getting very close. Yeah, I mean, he's had so many strong games. I mean, we obviously always talk about Trovi as someone who's very individually strong, but I feel like he's just been on fire. So many games where it feels like he's just playing above the level of everyone else. And this one, when his team was struggling, he didn't really fall behind. And then as soon as the momentum came back in return, he just had such a great sense of when to go in, when to go out, and how to find picks. I mean, it's just such a different POG from the game one, which is a like game one that was like since it was like so smooth, everyone played really well. But this game actually it shines even more for Chovy because like he didn't make any single mistake, and it's just like he actually carried along in this game. Like I will say, and I'm expecting it's gonna be 12 out 12. Expect it. Yeah. It uh, so be. clear first place now for Chovy creates. Uh, an extra 100 points gap between himself and Faker. Faker now has the opportunity to answer back in our next series as T1 take on uh, Fear X. Uh, but he's going to have to get a back-to-back -back himself if we want to see these be completely even once again. The most obvious 12 out of 12 um, ever, I think, outside of that barrel one, but that wasn't even a 12 out of 12, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but this was just an incredibly clean game from Trovi, and even when their team was behind, he wasn't. It's kind of nutty. Any closing thoughts for Genji versus Quantum Freaks? What's the answer for Quantum Freaks? How do we get them out of this slump? Well, I think game two, even though they ended up throwing away, I think at least we saw some of the, the early proactivity, I think, suits the team better. We saw them struggle game one because it was a scaling sort of comp with the, the smolder. I want to see that early proactivity back. And sure, you lost against Genji. That's expected against a weaker team. I think they closed that game too. Dongshim uh, is going to be their next matchup as well. So that is an opportunity to come back uh, and really find a, a potential victory. Huni? I mean, they do get that. They do have a skills to, to they do have a tools to actually take down the Genji early game, which is like they do have a, they know how to actually just get the generate the early goal. But the thing is like, they just have to think of the next step and which is I think that's gonna be a tough one but it should be easier against as you said it's it was against Genji so I think it should be easier towards the next game yep focus on mid to late game macro something like that but now it is time to throw it over to Dia for some interview translation with Chovy Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Chovy on the side of Junji. Congratulations! Chovy, with today's victory, Junji has reclaimed first place back. How do you feel? With uh, the 200 POG points today, I also have my uh, first place in the POG rankings, uh, which is great. Of course, we were also mentioning the first place that Gen G has reclaimed uh, as they have reclaimed the sole position of first place. So how do you feel about that? I feel like every match, it feels like it was very uh, hit or miss in terms of whether we were going to win. So it's really nice that we were able to reclaim first place today. And in game one, after seeing the enemy's team comp, you guys went with Fiddlesticks as your R5 pick. So what strengths were you looking for? The Canyon has a very big champion pull. And Fiddlesticks just seemed like a really good pick that stood out to us. And with, uh, with that, I think the conversation was, when else will we play Fiddlesticks, if not today? So that's probably why, uh, through all the practice that we had so far. 
And with such a dominating victory in Game 1, you got four consecutive POGs so far with Azir alone. So did you expect the POG today? Yeah, in Game 1, my Azir play was pretty decent, and I feel like my other, the rest of my teammates actually did pretty decent as well. So I thought to myself, if I get POG for that game, that must be because I'm lucky. In Game 2, against the Huey, you locked in LeBlanc. So, what was different about the draft this time? So, in Game 2, Azir got banned. And when looking at the enemy comp, it just felt like they would be weak against LeBlanc. And I believe that I was a I'm capable of playing out the laning phase where I can disable the enemy Hui and LeBlanc would be able to scale really well. Game 2, so with the enemy Pike getting early advantage, we heard your teammates say, oh my gosh, we're getting dizzy because of the Pike, and it could have been a difficult game, so uh, what was the plan to turn things around? Pike actually has an early advantage with his roaming, but that's only in the early stages, so late game he actually falls off. Uh, you know, I obviously did notice my teammates struggling against him, so I was thinking about how will we play this game out. It was, it was a little dark at one point, but we were able to play it out, and he was falling off like we expected. So that's probably why we were able to win today. And so we have some solo kill highlights here. Would you like to walk us through this moment? So there's a there's a word in the Void Grub's pit, and I saw Pike go over that, and so I caught up to him. I locked him in with E, and I was able to actually get the solo kill. So this was actually, or afterwards, we weren't able to get a lot of uh, vision in the second highlight, but I just called the Ferris over, I said, maybe we can get this kill. So Pace reached uh, 100 LCK wins today, uh, so would you like to say a word of congrats to him? The pace has been with me since he has debuted, so that, you know, in a way I can probably say that I got him the 100 kills, but I won't say that. Uh, you know, I know you worked hard for this, so congratulations, Pace. I will definitely ask Pace about your word of congrats next time. And your next opponent is KT Rolster. You have to get a revenge on them as they are the only team who defeated you in round one. What are your goals? I will get my revenge. I think that's enough said. I believe that results are all that matters in the end, so I will make sure that uh, our fans can expect us to get our revenge and get a win in our next match. And this will be the end of the interview with Chovi of Genji and back to the space. Thank you very much, dear. I am Atlas Star. I am joined now by Renek Talks and Hunassis. And we're here to celebrate the fact that Who Are You Man is now gonna be debuting just before T1 versus Fear X. I'm not even sure whether anyone can hear me. Um, guys, do you wanna have a look at the standings? Uh, I can't see, but I'm sure they're That's showing fine, some interesting talks. stuff, you know, um, that I would comment on in this situation. But, uh, you know, I'll leave it. Huni, can you see? I am uh, not Sunni. I'm not. I'm definitely not Huni. No, no, no. Who are? Uh, yeah. I mean, the Genji's took a go on, and Gongo Freaks is still there. So at the not bad spot, honestly. Even though it because it is expected. So keep that keep that up, mine. Really good stuff. It is now time to get into this new show. I am so excited for it. To be perfectly honest, this is going to be so damn cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, short break, then we're going to be back with T1 versus Fear X. Enjoy! Who are you, man?
CL에서도 만났었고 이제 LCK에서도 만나게 되었는데 조건 제대로 터졌어요 야 나이스 이긴다니까 오래된 멤버끼리 이제 플레이오프 진출해가지고 좋은 성적 내보고 싶어 어, 지우 선수 LCK에서의 대결은 조금 힘드실 것 같아요 그래서 준비 잘 해오셨으면 좋겠습니다 정체를 숨기고 오직 실력만으로 승부한다. 미스터리 복면 칼바람 대전 구아유 맨! 오늘 저와 구아유 맨을 함께 해주실 분들을 소개해 드리도록 하겠습니다. 윤수빈 씨부터 인사해 볼까요? 안녕하세요. 윤수빈입니다. 오늘 패널로 참여하게 됐는데요. 제가 뭐 인터뷰를 워낙 많이 하다 보니까 너무 쉽게 맞출까 봐 지금 조금 걱정이 되는데 한번 열심히 해보도록 하겠습니다. 네. 그리고 우리 또 인플루언서 우정희님 나와주셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 실버 대표 우정희입니다. 반갑습니다. 네, 반갑습니다. 아, 평소에 좀이 LCK는 즐겨 보시나요? 아, 네. 제가 실버긴 해도 이 시청자 경력은 되게 길거든요. 아, 그렇죠. 그래서 시청자의 눈으로 제가 한번 맞춰보도록 하겠습니다. 우리 우정희님의 활약 기대해 보도록 하겠습니다. 자, 그리고 아, 이 선수 정말 오랜만에 또이 롤파크 무대에서 뵙게 됐습니다. 운타라님 나와주셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 네 안녕하세요 티모를 사랑한 남자 운터라 박혜준입니다 반갑습니다 <웃음> 네 반갑습니다 칼바람에서는 뭐 팀은 어떤가요? 칼바람에서 또 부시가 있잖아요 그래서 그렇죠. 오늘도 플레이로 보여주는 선수가 한 명쯤은 있지 않을까 라는 생각이 들고 아, 있습니다 너무 팀호에 지금 몰입하고 아 조금만 힘을 좀 예, 네, 빼주시기 바라겠습니다 아, 근데 전역하신 지 얼마 안 됐는지 몰라도 각이 확 잡혀있네요 아각 잡혀있습니다 예 네, 알겠습니다 아, 그렇게까지는 예예 예. 아주 아 그리고 지금 유일한 현역 선수라고 볼수 있겠습니다. 아... 베리 선수 나와주셨습니다. 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 이제 KT 롤스터의 이제 롤도사 역할을 하고 있는 베리 조건입니다. <웃음> 네, 반갑습니다. 오늘 사실 베리 선수의 역할이 너무 중요합니다. 왜냐하면 또 현역 선수이기 때문에 보는 눈이 좀 남다를 것이다. 이런 예상이 되고 있는데 어떠십니까? 저도 이제 현역 선수로서 이제 다른 팀의 경기 같은 걸 많이 보는데 얼굴이 안 보이니까 좀 많이 힘들지 않을까라고 생각합니다. 알겠습니다. 우리 또 후닝님 나오셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 지금 LCK 글로벌 아날리스트로 활동하고 있고요. 이런 플레이 스타일을 봤을 때 제가 딱 캐치하는 그런 능력들이 되게 뛰어나다고 보시면 될것 같기 때문에 다 맞춰보도록 하겠습니다. 알겠습니다. 어, 이번 대결을 위해서 저희가 또 특별히 고수진 그리고 임주한 예설님이 나와주셨습니다. 네. 아, 잘 생겼다. 자, 오늘 진행되는 이 후아유맨 키를 내거나 CS 100개 그리고 상대의 첫 포탑을 파괴하게 되면 그대로 경기가 종료가 됩니다. 단, 귀하는 한 번만 가능합니다. 이 게임은 현역 LCK 선수들이 직접 나와서 단한 명의 선수만이 이 칼바람 왕자의 자리를 차지하며 제 1대 후아유맨 주인공이 됩니다. 자, 불꽃 튀는 승부의 세계 후아유맨 지금 바로 시작합니다. 자 그러면 대망의 첫 번째 조 선수들을 모셔보겠습니다. 우리 같이 훌려볼까요? 복스맨 이에 맞서는 다음 장난감은 너야. 방모맨 나와주세요. 아 엄청난 기선 제압 지금 해주고 있습니다. 자 기선수로 아예 아유 무섭니까? 예, 아유 쳐다보지 마세요. 어, 어, 진짜 무섭네. 오 어, 어, 눈이 좀 보이는데 어, 부리부리합니다. 자 네네네네. 내가 나이가 더 많지 않나? 자 일단 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 
고맙습니다. 아 반갑습니다. 지금 음성 변조를 통해서 저희가 네. 이야기를 나누고 있고요. 자 그리고 팡모맨도 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 진짜 샤코가 되셨네요. 맞아요. 어, 반갑으로 굉장히 포스 있게 그렇게 이야기를 나누고 있는데 오늘 연습 많이 하셨습니까? 연습 안 해도 됩니다. 오, 팡모맨. 왜 팡모맨이죠? 나 인생이 비극인 줄 알았는데 코미디였어. <웃음> 아, 이거 준비하신 거예요? 어, 괜찮은데요? 어, 컨셉 좋습니다. 저 폭스맨님에게 질문이 있습니다. 네. 아까 들어오실 때 포즈를 근육을 좀 자랑을 하셨는데 음. 평소에도 뭐 운동을 좀 하시는지 어? 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 제우스? 이거는 <웃음> 이거 패널들에게 혼란을 주려는 동작인지 아니면 자기의 정말 시그니처인지 아 이거는 저희가 더 이상 말씀드릴 수 없습니다 오늘 출근할 때 많이 이게 좀 오래 걸렸나 알았어 너한테 <웃음> 혹시 뭐 윤수민 아나운서 궁금한 거 있을까요? 어제 이어서 오늘도 경기장에 오시니까 힘드셨겠어요? 팡모맨님 <웃음> 어? 오. 오. 어디서 나고요? 지금 플로팅 하시는 거예요? 부끄러운다. 그 상대에게 기선제 앞판에 포즈 한번 취해 볼까요? 그러면 한번맨 기선제 앞 가볼까요? 오, 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 그 선수의 승부를 저희가 활발한 나라를 통해서 확인해 보도록 하겠습니다. 자, 그럼 후양맨 첫 번째 조 대결을 시작합니다. 일단 저는 재미없게 하는 사람 싫어요. 좀 시원하게 하는 사람 만나고 싶습니다. 근데 왜 여우, 여우, 여우맨? 뭐 가볍게 그냥 죽여버리고 가겠습니다. 속순해, 네. 기다려라. 내가 죽여줄게. Why so serious? 네, 강연 하나 너무 마음에 듭니다. 1대1 대결 지금 너무 기대되고 빨리 혼내주고 싶습니다. 팡범맨 같은 경우에 생긴 게 앞당이라가지고 제가 그냥 혼내주고 싶네요. 야, 팡범맨! 일단 확실히 둘다 되게 공격적인 성향이긴 해요. 어... 인터뷰를 들, 들어보니까 이게 뒤에 감, 이제 감, 오! 아, 오! 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 저런 성향의 선수분이 안 어? 아니 저런 분 있어요? 어 한다 한다 자 이제 투아유맨 첫 번째 이제 경기 시작하는 거죠 칼만한 나라이기 때문에 3레벨부터 시작한다는 라게 특징인데요 벌써부터 기대가 됩니다 맞습니다 지금 많은 예측들이 패널들 쪽에서 나오고 있어서 레넥션을 밸런스 하는 거는 3레벨이 3라이너다 레벨 3라이너 지금 3라이너다 재밌는 게 솔로 친구들이 좀 많이 살리고 있는데요. 내세 네, 탑라이너야. 어, 탑라이너다. 맞는데. 네, 마지막까지 폭스맨 고민하고 있습니다. 와. 야! 탑이야. 근데 알고 있는 거 그리고 챔피언 선택 다리우스 나왔습니다. 폭스맨. 근데 지금 한번 팀워가 나올 때 지금 네, 나올 때가 됐는데 다리우스 상대로 원래 팀워가 좋습니다. 다리우스 상대로. 그리고 이 친구 화끈한 남자보다 어쨌든 좀 질파기는 친구잖아요. 밴도 챔피언 선택도 모두 탑 중심으로 진행이 됐습니다. 황머맨의 우디르 보호막과 점화 그리고 착취를 들고 왔고요. 그리고 음. 폭스맨의 다리우스 점화, 점멸 그리고 치속을 들고 왔네요. 어? 맞아. 에프점멸 아니에요? 오, 에프점멸. 에프점멸이네. 에프점멸. 그리고 왼쪽이 디점멸. 디점멸 같아. 디점멸 같아. 맞아. 점화가 밑에 있어. 진지하게 라인전이 시작했는데 일단 서로 부시에 숨고 있진 않아요. 맞습니다. 그리고 약간 6레벨이 되고 나면 다리우스의 한 방도 나올 것 같은데 네. 그전 단계 때 저렇게 좀 공격적인 아이템을 들고 온 빵머맨이 한번 많이 해보자. 우디를 많이 해보자. 우디를 많이 해봤어. 우디를 많이 해봤어. 우디를 있네. 난 유지력으로 이겨. 어, 먼저 밀어봐. 아, 라인 잘 밀어요. 게다가 첫 번째 웨이브 때 CS 여섯 마리 오잖아요. 길교환 하면서 벌써 다섯 마리 먹었습니다. 여기 우리의 단점이 오, 평캔, 어, 평캔 천도. 아! 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 아
약간 CS 먹는 거에 대해서 의심하시는 분들이 있거든요. 뭐 정글라딘 서포시다. 바이오스에 대한 이해도가 많이 없다. 너무 낮아. 맞습니다. 앞서서 인터뷰 했을 때그좀 파괴적인 모습과는 별개로 지금 많이 위태로워 보입니다. 안 땡겼어. 왜 땡겨? 땡겨 하면 되는데. 바이오스 처음 해보나? 폭스맨은 6레벨 찍었으니까 네. 뭔가 이 폭스의 단두대 한번 보여줘야겠죠? 폭스맨이 포션 두 개가 가고 있어. 어? 이거 없어요. 어, CS 먹으려고 오신 거야? 집사시오. 어, 미래는 그냥 시간 가면 이래요. 아, 지금 여리, 여우가 지금 꼬리를 좀 보이고 있습니다. 폭스맨, 폭스맨 일단은 응급 키트를 먹으면서 네. 체험을 해보겠습니다. 아, 검사에 뭐 등에 난 척수? 오! 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 블랙스 패스. 어, 블랙스는 끝이야. 재밌다, 근데. 흥미진. 신나게 뜯고 있죠. 나는 이 채굴하면서 CS 먹으면서 집 가서 아이템 빵빵하게 사오겠다. 내 타임 미쳤어. 어차피 중간에 쫓겨져서 이기면 돼. 지금 양쪽에 골드 격차가 나오고 있는데요. 천 골드 이상, 천백 골드 이상 차이가 벌어졌고. 그러면 폭스맨이 선택한 아이템은 아! 어, 균열 생성기. 네. 폭스맨은 케이닉 루컨을 들고 왔어요. 아, 1대 균열. 한명 장화까지. 나 신발 먼저 가는 게딱 3라이너 같다. 아 시간이 지나면 지날수록 지금 예, 시간이 촉박한 건 폭스맨이에요. CS 100개가 어느 생각 지금 다가오고 있거든요. 맞습니다. 그래도 일단 계속해서 딜변 해 봐야겠죠? 어. 아, 그래도 이게 아이템 효과 때문에 지금 좀 자, 치속 터졌어요. 폭스맨 지금인가요? 어, 예, 안 달아. 떨리자, 슬슬. 아, 떨리자. 예, 이렇게 떨리자. 예, 가면 되죠. 아니, 근데 이제 집안 달자. 집한번 가는 게 룰이랬죠. 예, 밝게 나는 게 끝나죠. 아, 슬픈 일에 덮자, 진짜. 힘들 때 웃는 자가 인류라고 지금 폭스맨 인류 행동 나왔어요. 이 칼바람은 소환살국이랑 달라요. 게임할 네. 때 옆에서 파이팅, 힘내, 괜찮아, 할수 있어. 음. 해주는 팀원들 없어요. 그렇습니다. 자, 그래도 이번에도 지속 떠들이고, 패싱 떠들이고. 딜가 하는데 따라가서. 서로 점화가 있기 때문에 키가 꿀수 아, 있습니다. 아, 점화 붙여놓고요. 영혼의 일기토. 아, 좀더 따라가나요. 아, 폭스맨 반수대. 그러면 네, 황범에는 이제 2라운드 준비를 위해서 무대 뒤편으로 이동해 주면 되겠고요. 네, 아, 아 축하드립니다. 다음에 봐요, 조커. 저기, 여우 씨. 예, 나와주시기 바라겠습니다. 아, 복스맨 너무 아쉽게 됐습니다. 이거 어떻게 된 건가요? 사실 1대1 못해가지고 아... 다음 척해봤는데 예. 궁금하네요 목소리도 굉장히 힘이 없는데 혹시 패널분들 어, 경기 어떻게 보셨... 우정 있는 경기 어떻게 보셨나요? 일단 너무 재밌게 봤고요 근데... 바리우스를 조금 못하시더라고요 <웃음> 아, 실례죠? 우정 님그 티어가 어떻게 되신다고 하셨죠? 저는 실버 4요 실버 4에게 현... <웃음> LCK 현역 선수 <웃음> 바리우스 <웃음> 못하시는 것 같다 아, 이 바로 어떻게 생각합니까? 아, 내려와. 아, 패널에게. 허브리를 왜 패널에게 하세요? 네네네. 혹시 다른 분들 중에서 뭐 게임에 대해서 어, 뭐 하고 싶은 얘기 있으실까요? 좀 CS 먹는 거 보니까 서포트 아닌가. 사실 제가 봐도 그건 조금. 선 넘는 플레이가 좀. 아, 죄송합니다. 아, 잘 들어오시네요. 잘하셨어요, 저희. 잘했어요. 근데 여러분들이 
자꾸 얘기가 저를 째려 보니까 여러분들 조금만 발언에 소리를 아. 좀 낮추시기 바랍니다. 알겠습니다. 네, 혹시 그 추측되시는 선수가 있는 분이 계실까요? 플러스 기아의 켈린 선수 있지 않을까? 어, 플러스 기아의 켈린 선수요? 어, 저도 그렇게 생각하고 있었어요. 어, 서포... 근데 켈린 선수는 키가 더 크세요. 저는 그냥 알겠거든요. 오, 어, 바로 알겠다. 어, 왜 이렇게 해가 보고 싶다. 어, 바로 다리를 왜 꼬시죠, 갑자기? 선수. <웃음> 예, 예, 예. 이제 몸이 좀 좋으시고. 어. 저런 약간 끼가 있으신 분. 어. 오. 누구죠? 그 딜라이트 선수 아닌가? 오. 딜라이트 선수. 생각을. 오. 과연 패널분들의 추측이 맞을지 아니면 예상 밖의 인물일지. 복스맨 아, 예상이 아예 안 된다. 뒤돌아서 가면을 벗고 정체를. 공개해 주세요. 우와. 자, 복스맨의 정체는 바로 누구세요? 그러세요. 그러세요. 뭐야? 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 복스맨의 정체는 바로 누구세요? 그러세요. 강동 프리스 커즈 선수입니다. 정글러. 라이거. 자, 팬분들이 모두 서포터일 것이다. 팬들이 모두 다 딜라이트일 것이다. 많은 추측들이 있었습니다. 제가 생각해도 라인전을 많이 못한 것 같긴 한데 조금 상처네요. 미안해요. 아 저는 근데 사실 단숨에 패널 분들이 알아보실 거라고 생각을 좀 했거든요. 일단 윤수빈 아나운서님께서 좀 키가 작다고 말해주셨어요. 아 진짜. 아니 그 그러고 저랑 서 있어도 상대적으로 커 보여가지고 아 그리고 네, 또 다른 분들이 예측하는 것 수도 있고 아 그래서 좀 아쉬움이 남을 것 같은데 또 오늘 너무 고생하셨고 마지막으로 시청자 여러분들께 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 열심히 하겠습니다. 어, 재밌게 봐주세요. 감사합니다. 네 감사합니다. 평소에 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네 무대 뒤편으로 이동하셔서 이제 퇴근하시면 되겠습니다. 네 빠른 퇴근. 좋습니다. 자 미스터리 복면 칼바람 대전 후아유맨 바로 이조 선수들 모셔보도록 하겠습니다. 누가 감히 내 능력을 의심하지? 개코맨 이에 맞서는 내가 최고가 되겠어. 킹콩맨 나와주세요. 뭐야 뭐야. 오공. 어? 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 오? 오? 아까 그분 아니야 또? 아까 그분 다시 가면, 가면 다시 써서. <웃음> 우리 개코맨과 킹 킹콩맨 어, 이렇게 킹콩맨. 두 선수를 모셔 봤는데요. 먼저 어, 개코맨부터 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 아 안녕하세요. 네 반갑습니다. 아, 네. 앞선 경기를 좀 지켜보셨을 텐데 어떻게 보셨나요? 아 확실히 많이 아쉬운 것 같아요. 답답하더라고요. 음자 <웃음> 그리고 우리 킹콩맨도 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 킹콩맨입니다. 네 반갑습니다. 오. 그럼 자유롭게 이 패널들 좀 날카로운 질문이 필요합니다. 지금 1조는 뭐 전혀 예상을 못 하셨거든요. 킹콩맨님한테 이제 질문 하나 드리면 혹시 그... 김 씨인가요? <웃음> 예? 네? 반도직입적인데? 아, 아닙니다. 어? 아니라고 또 답변을 해주셨습니다. 근데 좀 수준 높은 질문 좀김 씨냐고 <웃음> 물어보시는 거는 조금... 네, 개코맨님. 개코. 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 3, 3대 몇이시나요? 아... 음... 오케이 알았어요. 비밀입니다. 비밀이다. 아, 일단 알아들었다는 것만으로도 어느 정도 좀 운동을 좋아하는 몸이 아닐까. 실제 좀 체격 좀 말하면 너무 빠르실까 봐. 보시고. 알겠습니다. 질문 여기까지. 그럼 서로에게 포즈 한번 취해보겠습니다. 자 서로 위협하는 포즈 한번 보여주세요. 안 친하다. 둘이 안 친하다. 아주 난친하다, 귀여운데요? 난친하다. 어, 열 번째 귀엽습니다. 안 친해. 킹콩은 좀 귀여워요. 달라. 알겠습니다. 자 그럼 킹콩맨과 개콩맨 자리로 모셔보겠습니다. 위치해 주시기 바랍니다. 안녕하세요. 개코맨입니다. 저는 남자답게 하는 거 좋아해서 글싸움으로 가는 스타일이 하고 싶어요. 사실 킹콩이라고 해서 그거 하나가 어떻게 될지 모르겠는데 개코가 킹콩을 이기는 걸 보여드리겠습니다. 어, 1대1 대결에 좀 자신이 있는 편이어서 잘 이겨낼 수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 개, 개코? 그래도 킹콩이 개코보다는 낫지 않을까. 개코맨의 코를 부수고 올라가도록 하겠습니다. 내가 널 부셔주겠어. 파이팅 하시죠. 근데 저는 저기 자리로 아까 걸어 들어가는 걸음걸이가 음? 저는 그 벌써부터 네. 들어오는 게 너무 입장이 오버리 얼굴이 그냥 보였어요. 맞아요. 어. 네. 얼굴이 보였다고요? 네. 이거 의논하면 되니까. 아. 일단 보고 보고 얘기할게요. 자 이제 
또한번 시작됩니다. 미스터리 북면 칼바람 대전 후아유맨의 두 번째 경기예요. 사이버딘 거면 서포 서포시네요. 레넥턴이야? 아니 아니야. 탑인 척하는 미들 수 있죠. 미드 라이너도 레넥턴 잘하지요. 이번에 좀 벤이 좀 특이하게 되고 있어요. 어? 이블린? 약간 상대 팀에 대한 존중이 없을 수 있는 그런 팀이 될 수도 있어요. 확대 난다. 확대 난다. 오 요네. 아, 아, 하이오. 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 하이오 딩거 이블린 요네. 오, 오 야수. 오, 오 야수. 돌파. 이레이제 있으면 뭔가 어! 홀로의 냄새가 나는 것 같기도 하고요. 개코맨 이레이야 락인 됐습니다. 그리고 킥코맨은 베이스예요. 이거 볼만한 매치가 만들어진 것 같습니다. 와 이거 진짜 무료했네. 이거 미드라이너 인것 같은데? 아니 탑 같지 않아? 아무래도 탑 탑이요? 그런데 이렐리아 컨트롤 하는 거 보면 딱각 나와. 각 나와. 킬 쓰는 거 보면 알아. 제이스도 딱 나와. 예전에는 탑에서 자주 만나던 매치업이죠. 제이스가 계속해서 견제할 수 있지만 이렐리아에게 한번 물리면 그 자리에서 바로 가버리는 그런 칼끝 승부의 매치업이 나왔습니다. 킹콩맨과 개코맨의 대결에서 어떤 모습이 나올지 궁금하네요. 그렇습니다. 두 선수 다 정복자를 들었고요. 스펠은 서로 간에 차이가 좀 있습니다. 아, 진짜 모르겠다. 소메이커 선수 아니에요? 저도 그렇게 예상하는 건데. 지금 약간... 소메이커 선수? 김 씨나 물어본 게 이제 또... 아, 그거였어요? 네, 이제 별명제 김호수가 있었는데. 그리고 이런저런 유추에서 사실... 오, 오. 엘리... 어? 어? 네, 아이템도 뭘... 좀... 네, 뭐 롱소도 막 3개, 4개 샀다가 막 예, 톱날 단검 샀다가 지금 정신 못 차렸어요. 근데 문제는 개코맨이 좀 고민이 많은데 최종적으로 흡, 흡혈의 낫으로 결정을 한것 같죠? 어, 그래서 아, 일단 바꿨다가 도란검 들었다가 초반은 버티고 나중에 모란검 나면 그때 한번 승부 보겠다는 생각? 그냥 진짜 허을 네. 따겠다는 네. 거네. 근데 이 멜리아 진짜 하는 것만 봐도 아, 따가 따가 따가. 일단 첫 번째 기한 이후에 한방 승부를 노리는 것 같은데 네. 과연 그첫 번째 기한까지 점화를 들고 온 킹콩맨의 공세를 버틸 수 있을지. 어? 약간 늦게 나오는 과정 속에서 미니언이 조금 타긴 했어요. 그렇습니다. 어차피 어, 하는... 자 라인도 어, 야, 야, 어, 경험치. 경험치 한 마리 놓쳤어. 아이템 고민하다가. 뭐야. 그렇습니다. 어쨌든 이게 6레벨이 똑같이 찍히는 과정에서 손을 보는 걸 거잖아요. 어, 어 개코맨 그래서 벌써부터 이거 비상이 돼요 개코맨. 자 그리고 킹콩맨 제이스를 자신감 넘치게 들고 있는데. 어, 자딴거 면무. 빠르게 싸웁니다. 서로 간 스펠 교환. 오 밀어냈어. 밀어냈어. 길을 정말 손재같이 다했습니다 개코맨. 아! 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 첫 킬이 정말 손재같이 따있습니다 개코맨 자 땅검 연무 빠르게 싸웁니다 서로 간 스펠 교환 오 밀어냈어 개코맨 개코맨이 승리하면서 개코맨 2라운드에 진출했습니다 축하합니다 네 승리를 거둔 개코맨은 무대 위로 이동하셔서 2라운드를 준비하시면 되겠고요 혹시 어떠셨어요? 네, 아, 쉽게 킹콩맨이 좀 패배를 기록하게 됐는데요. 이거 어떻게 된 거예요? 앞에서는 이제 세팅을 이상하게 해놔가지고. 아, 아, 아 세팅 이슈. 그것도 또 패배 일부니까 뭐 인정해야 될 부분이고. 어, 오늘 패널 분들은 경기 어떻게 보셨나요? 또 하이오 밴을 했어요, 밴도. 어? 이블린. 어. 맞아. 어. 타이머딩거. 어. 요네. 어. 이렇게 또 퍼포먼스 식의 밴과 엄청 어. 잘하셔가지고 음. 저 쇼메이커님이지 않을까? 쇼메이커 선수일 가능성이 있다. 네. 저는 100% 왔는데요. 지금 딱서 계시는 어떤 팔의 각도? 어, 어. 고개를 돌리시는 어떤 이런 어, 어, 어. 어. 실루엣. 어? 네. 쇼메 맞죠, 쇼메이커 선수. 캐리아 선수입니다. 어? 캐리아 선수다. 아, 캐리아 아니, 선수일 그래. 것이다. 뭐 추가적인 의견 있으실까요? 저도 아까 하이오 배난 거가 이제 보통 이제 호수가 약간 이게 좀 좋은 그런 음 의미로 약간 배나는 그런 것도 있고 아까는 약간 인터뷰할 때 호수의 그좀그좀 하나 생각하고 약간 트레이 트레이드 맞아요? 트레이, 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 트레이. 어 이거 이거 캐리아 선수예요? 이렇게 하는 거지. 이쪽은 캐리아 파, 저쪽은 쇼메이커 파. 달렸어요. 김정인님 보시기에는 
아 그거보다 아, 좀 라인 전이 아쉬웠던 게 <웃음> 와, 실버 어, 실버가 거리를 어. 좀 벌리면서 지루했으면 아 좋았는데 아 끝나고 저랑 피드백 따로 해야 될것 같아. 아또 아 그건 또 확실하죠. 예, 우정민 선수님 또 게임 <웃음> 내적인 이야기를 또 해주셨습니다. 자 그러면은 아쉽게 패배를 기록해서 이제 1라운드에 탈락한 킹콩맨 킹콩맨은 뒤를 돌아서 정체를 공개해 주세요. 기도해 주시기 바라겠습니다. 킹콩맨의 정체는 도발적이야. 진짜 잘한다. 아예 잘한다. 바로 
Hello and welcome back to the LCK. We're here for the second match of the night. The first one, a quick 2-0 from Gen G, but now we're moving into T1 versus Fear X. This one, again, a clear favorite in T1 uh, alongside of Gen G at the top of the standings, and Fear X on a pretty big losing streak at the moment, trying to break out against a strong opponent. Yeah, it is going to be a rough one. Um, and it's kind of master versus apprentice in a lot of ways for Faker versus Closer. Again, in the mid lane, we talk about this every time because he was once playing behind Faker uh, back in 2021. Take a look at the standings. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the difference between these two teams' performances so far this season. T1 with a 2-0 would reclaim first place. That's the expectation. Uh, and then Fear X, of course, two wins behind Kwangdong Freak. So even with Kwangdong Freak's big drop, their fall from grace, they are certainly uh, sitting pretty right now with the buffer that they have. And I think in a lot of ways, we're not going to have the standings here for this, but it's Faker versus Chovy, okay? Chovy <laughs> picking up two POGs. He's at yeah. 900 to Faker's 700. Will Faker get the solo as well and catch up to him? That's another thing we'll be tracking tonight. Yeah, and what is he going to play? You know, is he going to play the way once again? Is he going to be playing something else like an Aurelian Soul or, or potentially even something more interesting? As T1 competing for first place versus Fear X competing for playoffs. Fear X, as you mentioned, two wins behind Kwangdong to try to catch up to sixth place. And they're on a five match losing streak. They have had a lot of rough opponents to go up against, and it has not gone well for them. No, it certainly has not. And I mean, I think the. The top side of the Rift has been very split, right? I feel like Willer is playing phenomenally well at his best, especially, and Clear has really been struggling. It's going to be a tough matchup for him today into Zayus, uh, the best top laner in the LCK. Now, let's take a look at the solo kills leaderboard and see that Zayus is in first place. Clear is in fourth, one behind Dinden. Uh, so that matchup, again, it looks close with the solo kill numbers, but we'll see how it goes on the Rift. Closer as well, second place. He has been very good at uh, securing those in the laning phase. Outside the laning phase, though, not the same impact as a lot of other mid laners. Yeah, definitely those three players in the middle would be three that you wouldn't expect, uh, especially on teams that have between them a total of five series wins. But that's the way it goes. Lane doesn't always win you the game. Matchup of the two supports with distinct colors, Genius Monster. Um, that's one way to describe Karia with the most POG points of supports versus monster support within LCK or LEC rookie roar rather in execute of course formally Jung Hoon if you guys don't recognize him um, definitely putting my money on Karia for this one Wolf yeah I am I will double it I will double raise you on that one because whoa um, 
<laughs> and, and also good carry up because I think that this could be where things are very one sided. Um, and like you have a top matchup that's not going to go up for Fear X. You have a mid matchup that's very likely to go to the favor of T1. See if Closer can get a solo kill on Faker. We'll see if he can challenge his master, right? And the bottom lane, it feels like, is a coin flip on Execute. And if that goes wrong even one time against this bottom duo right here, Kumiusi and Karia, you are going to have a rough one. And picking scaling has been the new hot tech uh, over the last half of last week and the beginning of this one for the weaker teams going into these types of matchups. If you can't beat them in the early game, if you can't out-coordinate teams like T1, the hope has often been, well, you'll smolder them in the late game. Maybe you'll play that Ezreal to work out but it isn't working out. The Senna's gonna be banned every game and T1 walk onto the stage here, looking poised to take that 2-0 and reclaim first place. Yeah, uh, T1 do, of course, sometimes go for the happy games where they pick interesting things, either for the fans or for themselves. And sometimes, you know, having a bit too fun, getting a bit too over aggressive and good teams, any team basically, will be able to take advantage of that in the LCK. We have mostly good teams here. Firex is no different. So T1 just have to be careful of that, basically. And, you know, they will want that 2-0, so I would assume they are aware of it. Here is Firex. As you mentioned, Execute does look very mechanically sound at times, but uh, can be a bit of a coin flip compared to uh, the consistency of the T1 bottom lane, which has been, once again, just going back to W to carry. Firex are, in the LCK, of our 10 teams, to me, the most known quantity. You know exactly how Clear is going to play. You know that Willer is going to be aggressive early. You know Closer's play style in the mid lane, what champion pool he likes. And you know that whether Hanna wants to or not, he's going to be going in at level two when Execute goes in with a flash at level two. It happens every game. And that makes this team very exciting oftentimes to watch, but very predictable. Our key player matchup, if you're a Fear X fan, you're not going to like it is going to be the top lane where we have our best top laner in the league by far top solo kills with a 13.1 CS difference at 14 average against worst in the LCK negative nine on clear second or rather third from the bottom in terms of goal difference at 14 and fourth highest on isolated deaths now he does have also the fourth highest solo kills yeah but uh that's because I think a lot of teams are trying to come up there and, and punish him even harder after he does expend summoners. And he's got a few kills under turret, stuff like that has happened. But this is a big hole that Fear X have, and we expected more from Clear. And you know, in the first round, Robin, you go, well, it's still early. He hasn't delivered. It feels like we have another situation with Birdall, who was the former top laner of Live Sandbox as well, who came in with high expectations, started off okay, but slowly declined. And I think Clear has kind of fit into that mold in a lot of ways, feels, really bad if, if you're a clear fan because he was once greater than this and he is not playing up to his potential but something's going to have to change if your ex want to make playoffs this is going to be one of your tougher matchups this is not the matchup you go well i gotta win this one to get playoffs but i'd still like to see a good showing from the squad tonight yeah i mean any win could make the difference at the end of the day you know if you, if Kwanong freaks begin to collapse a little bit and you pick up a series here and there you begin to tie them and you want to have a good game score and maybe getting one game off t1 maybe that's the maximum or maybe you get two. Maybe you just got to start off with something. You got to start off with that first game. Uh, it's just funny. We just had the who are you, man? And now we have the sign coming out here with the fox mask of the fearless foxes. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I think we're going to know pretty early on how this match is going to go. <laughs> I think we will. And you know, Observer Cam is going to be bot side early. OK, you're going to see that flash come out. The only support player I can ever think of since I joined the LCK that had a similar play style uh, to what we're seeing from Execute was when life was on Genji. And it was a set support meta. And even when it wasn't a set support meta, it was for him. Uh, <laughs> that, but he, Jarvan. he often with Ruler made those plays very successful in snowball lanes, where it, which Execute unfortunately in this meta has not been able to so far. I think a lot of teams with a fairly stale bot meta we've had for a really long time, have just known how to deal with those Nautilus engages, the Flash Renata Q, you know, these types of handshake opportunities he thinks he's going to get a kill with. A lot of the LCK has advanced. You know, in the LEC, you might get away with that, but here, the level play is much higher, and some of the heroic plays is made of one games for the team. We'll see if he can do it tonight. 
It's going to need some. I am curious about this draft as well because you can only ban away so many things. I think that carry a, he'd probably play Teemo support if, if the team told him it was an 80 carry at this point. So, you know, maybe you just don't ban away anything at all. They take away Zeus's Aatrox to start off. Nautilus gone. Ash going to be taken off the board as well. I like the Aatrox ban. Isaiah is on an insane win streak with this pick. And, I mean, we know he is the best in the LCK. He very well may be the best in the world at this pick right now. His form is incredible. And really? the Milio ban here is quite interesting. Execute hates that champion. He does not like to play it. Um, he Is Kerry going to play Camille support? <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the whispers I'm hearing nowadays. Uh, one of them from actually our co-commentator in Chronicler, who's playing it in solo queue, but also uh, at the top of the ladder as well. Seems pretty strong. And Lucian's going to be banned, which leaves Senna, which is not allowed. That's not the strategy that has been winning for the last 14 times she has appeared. We might see 15 as... Santa's going to come out here, or rather, uh, Sejuani is going to come out here for Willer with the Azir pick. So no synergy built up on those two picks just yet, but we could see something like a Yone top, but I uh, I fear it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Faker is on a 9-0 and zero streak with the Orianna uh, in this season, I should say. You know, uh, Tom Kench. Tom Kench here is the best option next to Nautilus. I wonder if that was the strategy from T1 is to ban the Nautilus. It's a good pick for Execute and just give Fear X this false sense of hope that, okay, well, they banned Nautilus, so they're not planning on playing this, right? And of course they are, because it's the best champion in the game right now. But the Tom Kench does come out here. That's a known quantity as well. Faker also on a huge winning streak on this pick, uh, even larger than the Senna win streak that we have here in the LCK on the Corky. The numbers aren't lining up for Fear X right now. They are really not lining up for Fear X. So Varus is the answer to the Senna Kench. I've never seen this attempted before. Okay, this is a better option, I think. It's definitely going to be able to match the scaling a little bit better. Is the lock in the Rakan? Yeah, Rakan currently seeing a lot of success in the LCK, even alone, uh, regardless of the Zaya, which probably you don't want to see into Corky Senna, please. Um, but, you know, we'll see what they decide to do. Uh, the Rakan itself, though, has been pretty good. You have some decent reliable engage, uh, some hard engage, and you have the Sejuani as well. I wonder... Uh, there's a Tom Kent on the other side, so... I wonder if Hanna would be interested in playing Jinx in this composition, because you have a lot of ways to, to blow up a single target, and the range that Jinx has can follow up pretty well. And it, before Senna starts to stack, you'll be able to kind of meet her in the middle there. The Varus is 100% is going to be banned, right? We knew that from the outset. Uh, that was not going to come through when they decided to prioritize the Rakan. But maybe the Rakan plus Sejuani and the Azir ultimate gives you the opportunity to get Jinx excited and then carry the fight front to back that way. It's just a, a thought I have here because clearly something unusual is going to come out. If it's the Zaya here, then we got to talk to Ryu after this. Because uh, <laughs> I don't think that is, is ever going to be the answer in this one. As Poppy taken away here. So Zayas' pool you know, is quite large. Uh, he'll play anything, but they're taking away some of the best picks here into some of the yeah. remaining available ones, like the Cassante. Zaya is banned away, so they're not even allowed to play it. Surprised T1 decided to go that way. It's going to be Tristana bot. Yeah. Uh, pretty interesting. I thought, you know, maybe with the Poppy going away, we're, we're thinking about some kind of aggressive pick in the bottom side. I wasn't expecting Tristana. And you ban away the Gnar and the Poppy and the Aatrox, and you don't take Cassante. Yeah, I feel like that doesn't seem right. My my most frustrating point of this is, yeah, you're going to get counterpicked for clear this way. Technically speaking, oh, it's Twist of Fate. So uh, we'll see how this one goes. But nobody would have expected you to pick Tristana. You didn't need to lock it away here. It wasn't going to be taken away from you. You could have gotten a prior pick instead, a safe one. And now let's see what the counterpick for the Twisted Fate is going to be. Viego ties this composition together so incredibly nicely. You have pick potential with the Twisted Fate. You have so much range with Senna. You have more, you know, damage output at range and also sustain with the Senna here. Very difficult to punish this composition. And you could save the Senna. You could save the Corky. Smolder top. This is... Are we going to see it? Smolder top sounds like a disaster in this composition. Thank God it's not going to happen. 
Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. I was about to lose my marbles. They're about to be all <laughs> over the floor, bouncing down the Law Park stairs, right behind Coma down right over there. You see them flying down. Somebody's going to trip over that. Would have been a hazard for all the staff here. Glad that didn't happen. He's going to play Jax, which uh, is going to have a better time. Works well with the Sejuan. You got Permafrost Synergy. Yeah. It's going to be hard for Viego to win. Yeah, and right? exactly. It's going to be hard for Viego to win that 2v2 with the, the Sejuani up there. Definitely a strong pick here for Clear, and it's obviously one that he's fallen back on many times this season. Comfort pick for him, a pick that he's played yeah. so much last year when Jax was actually at the forefront of the meta. It's one of his better picks, so I do like this a lot more than Top Smolder, which might have actually just been a hover trick there, but we, good we luck stacking it. that one up. We have seen it in other regions, I believe, um, and in solo queue, but yeah. Uh, with, with what they already had, that seemed a, a bit strange, to say the least. Um, I'm very surprised Cassante was just kind of ignored, right? They elected to go for the TF blind instead as... Is that Jungyun? Yeah. It's Jungyun! It hey, what's up? <laughs> and, and Jiren for Firax. She's with another announcer as well. Um, worked with her on Cartwrighter. So, hanging out. All the announcers, they know each other. They're friends with each other. They're going to come watch League of Legends together. As uh, this T1 comp... It does everything, and it is going to scale. It is going to have mid-game power. VRX, let's see that Tristan execution. That's all I can say. It's going to need to start in the bottom lane. Let's see it. Game number one starts now. A little side note here in the early game for you guys who don't know Jung Young, former uh, announcer and host here at the LCK, also works now for Valorant and does a lot of the events there. I would assume the majority knows, but for yeah, you guys who enough. don't know, we're like, hey, it's Jung Young. They're like, who's that? <laughs> so clearing that up. But yeah, here we are in game number one, T1 versus Fear X, and they have gone... For some interesting picks, it's it's no crazy to carry for carry up, but he is a long time fantastic Tom Kench player. Yes. And they got Senna. And they're playing TF Top. And the Tom Kench could save the Senna, save the Corky, even could save Owner if he's trying to go in there and get the, you know, resets going in a skirmish. So I feel like the Tom Kench is gonna get insane value as you know, you might be thinking, well, if you say the Viego, but then the center is going to be in danger. I mean, I don't expect T1 to be on the back foot at any point in any skirmish in this game outside of the first few minutes. As Guma is just going to come over here and get that first Q off and do some additional damage. Hanna, I feel like this entire game revolves around as the gold or red card slow is going to be huge. Yeah, they're going for the Counter Strike first. And you see that Zeus doesn't really care because Counter Strike has a much longer cooldown than the pick a card. So <laughs> at level one, not really the play, I think, to get onto the Twisted Fate. I like the call to go for red as well for some additional damage. Counter Strike going to be used to dodge this gold, and then that's it. Now Zeus has control until your next Counter Strike, and you're going to get frozen out of some of these minions here. Very frustrating. As your melee, he's ranged. There's a gold card. You don't have a Counter Strike for that one. Yeah, and you know, Zeus is, is fantastic for his NAR spacing. That was always the champ we were like, wow, he's really perfect at, at playing right on the line between getting too close and being too far away to not do enough damage. So I would expect this TF is going to be pretty insane in terms of the laning phase. And we're already seeing a bit of that extra harass in this game. Okay, another one to connect here. Now he has level three, so he's going to stack that passive as well on his autos. And, I mean, it's not a fun time, let's just say that, as he should be able to get this cannon minion and the melee as well, but falling behind in CS, decides to counter strike here just to get the cannon. Still takes damage here as Zeus, yeah. The spacing has been pretty legit, let's just say that, Valdez. Uh, yeah. I think the thing about it is that, yeah, you know, in theory, the Counter-Strike is going to be very nice into the pick a card, but in the early stage of the lane, especially level one, where you yeah. opted to go for a trade, yeah. the, the TF will always do a lot, especially if you're going AD, because then your auto's just hurt, right? Um, as Henna goes in, and yep, it's hit by the root and is in a bit of trouble, will hop away. So that's the end of Tristana's ability to do anything on this uh, before this first back. Right there, off of an insta-root from Guma. Really well played. 
as Faker also, yeah, 20 win streak. So he's six ahead of the Senna. Yeah. Um, and they will go, those streaks will continue together. Closer may have to flash. Oh, trying to predict it, and Closer just stares at him. Good call from Closer. And there's a pause. Now, d nobody get ahead of themselves. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. <laughs> All right. Nobody panic. I, I can assure you Everybody everyone is, is panicking, panicking right now. <laughs> but, but, but don't. We don't know what it is just yet. So It could be anything. It could be a spilled water bottle. That was one of the hopefuls last week, wasn't it? It could be, you know, this is the beginning of game one for a new series. Maybe a player messed up their settings, right? It could be... It could be a, a, a mouse issue. Could be a hardware problem, keyboard problem, uh, chair problem. Toilet issue. Toilet issue. We've it's a bit those. early, but you know, it, it has happened before. Kuve uh, is in our content now as well. Glad to see he's, he's thriving in, um, in modern League of Legends. So, the game state rough for Liv Sa or for formerly Live Sandbox Fear X right now. Bottom lane with that one all in attempt foiled instantly. B top side, bad trade level one, and honestly taking a bit of extra AoE damage from a few of those red cards. He's pushed in. Uh, a gank in the mid lane is avoided. No flash used. And that sums up everything we've seen so far. <laughs> So now I am yes. I am done my legal obligation. We could talk about anything. Yeah, and <laughs> we'll get this up here first as we're trying to figure out what the issue is, and we'll let you guys know as soon as possible. Um, again, don't don't jump to assumptions, but um, yeah, or to conclusions, which is the the real phrase. Um, currently, four minutes into this one. Well, three fifty six. True. <laughs> Four seconds away from four <laughs> minutes. Not quite exact. T1 doing well in the laning phase. And um, <laughs> we're verifying the issue right now. Yeah. And I have a bad feeling, Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, same. So we had an update, obviously, before the broadcast today with an apology to everyone and also a promise that additional measures have been taken. And we will be updating the fans faster this time around. That is the LCK promise, and we'll be letting you guys know as soon as possible. So if you're stressed out, we're going to have a repeat no matter what happens, as it is a reported ping issue. So that's, a, that's not the sign you're looking for. But I guarantee you guys that no matter what happens, even the worst case scenario, you will know much faster than you did on Sunday. That's the LCK guarantee. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping this gets resolved and the games are still playable. So the wording is different. To say it is a ping issue compared to what was network issues last time around. So we can uh, we can only hope, we can only pray that yeah. it is not the same as no one wants to experience that again. No. And it is uh, very early on in the game. The difference between this pause and the D plus DRX pause was that game was almost certainly decided. It was almost a game that you could, if you calculated by the rulebook, actually award a win. We are very early on in this one. And T1 has a very significant advantage just to set the stakes. It is a small advantage, but it is very significant uh, in terms of how the lanes are going thus far. Mm -hmm. Three winning lanes, crushing uh, at the moment. It's a 200 gold lead at 356. To yeah. Contextualize it further. Also, if you know you're just tuning in for the T1 series or the Fear X, you know, regardless of if you're if you're joining us for the second series, the first series was totally smooth, no issues. You know, just kind of went through it very easily. Um, so hopefully this is not the same as the D plus and DRX, and we can just kind of fix it and get on with the game but uh, we'll let you guys know as soon as possible yeah and some uh, questions being asked I, I want to remind everyone that even if you're at home and you're frustrated with this and you, anyone who's in the live audience is frustrated with this I guarantee you the there are 10 people that have the right to be the most frustrated and it is those 10 players sitting on stage as they were last week as well. And, um, you know, as annoying as this may be for you, we have to make sure that this ping gets resolved so the players can play to their utmost potential so they can actually play what they prepared 
as this is a very highly competitive League of Legends tournament where the best players in the world, including the greatest of all time, is sitting on the stage in front of you on camera, are playing, and we want to make sure they play the best conditions. Yep. And uh, we're going to try to get this resumed here in just a little bit. We're going we're gonna to test it out, as we did many times the other time, around and uh, see if it is working. If it's not, you guys will uh, see us probably pretty soon. As the game has resumed. So that gank from owner uh, didn't get the flash. Will force closer to teleport, though, as the Gatling gun from Faker chunked him out. So Faker had already TP'd. So tried to use that for an additional advantage. And that's where we were. So yeah, Closer trying to stop a back, and he will be successful. Does take a chunk of damage, though, which, you know, he just TP'd in, so that's not what you're looking for. Also misses the cannon to the chagrin of Jonah Strong. I saw that tiny little zoom in. <laughs> I know exactly what he means. We all know what it means, and I think Closer going to be pretty unhappy with how this scenario went, as Faker once again has enough for Gatling Gun, is going to push in, and... Baker's planning on pushing this and backing. It's kind of awkward for him now, though, because he used the Gatling Gun mostly for damage. Yeah. He also TP'd earlier as well. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so he doesn't have TP, so that, that may have backfired a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice ward placement there from Zeus just to spot him after landing the gold card. Seems like Claire is doing okay. Obviously, the first uh, time we saw this lane earlier, it was not great. He was experiencing a lot of pressure but uh, also had to use his TP. So yeah, picked up a refillable, which is going to be immensely uh, helpful into this lane with the amount of harass you are going to experience melee into TF as Counter-Strike is there, clear. The nice trade this time around. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Zayas goes down. Maybe he thought he could do something with that, and it was a red card used there from Zayas. That's how confident he is. It's okay. Yeah, owner already using Smite, so Willard just gives him a thumbs up and hops out of there. Teams have gotten so good at securing their one bub. Uh, and this is going to be no exception. I'm just coming in there and making sure you do not lose that valuable experience. As so far so good in terms of ping for the moment. Looking like we are in this one for the long haul. Fingers crossed. So happy to report the gameplay is still I really going. I wish you didn't say that. <laughs> I don't believe in jinxes. I, yeah. All right, fine, Valdez. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, I just wanted to say something positive, okay? I felt really good about it. I really did. Nothing we seemed weird. Everything seemed fine. Uh huh. I don't believe in curses. I don't believe in jinxes. I will step on a crack. I will walk under a ladder. I won't break a mirror because those are expensive. Yeah. Also, black cats are fine. Black cats are totally cool. Um, please don't blame me. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, same issue as last time. Oh, but we got the mustache man. Found him. Oh, he's here. He's getting less and less mysterious by the day. Yeah. We don't know much about him, except that he loves LCK. And he shows he up at least for one of the matches, sometimes two. Sometimes two. So we, we got... Um, hmm, let's do some math on stream here. Two minutes and 14 seconds further. Okay, how many seconds is that total? Uh, it's 134. Very quick. That was very quick of you. Yeah. I'm very on impressive. my game today with my math and with my numbers. Unfortunately, the ping numbers, not on their game. No. This time around. Unfortunately not. But uh, hopefully they will, same issue as you guys can see, hopefully they will be resolved. Um I can't speak of the details of everything that's happening behind the scenes, so I can't tell you guys more than, than I know that there are a bunch of people who are good at their jobs running around trying to fix it, and I know this is a scary and frustrating thing for everyone. We're going to get through it together. And, you know, we talked about the game sale a lot after the first pause. Not much has changed since then. Some bubs went down. Yeah. So how was Challengers? Yesterday, oh, I actually was I, I wasn't able to catch it. Anything wild? I saw Poby the the goat. Pogoat goat played. That was on um, Monday. Yeah, on on Monday, yeah, he did play some Katarina. It was not the comp to play Katarina in, a, and uh, it did not work out in the end. Yeah, uh, but guys, uh, I'll tell you more about challengers because we are going to take a quick break for some content, and we'll be right back.
was last time around, as there is the Jaws, and he just gets solo killed. Uh, Faker. I, I told him not to die, I even said. And Faker had flashed extraordinarily early in that play. Like, he, yep. was, he decided he was killing Cole. He has been in side lanes a lot. He's a crew to 40 CS event. Oh, the fear comes in and Sylvie, the unending despair, he flashes into the brush, will survive from, oh my goodness. Very close to his fall. Oh, no! Dotting Shadow snipes him! As Willa, he's in trouble. Kellen looking for the opportunity, gets right on top of the lead in with that quickness, and there is the W empowered new good flash from XQ, but the Empress divides better. The Magnus Storm 2 is Henna and Closer both just die clear. Time they have an insane amount of damage. Nobody's helping out. Come on! He's running away. Yes. They finally get him. And now they're pressing their R buttons on a Jovi who is isolated, but he is able to dash away as well. Maximalt hits all four of them in the back line. And the damage should be there from Paige as well to finish this one off. He even has an arm guard. Give it to us. The, the Penta let the little baby Dragon get his Penta. Let him have it. Got the minion. No, oh, they're slowing him down. <laughs> the Penta in the queue comes in. It's a Penta. It's going to use the unstoppable is Keen and Pays able to get over the wall here as well. Chains of Corruption into the air as Tovi gets the four of them and just like that, Genji decide they want to win a team fight. Tovi has had enough of the fooling around and Willer will go down as well. It's a triple for Canyon. It's a clean ace. I think they might just end the game. Current damage and being able to amplify it. Something they can work out as he turns forward here from Envy. He's zapping this little dragon who is just not big enough just yet. Now he's underneath the turret. One more auto, and that is going to get him. Moon flies by. It doesn't actually do anything, and it's just a solo kill. There's the killing spree we were talking about. They're telling hey. their driver, we need to get out of here. Bulls at full health, though. There's the flash forward. They blow up Cuz, but he is not the optimal target here. Morgan now taking a lot of damage, and Tudu. Pretty dangerous as well as Envy's frontlining. Of course he is. Bulldog now down to about 100 health. The heroic charge from Gideon is exactly that to lock down the kill on the Nautilus. And now... They do have priority around well, this Elder. The Hill Mary 10k gold down. Can they make it happen? Well, there's a steadfast presence. That is going to deny Cuz as he makes his way in. Mum gets aggressive. That's a great pulverize into the back line, but the follow-up, not quite there. Now Dudu's going to turn up, and oh my goodness, the entire sky just fell down on top of Pro. Morgan's going to get breathed on as it's a triple kill. Long ago, before the Ruination ended their line, the royal family of Camivore revered Imperial Dragons as powerful and majestic creatures. So as one of the few Imperial Dragons still alive today, Smolder is kind of a big deal. Or he will be, at least, as soon as he masters flying and breathing fire and being big and, and scary. You know, dragon stuff. Sizzle. The Fiery Fledgling is an ADC who's all about scaling. He may seem like a tiny spark at first, but he can grow into a late-game inferno. So, are you ready to play with fire? Welcome to the Smolder Champion Spotlight. Go Smolder! Go Smolder! Smolder's passive is Dragon Practice. Whenever he hits a champion with an ability or kills a target with Q, he learns a bit more about dragoning and gains a stack. Each stack increases the damage of his basic abilities, making them extra spicy as he gets more practice. This means Smolder gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on, so let him cook. Q is Smolder's Super Scorcher Breath. He spits the biggest, awesomest fireball he can muster at his target. Okay, so maybe it's not that impressive yet, but you just wait. <laughs> you started it! As Smolder gains more stacks of his passive, he enhances Super Scorcher Breath in three tiers. 
At Tier 1, it deals AoE damage around the target. At Tier 2, more explosions shoot off behind the initial fireball. And at Tier 3, the flame burns targets for additional true damage over a few seconds. If they drop below a certain health threshold in that time, they're toast. Don't forget that Smolder gains stacks whenever he hits enemy champs with abilities or kills a unit with Q. Focus on last hitting and poking opponents with Q so he reaches those stack tiers as quickly as possible. By the time late game rolls around, he'll be a teamfight terror with tons of AoE damage. Breathing fire isn't without its challenges, though. Like all that soot in your nose. With W, Smolder sneezes out a fiery glob. This blast damages and briefly slows targets and explodes around any champions in the line of fire. And you thought your allergies were bad. <laughs> During landing phase, a chew is a crucial farming tool for Smolder. He can use it to soften up a wave, then last hit with Q for all the stacks. In team fights, it's a powerful AoE spell. Hitting multiple champions sets up explosions around each one, which scale with his passive and ability rank. That late game damage is nothing to sneeze at. Don't you just love his little wings? Well, they aren't just for princely charm. Smolder's E, flap, 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 sends him into the air for a short duration where he ignores terrain and gains move speed and vision. He'll bombard the closest enemy in range with bursts of flame, prioritizing the lowest health champion. Smolder's E can help him catch fleeing enemies and secure kills, but it's also his only escape tool. So fly with caution, or you may crash and burn. What did I do? Behind every adorable baby dragon is a super protective mama dragon. Smolder's ult summons mom to teach a lesson to any meanies picking on her son. A face-melting, scorched earth kind of lesson. After casting, Smolder's mom flies overhead, breathing down a wave of fire and burning enemies to a crisp. Targets caught in the center take extra damage and are slow. The wave starts a little bit behind Smolder's position and continues over a long distance. Anyone who might be hit by the flames will hear mom's roar as a warning, so best run for cover if you can. Nothing burns quite like a mother's love. While the spell can help Smolder disengage if he's in a bad spot, his mom is best at starting fires. I mean fights. Especially if the enemy team is grouped up. Slow them down with the center of Smolder's ult, then go full blast with the rest of his AoE damage. Smolder's dragon practice stacks are the fuel for turning this glowing ember into a roaring blaze. He needs to farm safely in the early game to stack his passive and improve his Q before he's ready to take on the world. That means he'll need a more lane dominant support, looking out for him while he grows big and strong. Champions who can zone opponents off will make great lane partners for this widow kiddo. On the other hand, he may struggle against lane bullies who can force him to retreat and lose out on stats. Without much dragon practice, his ability to trade is limited, so enemies with lots of poke and engage tools are blistering counterpicks against Smolder. Where he really burns brightest is team fighting. Thanks to his powerful AoE damage, roasting grouped up enemies is his specialty. But like most ADCs, he needs to position wisely to stay safe. Fly in solo and you might just fizzle out. Smolder is designed to be a simpler marksman with an approachable kit. So if you've been looking for a reason to learn ADC, who burns hotter than ADC, consider this a warm invitation to try the Fiery Fledgling. Likewise, if you enjoy marksmen with their own escape tools like Ezreal or Zeri, or adorable forces of destruction like Tristana and Kog'Maw, you may want to take Smolder for a test flight. And of course, if you love getting stacks on stacks on stacks, looking at you Vagar and Nasus fans, then this scaling damage should be just what you're looking for. Whew, is it toasty in here or just me? I gotta go cool off. Learn how to train your dragon at the links below. And bring the heat with Smolder, the fiery fledgling. そう、ね。なるほど。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね。ね
얘네 받을 거야. 어, 잠깐 볼게, 잠깐 볼게, 그럼. 이거 들어올 거야, 얘네. 야, 깔게, 깔게, 깔게. 야, 카라가 잘렸어, 카라가. 자, 봐줘, 봐줘. 자, 봐줘, 봐줘. 보자, 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 보자. 야, 가자, 가자, 가자. 바로 바로 와 나이스 올티나 뒤차라 좋은데 해볼래? 해볼래 이거 해볼래? 위에 봐줘 위에 봐줘 집각도 하나 집각도 하나 집각도 하나 해봐 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 카르마 못 막았어 카르마 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 나 죽었어 나 죽었어 나 죽었어 아 카르마 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 행동사 좋았다 뭐 완벽했다 우리 부석이야 나 학교 뜨면? 잘했다 어. 나이스 <웃음> 다시 긴장해 이거 긴장하는 걸 원, 원, 다시 해야 돼 풀리면 안돼 긴장해주세요 저는 지금 오늘 하루 그냥 항상 풀 긴장이에요 저 지금 아왜 이렇게 투표하고 진짜? 지우 지금 투표에 꽂힌 거 같은데 나 투표 마려 나 근데 투표랑 안 해봐서 너가 오더 해야 돼 이거는 아니 솔랭에서 많이 해봤어 <웃음> 반응이 <웃음> 장난 아니야 아 모르겠어 아, 나 모르겠어. 어떻게 보는 게 좋긴 해. 아, 어떻게 볼게? 바로 볼게. 버피일지 몰라. 맞. 돌파 되고. 나이스. 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 날라가. 아지로 여기 무빙한다. 자, 아. 살짝 봐줄래? 내면서 봐. 살짝 봐줘. 살짝 봐줘. 아, 살짝 봐줘. 살짝 봐줘. 살짝 봐줘. Hello, we are back here as uh, once again, guys, we are in the midst of the ping issue. Riot is currently dealing with the situation with the response measures prepared after the attack that happened on last Sunday. So actively trying to uh, do something about the situation. The TLDR see if it is, works out. Yeah, the TLDR is we're not just going to wait and see if it gets better. There, are, there is a measure in place that was uh, prepared after the attack that did occur on Sunday. So. Fingers crossed that it does work. There are backup plans, of course, in place as well. But we are going to try our best to get the good old engine running on this game one between T1 and Fear X. And hopefully, no caster curse can turn it off a second <laughs> time. Um, it's okay. I forgive you. It happens. Thanks. We, we've all cast our curse from time to time. My Twitter mentions were a little bit less forgiving <laughs> <laughs> when I opened my phone earlier. Uh -huh. But uh, That's we're, we're going to jump back into it, it looks like, for now. Yeah. We're going to resume, see if the countermeasures worked out. If not, we will try new countermeasures. As Yeah, the gameplay is happening. Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> Big crowd applause. As Aeus will see this Sejuani, and they're going to make something of it. Definitely not scared to walk straight at them. Now he's probably going to have to flash. Uh, he misses his flash. Flash in from clear, and they have first blood onto Zeus in the top lane. As now Owner going to get frozen up here. And he will be in trouble as well. One flash, one auto will get it done. That's 2-0 for the Sejuani. Got to say, control wards are the enemy today, Valdez. As we mentioned this in the draft, you don't win the 2v2 Sejuani Jax versus Viego Twisted Fates. Very difficult to do. We'll be able to use his ultimate to get back to lane very quickly here and might even be able to eke an advantage out because of it. But still, uh, staying for that control ward a little bit too long. Flash not going over the wall, and he is not going to be happy with the result. But he will be happy to continue his CS advantage, deny some farm from clear, potentially grab another plate. Speaking of plate grabs, the Sejuani, or rather the uh, Senna, Sejuani's not here, and so therefore the Senna is going to grab some plate gold herself. Not normal, not advised to allow, but it did happen as yeah. Uma is in a very nice spot in this game. Feeling pretty good about that bottom lane execute going up to the top side to try to help out. And we'll see how this lane does continue. You can see that even with execute here, uh, can't really do much because at the end of the day, especially early on, like Tristana does not match the range of the Senna and Tom Kent is quite strong at this point in the game. So unless you're going all in, you're just kind of sitting there eating harass. And so that's... They're under the turret. Now Execute is here. Also, Sejuani Willer did come down to the bottom side and made himself known. 
Yeah, we'll watch this play one more time as Willer backs off. Owner isn't really in the vicinity. And Zaya still commits to grabbing this control ward. Then, unfortunately, unable to get over the fat part of this wall here, goes down. It actually looks like he didn't even try. Yeah. I thought he failed, but actually just flashed towards Owner. And maybe if it were 2v2, they could have made something happen, but with Execute there, it's just a done deal. Yeah. I'm not even sure if they would have, they could have been able to, but obviously it's a 0% chance with the Rakan there, as you say. And I would have advised going over the wall. He is, uh, does not go over the wall, let's just say. I don't know if intentional or not because the angle is a little bit ambiguous there. Might have just been he was going towards owner, as you say. And, uh, you know, still, obviously, with his ultimate, can get back up to topside, maintain that CS advantage, grabbed a plate. Let's see if he dies this time around to Willer, who does have his ult back up here and is trying to make his presence unknown. So far, successful. And look, owner is he's not aware of this. But yeah. Zaya's playing respectfully, and nothing's going to come of it. Yeah, Clear also standing on a ward. A little bit suspicious, but let's see if Zaya reads the situation. He is up against this right wall, and he does not. He is going to get knocked by the Sejuani. There is the Permafrost as well, and the Sejuani ultimate, and that is the second kill onto the TF top, which... Because TF Tops have been having a hard time of surviving today. Well, people are super annoyed with how oppressive the pick can be, and you need jungle attention if you are going to have any chance of getting this Jax to be relevant. Uh, 20 CS down regardless here still, after the play, he's far from relevant, even with the assist he picked up earlier and an additional kill going over now. But it is at least going to keep Zayas down for the meantime, as it looked like Zayas really was aware. Um, but I guess maybe we gave him a little bit too much credit there and just wanted to come out and push an extra advantage. Permafrost there after the Counter-Strike clean to stagger those CCs to make sure that he does go down the ultimate as well. Kind of cherry on top for Willer at the end. So two kills for the Sejuani. Clears picked up one himself. But it doesn't mean by default. It just means that Jax is now going to actually have a good time. But at least he's got some gold in his pocket. And maybe later on he can be a threat in this game. It's going to be tough. I mean, we talked about the draft a lot earlier, mm -hmm. and it hasn't gotten much better since. Um, the three kills to zero may seem like a great start here, but remember this bottom lane is getting stronger by the moment. Yeah, and the CS uh, difference in the jungle as well as the top lane is still pretty prevalent, right? So T1 hanging in there in terms of gold and keeping it even. They also got the Infernal Drake. Firex did get four bubs, but uh, I don't know why I said it like that, but either way, they did get four of the Void Grubs. Some boibs. Some boibs. And now they're actually looking to get on top of Clear here, who is not going to have Counter-Strike and does not have his flash for about five se seconds. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do. His owner will take him out with his nice ult as that's going to give Zeus some breathing room. Zeus also went for Cull, so he's going to have a big gold injection in just a moment. Faker is in control of this mid lane, is even able to steal some of those Raptors away. And Zeus just walks up to Clear, and Clear has had enough, wants a Counter-Strike, and wants to put the threat on, but he's met by an angry Viego. And now he's going to teleport back here. We'll miss the cannon, unfortunately. No. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> See, I can jinx anything, Valdez. <laughs> you are all powerful today, Wolf. <laughs> Don't you dare mention what you mentioned before. Nope, I will not. <laughs> will not be mentioned. In fact, I feel like it's just about time for a pause now. What? <laughs> See, it didn't happen. Wow. <laughs> you are just. I'm in control, actually. It's all about. It's all about what I say. So. I guess so. Be nice to me. <laughs> uh, I will make you perish. Uh, it's it's only an 800 gold lead because of the deaths of Zeus in the lane. He's still 800 gold ahead. Twisted Fate passive, plate gold, and the, 30 the CS. CS. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just the way of the TF. Like, this is part of the reason why after the buffs, people were like, well, this guy is just a really strong pick nowadays, and he's very flexible. Uh, they picked him in a spot where he couldn't be flexed, which was at the end of the draft alongside of the jungler, but still. Just able to pick it blind as well. I mean, there were a lot of power picks that were taken away. I was surprised to not see Cassante pry out at all. But after the TF came out, it seemed like Clear wanted to play with the Jax into it instead. Let's see if he falls for it again here. Counter-Strike kind of trying to beat him, it looks like. Let's see if he falls for it. I don't... Fool me once, shame on me. 
Okay. Here we go. That's the Rakan right under the turret. Doesn't care. Very nicely set up here by Execute. Quick and fast gets the job done. So yes, it Flash and Ghost and just simply did not react quickly there. Might have died either way because of the Rakan ultimate. You know, you flash it, still get charmed by it, still get caught and taken out, but I didn't uh, overextend his meanwhile. <laughs> Who wins this trade? Um, I think it's the Tom Kench, <laughs> and he's gonna have some help from Gooba as Flash comes in and one lick would get the job done and he hits it. Karia just gonna solo Henna. Oh man. I mean, to be fair, he had a Gooba ult. It's not a hundred percent solo. <laughs> he had he had Gooba. Gooba wasn't ult. there. He wasn't there, but his ult was. True. I don't know if it really was the difference maker though, to be honest with you, Valdez. As uh, some fancy footwork from Henna to try to avoid that stun and the final lick as owner is alone. Yeah, ult's gonna come out here. He's got Rakan nearby as well, but they have taken quite a while to get in onto owner and they don't necessarily wanna enter the jungle. Although now with four people, they got a Jax over the wall. It's uh, Guma in a lot of trouble. He will flash himself to get out with just a tiny bit of health as now owner might pay the price for it, but now to execute. Nearly gonna go down. Owner looking for the kill as maybe they did go a bit too far as the rest of T1 is coming in. So many low health bars here on the side of Fear X. And the last person to join up as Guma's looking for it. He will pick it up as Execute now doesn't have the damage to take out the Senna. And T1 eventually will win the fight. That's just, just T1 things. It seems winnable. It seems like they've overextended. It looks like the gaming is a little too happy. And then you 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 feel like, okay, well, I got this as Karia. He's having a great time. We're not even going to watch that. He's having fun. We'll watch the other one instead. As, yeah, it's just... Uh, Tristana thinks that she can win this fight and actually gets devoured here after the ultimate, so actually makes her further away from her turret. I think he called for the ult, too. Not 100% sure on that. Doesn't miss the Q, and that's that. Over here, this is trademark T1. One person against the world. It's usually Faker. In this case, it's Owner. And then the rest of the team is super split on what the call is. They're waiting for clear. They want him to make this engage over the wall. He's got Flash. But then Guma flashes the wall before that last auto goes off here. And at this moment, you have to continue the play because there's no way out, right? But there's a turret here. They don't have enough range to actually follow up on this. The Tristana, if she's here, she has a field day, but she's not. So T1 just clean it up. And it's a massive advantage for them now after what looked like maybe owner getting caught. He just bought so much time. Flash and ult available. And then the gold card here to save Guma. I mean, you get nothing. You lose, good day, sir. You know, it's a Willy Wonka moment. Yeah. Pretty rough stuff for Fear X. Looked good at first, but not meant to be, I suppose. Nice little jump in the graph, uh, graph rather, for T1. As some low turrets that maybe they're able to get. A nice ult goes in on Azeus as they're really trying to bully the TF. And they will be successful in doing that, at least. Two kills for this is here. Starting to get online on the Nasher's Tooth and the Amptome right now, but we'll be able to grab a turret for his trouble as well after the play, so very successful knockout of Zayus this game. Four deaths, like Keen before him. Ended up still winning that one, uh, despite having all of the attention onto him. And when you lopsidedly put all the attention on a TF, it means that Guma can't continue to farm and be a menace. Karia is up 10 CS when he's been in that isolated matchup, and Guma is just getting stacks on stacks and growing at a pretty quick rate. So, I mean, despite all of the efforts to make this Twisted Fate fall down and be useless, he's still going to be a, a guaranteed way to get vision. He's still going to be an additional piece of CC. And I mean, this is a successful gank play and you've got to look for something, right? You have to try to make your soul laners relevant. Last time, obviously the focus was for the Jax. Now it's for Closer. He needs items to actually be able to stand up to T1's composition. So it's not all for nothing. But don't count Zayas out of this game just yet is really what I'm getting at, as we saw, like I said, in the previous game. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're a gold card. Uh, there's not a huge amount of CC in this comp compared to what we saw the last time around, as unfortunately, guys, we do have another pause. We were going well there for doing pretty well for ourselves. Had about, you know, five, six minutes of gameplay, it felt like. But... Uh, All right, so this is not an official statement from the LCK. It's an official statement from me. It's going to be a really long pause and everything is ruined. Um, uh -huh. so, so therefore... Yeah. 
We'll see if you are actually all powerful, Wolf, in terms of cursing. I'm trying. We'll see which one is stronger, the ping or Wolf saying the opposite of reality. Mm -hmm. Well, our 200 gold lead for our previous two pauses has exploded into a 2,000 gold lead. It's the same issue. You guys may have yes. uh, <laughs> guessed that at this point. And, uh, you know, once again, Riot's actively trying to fix it. So hopefully we can get this fixed as soon as possible. But with issues like these, the, uh, the answer is not always clear. No. Let's say. Um... Although for the early game for Firex, it kind of has been mm. uh, trying to get that Jax a little bit of money. Just a little bit. Trying to keep up with the TF. But, uh... you know, when normally when we have these pauses that occur, oh, well, I'll, I'll tell my story later. Yeah, we do have more content, guys, so stay tuned. Who Uto 네, 안녕하세요. 팀원을 사랑한 남자 온타라 박예준입니다. 반갑습니다. <웃음> 네, 반갑습니다. 칼바람에서는 뭐 팀은 어떤가요? 칼바람에서 또 부시가 있잖아요. 그래서 그렇죠. 오늘도 플레이로 보여주는 선수가 한 명쯤은 있지 않을까? 라는 생각이 들고 있습니다. 너무 팀호에 지금 몰입하고 아 조금 만 힘을 좀 예, 예, 빼주시기 예. 바라겠습니다. 아, 근데 전역하신 지 얼마 안 됐는지 몰라도 각이 확 잡혀있네요. 아, 각 잡혀있습니다. 예, 알겠습니다. 아, 그렇게까지는 예, 예. 아주 아, 그리고 지금 유일한 현역 선수라고 볼수 있겠습니다. 베리 아... 선수 나와주셨습니다. 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 이제 KT 롤스터의 이제 롤 도사 역할을 하고 있는 베릴 조건입니다. <웃음> 네, 반갑습니다. 오늘 사실 베리 선수의 역할이 너무 중요합니다. 왜냐하면 또 현역 선수이기 때문에 보는 눈이 좀 남다를 것이다 이런 예상이 되고 있는데 어떠십니까? 저도 이제 현역 선수로서 이제 다른 팀의 경기 같은 걸 많이 보는데 얼굴이 안 보이니까 좀 많이 힘들지 않을까라고 생각합니다. 알겠습니다. 우리 또 후리님 나오셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 지금 LCK 글로벌 아날리스트로 활동하고 있고요. 이런 플레이 스타일을 봤을 때 제가 딱 캐치하는 그런 능력들이 되게 뛰어나다고 보시면 될것 같기 때문에 다 맞춰보도록 하겠습니다. 알겠습니다. 어, 이번 대결을 위해서 저희가 또 특별히 고수진 그리고 임주한 예설님이 나와주셨습니다. 네. 아, 잘생겼다. 자 오늘 진행되는 이 후아유맨 키를 내거나 CS 100개 그리고 상대의 첫 포탑을 파괴하게 되면 그대로 경기가 종료가 됩니다. 단 귀하는 한 번만 가능합니다. 이 게임은 현역 LCK 선수들이 직접 나와서 단한 명의 선수만이 이 칼바나 왕자의 자리를 차지하며 제 1대 후아유맨 주인공이 됩니다. 자, 불꽃 튀는 승부의 세계 후아유맨 지금 바로 시작합니다. 자, 그러면 대망의 첫 번째 조 선수들을 모셔보겠습니다. 우리 같이 훌려볼까요? 폭스맨! 이에 맞서는 다음 장난감은 너야! 팡모맨 나와주세요! 아, 엄청난 기선제압 지금 해주고 있습니다. 자, 두 선수로. 아, 예, 아유, 무서우니까. 예, 아유, 어, 쳐다보지 마세요. 어, 어, 진짜 무섭네. 어, 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 눈이 좀 보이는데, 어, 부리부리 합니다. 자, 
네, 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 네. 내가 나이가 더 많지 않나? 너무 좋은데? 자, 일단 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 아, 반갑습니다. 지금 음성 변조를 통해서 저희가 이야기 나누고 있고요. 자, 그리고 팡모맨도 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 진짜 샤코가 되셨는데. 맞아요. 어, 한답형으로 굉장히 포스 있게 그렇게 이야기를 나누고 있는데 오늘 연습 많이 하셨습니까? 연습 안 해도 됩니다. 오, 팡모맨. 왜 팡모맨이죠? 나 인생이 비극인 줄 알았는데 코미디였어. <웃음> 아, 이거 준비하신 거예요? 어, 괜찮은데요. 어, 컨셉 좋습니다. 저 폭스맨님에게 질문이 있습니다. 네. 아까 들어오실 때 포즈를 근육을 좀 자랑을 하셨는데 음. 평소에도 뭐 운동을 좀 하시는지. 어? 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 제우스? 이거는 이거 패널들에게 혼란을 주려는 동작인지 아니면 자기의 정말 시그니처인지 아 이거는 저희가 더 이상 말씀드릴 수 없습니다 오늘 출근할 때 많이 이게 좀 오래 걸렸나 알았어 너한테 <웃음> 혹시 뭐 윤수민 아나운서 궁금한 거 있을까요? 어제 이어서 오늘도 경기장에 오시니까 힘드셨겠어요? 팡머맨님 어? <웃음> 어디 살아요? 어디 살아요? 지금 플러팅 하시는 거예요? 어디 살아요? 부끄러워한다. 그 상대에게 기선제압하는 포즈 한번 취해볼까요? 그러면 한모맨 기선제압 가볼까요? 오! 파고맨이 던질 것 같아가지고 아 예예 예. 어떻게 뭐 포함하는 거예요? 네, 그만 그만 아 예예 예. 자! 두 선수의 승부를 저희가 탈바람 날아갈 통해서 확인해 보도록 하겠습니다 자 그럼 후양맨 첫 번째 조 대결을 시작합니다! 일단 저 재미없게 하는 사람 싫어요 좀 시원하게 하는 사람 만나고 싶습니다 근데 왜 여우? 여우? 여우맨? 뭐 가볍게 그냥 죽여버리고 가겠습니다. 속순해 네. 기다려라. 내가 죽여줄게. Why so serious? 네, 강연 하나 너무 마음에 듭니다. 1대1 대결 지금 너무 기대되고 빨리 혼내주고 싶습니다. 팡범맨 같은 경우에 생긴 게 악당이라가지고 제가 그냥 혼내주고 싶네요. 야 팡범맨! 일단 확실히 둘다 되게 아. 공격적인 성향이긴 해요. 아. 인터뷰를 들, 들어보니까 이게 뒤에 감 이제 감 오! 아. 아. 아니, 저런 분 있어요? 어, 한다, 한다. 자, 이제 도와유맨 첫 번째 이제 경기 시작하는 거죠. 칼만한 나라이기 때문에 3레벨부터 시작한다는 라게 특징인데요. 벌써부터 기대가 됩니다. 네. 맞습니다. 지금 많은 예측들이 패널들 쪽에서 나오고 있어서 레넥션 배달때 하는 거는 탑라인이 탑라인어다. 네, 네, 탑라인어다. 근데 지금 어, 어, 어. 재밌는 게 솔로 친구들이 좀 많이 살리고 있는데요. 네, 네, 탑라이너야. 어, 탑라이너다. 맞아, 맞아. 네, 마지막까지 폭스맨 고민하고 있습니다. 와, 야, 탑이야. 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 그리고 챔피언 선택 다리우스 나왔습니다. 폭스맨. 근데 지금 한번 팀워가 나올 때 지금 네, 나올 때가 됐는데 다리우스 상대로 원래 팀워가 좋습니다. 다리우스 상대로. 그리고 이 친구 화끈한 남자보다 어쨌든 좀 질퍼기는 친구잖아요. 밴도 챔피언 선택도 모두 탑. 중심으로 진행이 됐습니다. 황머맨의 우디르 보호막과 점화 그리고 착취를 들고 왔고요. 그리고 음. 폭스맨의 다리우스 점화, 점멸 그리고 치속을 들고 왔네요. 어? 맞아. 에프점멸 아니에요? 오, 에프점멸. 에프점멸이네. 에프점멸. 그리고 왼쪽이 디점멸. 디점멸 같아. 디점멸 같아. 맞아. 점화가 밑에 있어. 진지하게 라인전 이 시작했는데 일단 서로 부시에 숨고 있진 않아요. 맞습니다. 그리고 약간 6레벨이 되고 나면 다리우스에 한 방도 나올 것 같은데 네. 그전 단계 때 저렇게 좀 공격적인 아이템을 들고 온 빵머맨이 한 번만 해보자. 우디를 많이 해보자. 아, 우디를 많이 해봤어. 아, 우디를 많이 해봤어. 아, 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 있네. 아, 무시력으로 이겨. 어, 먼저 밀어봐. 아, 라인 잘 밀어요. 게다가 첫 번째 웨이브 때 CS 여섯 마리 오잖아요. 길교환 하면서 벌써 다섯 마리 먹었습니다. 여기 우리의 단점이 오, 평캔, 어, 평캔 천도. 아, 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 아. 아. 
약간 CS 먹는 거에 대해서 의심하시는 분들이 있거든요. 뭐 정글아님 서포시다. 다이어트에 대한 이해도 많이 하기가 너무 나다. 맞습니다. 앞서서 인터뷰 했을 때그좀 파괴적인 모습과는 별개로 지금 많이 위태로워 보입니다. 안 땡겼어. 왜 땡겼어. 땡겨 하면 되는데. 다이어트 처음 해보나? 폭스맨은 6레벨 찍었으니까 네. 뭔가 이 폭스의 단두대 한번 보여줘야겠죠? 폭스맨이 포션 두 개가 가고 있어. 어? 이거 없어요. 어, CS 먹으려고 하신 거야? 집사시오. 어, 미래는 그냥 시간감 밀려. 아, 지금 여리, 여우가 지금 꼬리를 좀 보이고 있습니다. 폭스맨, 폭스맨 일단은 응급 키트를 먹으면서 네. 체력을 해보겠습니다. 아, 검사에 뭐 등에 난 어머! 어! 자, 됐다. 검사 있는데? 자, 이제 다음에 죽을 만한데, 이거? 다이브다, 다이브다, 이거. 다이브인데? 한 몸에 다 봤다. 정말 이번 웨이브까지 버티나요, 폭스맨? 죽어가고 있어요. 폭스맨, 이 웨이브를 버팁니까? 폭스맨 살려! 폭스맨 살려! 아이고, 이거 어떻게 하나. 블래시 패스. 어, 블래시 패스. 재밌다, 근데. 흥미진. 신나게 뜯고 있죠. 나는 이 채굴하면서 CS 먹으면서 집 가서 아이템 빵빵하게 사오겠다. 내 팔이 미쳤죠? 어, 어차피 중간에 뜯어져서 이기면 돼. 지금 양쪽에 골드 격차가 나오고 있는데요. 천 골드 이상, 천백 골드 이상 차이가 벌어졌고. 그러면 폭스맨이 선택한 아이템은? 아! 어, 균열 생성기? 네. 폭스맨은 케이닉 루컨을 들고 왔어요. 아, 아 1대 균열! 항능장화까지! 아, 나 신발 먼저 가는 게딱 3라이너 같다. 아 시간이 지나면 지날수록 지금 예, 시간이 촉박한 건 폭스맨이에요. CS 100개가 어느샌가 지금 다가오고 있거든요. 맞습니다. 그래도 일단 계속해서 딜교환 해봐야겠죠? 어? 어 그래도 폭스맨. 이게 아이템 루컨 때문에 지금 좀... 자, 치속 퍼졌어요. 폭스맨 지금인가요? 어, 예, 안 달아. 떨리자, 쟤쟤. 아, 잘 떨리자. 쟤이 몇번 땡기자. 쟤 가면 되죠. 라인들고 이제 집안 되죠. 집한번 가는 게 룰이 됐죠. 네, 밝게 나면 게임 끝나죠. 아, 쟤분이 랩 덮자, 쟤쟤. 힘들 때 웃는 자가 인류라고 지금 폭스맨 인류 행동 나왔어요. 이 칼바람은 소환살국이랑 달라요. 게임할 때 옆에서 파이팅, 힘내, 괜찮아, 할수 있어. 음. 해주는 팀원들 없어요. 그렇습니다. 자, 그래도 이번에도 지속 터뜨리고, 패시브 터뜨리고, 딜가 하는데 따라가서 서로 점화가 있기 때문에 킬각 볼수 아, 있습니다. 아, 점화 붙여놓고요. 영혼의 일기토. 아, 좀더 따라가나요. 아, 폭스맨 단순대, 그러나 네. 네, 황범에는 이제 2라운드 준비를 위해서 무대 뒤편으로 이동해 주면 되겠고요. 네, 아, 아 축하드립니다. 아, 멋있어요, 황범에. 네. 다음에 봐요, 조커. 네. 저기, 여우 씨. 예, 나와주시기 바라겠습니다. 아, 복스맨 너무 아쉽게 됐습니다. 이거 어떻게 된 건가요? 이제 못 해가지고. 아. 방금 쪽 해봤는데. 예. 궁금하네요. 목소리도 굉장히 힘이 없는데. 혹시 패널분들, 어, 경기 어떻게 보셨, 우정이님 경기 어떻게 보셨나요? 일단 너무 재밌게 봤고요. 근데, 다리우스를 조금 못 하시더라고요. <웃음> 아, 실례죠. 우정이님 그 티어가 어떻게 되신다고 하셨죠? 전 실버 4에요. 실버 4에게 현, LCK 현역 선수, 다리우스 못 하시는 것 같다. 아, 이 바로 어떻게 생각합니까? 아, 내려와. 아, 패널에 대해. 허풀이를 왜 패널에게 하죠? 네네네. 혹시 다른 분들 중에서 뭐 게임에 대해서 어, 뭐 하고 싶은 얘기 있으실까요? 좀 CS 먹는 거 보니까 서포트 아닌가. 사실 제가 봐도 그건 조금. 손 넘는 플레이가 좀. 아, 죄송합니다. 아, 잘 들어오시네요. 아이는 하는 거 같은데. 잘 하셨어요, 저희가. 아, 그럼 잘했어요. 
근데 여러분들이 자꾸 얘기한 저를 째려보니까 여러분들 조금 만 발언을 아. 키우도 좀 낮추시기 바랍니다. 알겠습니다. 네, 혹시 그럼 추측되시는 선수가 있는 분이 계실까요? 플러스 기아의 켈린 선수 있지 않을까? 어, 켈린 어, 어, 선수요? 어, 저도 그렇게 생각하고 있었어요. 어, 근데 켈린 어. 선수는 키가 더 크세요. 저는 그냥 알겠거든요. 오, 오 바로 알겠다. 어, 왜 이렇게 해가 보고 싶다. 어, 바로 다리를 왜 꼬시죠, 갑자기? 선수. <웃음> 예, 예, 예. 이제 몸이 좀 좋으시고. 어. 저런 약간 끼가 있으신 분. 어. 오 누구죠? 어? 딜라이트 선수 아닌가? 어? 딜라이트 선수. 생각을. 오. 과연 패널분들의 추측이 맞을지 아니면 예상 밖에 인물일지. 복스맨. 어, 예상이 아예 안 된다. 뒤돌아서 가면을 벗고 정체를. 공개해 주세요. 자, 복스맨의 정체는 바로 누구세요? 그러세요. 그러세요. 뭐야? 뭐야? 누구야? 누구야? 뭐야? 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 복스맨의 정체는 바로 누구세요? 그러세요. 강동 프리스 커즈 선수입니다. 정글러. 라이거. 자, 팬분들이 모두 서포터일 것이다. 팬들이 모두 다 딜라이트일 것이다. 많은 추측들이 있었습니다. 제가 생각해도 라인전을 많이 못한 것 같긴 한데 조금 상처네요. 아 저는 근데 사실 단숨에 패널 분들이 알아보실 거라고 생각을 좀 했거든요. 일단 윤수빈 아나운서님께서 좀 키가 작다고 말해주셨어요. 아 진짜. 아니 그 그러고 저 저랑 서 있어도 상대적으로 커 보여가지고 아 그리고 네, 또 다른 분들이 예측하는 것 수도 있고 아 그래서 좀 아쉬움이 남을 것 같은데 또 오늘 너무 고생하셨고 마지막으로 시청자 여러분들께 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 열심히 하겠습니다. 어, 재밌게 봐주세요. 감사합니다. 네 감사합니다. 편집님 두 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 네 무대 뒤편으로 이동하셔서 이제 퇴근하시면 되겠습니다. 네 빠른 퇴근. 좋습니다. 자 미스터리 복면 칼바람 대전 후아유맨 바로 이조 선수들 모셔보도록 하겠습니다. 누가 감히 내 능력을 의심하지? 개코맨 이에 맞서는 내가 최고가 되겠어. 킹콩맨 나와주세요. 뭐야 뭐야. 오고. 어? 어? 오? 오? 아까 그분 아니야 또? 아까 그분 다시 가면, 가면 다시 써서. <웃음> 우리 개코맨과 킹 킹콩맨 어, 이렇게 킹콩맨. 두 선수를 모셔 봤는데요. 먼저 어, 개코맨부터 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 아 안녕하세요. 네 반갑습니다. 아, 네. 앞선 경기를 좀 지켜보셨을 텐데 어떻게 보셨나요? 아 확실히 많이 아쉬운 것 같아요. 답답하더라고요. 음자 <웃음> 그리고 우리 킹콩맨도 인사 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 킹콩맨입니다. 네 반갑습니다. 오. 그럼 자유롭게 이 패널들 좀 날카로운 질문이 필요합니다. 지금 1조는 뭐 전혀 예상을 못 하셨거든요. 킹콩맨님한테 이제 질문 하나 드리면 혹시 그... 김씨인가요? <웃음> 예? 네? 안도직입적인데? 아... 아닙니다. 어? 아니라고 또 답변을 주셨습니다. 근데 좀... 수준 높은 질문 좀 김씨냐고 <웃음> 물어보시는 거는 조금... 네, 개코맨님. 개코. 개코. 네. 3, 3대 몇이시나요? 아... 음... 오케이 알았어요. 비밀입니다. 비밀. 비밀이다. 아, 일단 알아들었다는 것만으로도 어느 정도 좀 운동을 좋아하는 몸이 아닐까. 실제 체격도 좀 말하면 너무 빠르실 것 같아. 좋아 알겠어요. 질문 여기까지. 그럼 서로에게 포즈 한번 취해보겠습니다. 자, 서로 위협하는 포즈 한번 보여주세요. 안 친하다. 둘이 안 친하다. 아주 안친하다, 귀여운데요? 안친하다. 어, 열정도 귀엽습니다. 안 친해. 킹콩은 좀 귀여워요. 달라. 알겠습니다. 자, 그럼 킹콩맨과 개콩맨 자리로 모셔보겠습니다. 위치 주시기 바라겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 개코맨입니다. 저는 남자답게 하는 거 좋아해서 크리스탑으로 가는 스타일이 하고 싶어요. 사실 킹콩이라고 해서 누가 하라고 어떻게 될지 모르겠는데 개코가 킹콩을 이기는 걸 보여드리겠습니다. 어, 1대1 대결에 좀 자신이 있는 편이어가지고 잘 이겨낼 수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 개... 개코? 그래도 킹콩이 개코보다는 낫지 않을까. 개코맨의 코를 부수고 올라가도록 하겠습니다. 내가 널 부셔주겠어. 파이팅 하십시오. 근데 저는 저기 자리로 아까 걸어 들어가는 걸음걸이가 음? 저는 그 벌써부터 네. 들어오는 게 너무... 입장이. 오버를 얼굴이 그냥 보였어요. 맞아. 어? 네. 얼굴이 보였다고요? 네. 이거 의논하면 되니까. 아, 일단 그렇습니다. 보고 보고 얘기할게요. 
자 이제 또한번 시작됩니다 미스터리 북면 칼바람 대전 후아유맨의 두 번째 경기예요 사이버딩 거면 어, 너 서포시네. 레넥톤이야? 아니 아니야. 탑인 척하는 미들 수 있죠. 미드 라이너도 레넥톤 잘하지. 아. 이번에 좀 벤이 좀 특이하게 되고 있어요. 어? 있었어. 이블린? 약간 상대 팀에 대한 존중이 없을 수 있는 그런 팀이 될 수도 있어요. 확대 난다. 확대 난다. 오 요네. 아, 아, 하이오. 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 하이오 등거 이블린 요네. 오, 오 야수. 오, 오 야수. 볼것 같아. 오. 이레이제 있으면 뭔가 어! 홀로의 냄새가 나는 것 같기도 하고요. 개코맨 이레이니아 락인 됐습니다. 그리고 킥코맨은 베이스예요. 이거 볼만한 매치가 만들어진 것 같습니다. 와 이거 진짜 무료했네. 이거 미드라이너 인것 같은데? 아니 탑 같지 않아요? 아, 탑, 탑이요? 그런데 이렐리아 컨트롤 하는 거 보면 딱각 나와. 각 나와. 큐 쓰는 거 보면 알아. 제이스도 딱 나와. 아. 예전에는 탑에서 자주 만나던 매치업이죠. 제이스가 계속해서 견제할 수 있지만 이렐리아에게 한번 물리면 그 자리에서 음. 바로 가버리는 음. 그런 칼끝 승부의 매치업이 나왔습니다. 킹콩맨과 개코맨의 대결에서 어떤 모습이 나올지 궁금하네요. 그렇습니다. 두 선수 다 정복자를 들었고요. 스펠은 서로 간에 차이가 좀 있습니다. 진짜 모르겠다. 소메이커 선수 아니에요? 저도 그렇게 예상하는 저 지금 약간... 소메이커 어? 선수? 어? 김 씨나 물어본 게 이제 또... 아, 그거였어요? 네, 이제 별명이 김호수가 있었는데... 네. 아, 그리고 이런저런 유추에서 사실... 어? 델리... 어? 어? 네, 아이템도 뭘... 좀... 네, 뭐 롱소도 막 3개, 4개 샀다가 막... 네. Hello, everybody. We are back. Uh, I'm not quite as old as old Atlas yet. Uh, we'll see how long this does last. Yeah, you got about you got about six hours left, I think, <laughs> before we get to that stage. So I think we'll yeah. be okay. So for those of you who are out of the loop, we do have the same uh, issue as on Sunday, and we are actively working to get it figured out in so, hopes that we can resume. Yeah, we will be uh, resuming fairly soon. Um, after those, some of those measures have been taken, and we have been able to kind of leapfrog our way significantly far into this game. And I think the key is to get this game done, and then in the interim between games, hopefully resolve the issue. Uh, that's the plan, anyways. That's the hope, the dream. Yeah. We did, uh, last time we jumped forward like 11 minutes, so there is a chance that... Uh, we are able to get a decent jump again, as you mentioned. Uh, the game isn't totally out of control or anything like that. T1R ahead decently, about 2,000 gold here. Now, we are far from uh, victory awarding territory, uh, but no. it is a significant advantage, 2,000 gold. And um, you know, there were some kills for the top side of the map for Fear X, Sejuani picking up some of those. We're jumping back into the game now to see if the conditions can remain stable. And here we are. So two kills for the Jax, two kills for the Sejuani. Those are the bright spots, uh, as well and as the a Azir. Closer. Yeah, Closer did get that play bottom side, grabbed a turret, uh, and picked up a needlessly large rod. So there are some bright spots here for sure for Fear X. The gold deficit definitely, you could feel it. The win conditions of the late game Corky, the late game Senna, that's the biggest issue they're facing right now. Yeah. T1 coming in here, taking the blue buff away. Nicely done on that. We don't have another dragon here at his mountain soul uh, for about two and a half minutes. So just trying to take away some of the jungle as they can. Zay is off in the side lane ready uh, with his ults if any action does break out. You see he was moving over. They thought maybe something was going to happen. Um, but yeah, as long as he's farming in a side lane will be very annoying as this game comes along. Clear does have teleport. That turret is down bottom sign. Not much for him to do now on this point at this point in the, the map because both of the outers top and bottom are down. So to wait for a bigger objective as an owner should be fine. He's going in. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 we win these. And he is going to, uh, you know, essentially swat them away, not taking too much damage either way. Owner's roots have been, or rather, Aguma's roots have been very accurate this game on the Sejuani, uh, saved him against that all-in. Sejuani. Sorry, I keep saying Sejuani instead of Senna. <laughs> it's because there's a Sej in the game. And you know, in Challengers, we did have Se Se Se, Sejuani, Senna, Seraphim. Yeah. Not not, not in this uh, this one, though, as I think that's like the fifth time I've called her Sejuani instead of Senna, but yes. <laughs> Guma's roots on the Senna have been very good. Seraphim? No, just Senna. Oh, OK. Um, 
It's not Kwang Dong playing, they're the ones that play the uh, Sedge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with Sedge, sometimes with not Sedge. But anyway, when we digress, um, the Jax on the side can be an issue later on if uh, given enough space when, for example, a Baron is being postured for. Right now, it's just going to be left alone. We see a back from Zayas here. Dragon up in 45, so need to prep for that. He has the Destiny online. But obviously, it's not completely global range, so probably going to catch this wave topside here and time it. Right after you were talking about how good his roots were, he just missed one. You got something to say about that? Look, <laughs> I didn't ask for these powers. <laughs> but notice the break wasn't that long, I'm just saying. Notice how you have a big responsibility uh, with these powers, Wolf, so be careful. Yeah. Hey, hit that one. Maybe you also have Maybe you have a <laughs> I don't think so, <laughs> not compared to you. Not based on what we've seen. <laughs> Willer and Closer kind of hanging out in the enemy jungle, and they're being closed upon pretty quickly. Maybe trying to get something done to the TF, and now you see that Zeus just joins the team. And now Closer and Willer are just running. Here is a TP, but there's a Viego and a pause. No way, you can't pause in that moment. Oh boy. Well, trying to stop the TP from going down is owner. They did. And they stopped it they with did. the pause. Uh, also, an attempted root there from Guma as well. They really do not want this Azir getting out. Oof. Valdez, not, not a ideal timing for the game and the action to stop. Yeah. As I'm not 100% sure if he's able to connect the uh, Viego stun to stop the pause. Seems like it's on cooldown. Yeah, I don't think he has it because it's just a regular Q that's in animation on, this, on the gray screen, the sepia we had there. So it's really about whether Guma's root's going to hit him or not, and I think he might just barely get out. Either way, I don't want to speculate any further because it's going to be a while before we see that again, very likely. See what I did there to try to make it seem like it's not going to be a while. Um... Well, we got a few minutes forward. Yeah. I think we got about three minutes ahead. And uh, based on the fact that we got a pause this quickly, and in such a, uh important part in the game, I would say that uh, the issues are pretty far from being fixed. And, and uh, uh, that's just my speculation. What I was going to say before we jump to the so watching some of the Who Are You Man and stuff earlier was, you know, normally... I enjoy to speculate around pauses of what's going on in these types of issues because you know you could talk about why both teams, for example, would argue for their side on a pause and they can have some fun conversations there. Obviously talking about the hardware issues that may occur and some of the ways to remedy them because you and I have been commentating esports for a really long time. You know, we've experienced a lot of different Korean esports pauses over the years. Twelve um, years. Yeah. I guess for you it's thirteen. It's coming up on thirteen. We'll be soon. Yeah. And you know, there's oftentimes a dispute between two teams that the referees have to handle in the most fair way. But the crux of all pauses basically is to make sure the players have the best scenario possible. Um, now, game two may be postponed, is what that says there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what I was going to say in this case is there is, an, there is a dark force at work. That has actually never happened to me before in my 12, nearly 13 years of Korean esports as someone actively from the outside. Um, and so this is completely new territory for me. Yeah, same. Uh, in the same boat with this one. But uh, not much we can do except actively try to fix it until we do. And as I mentioned before... Eventually the light reigns at the end of the day. Yes, we will prevail. The good defeats evil. Um... But as I mentioned before, the key is to finish this game, because if any other measures to be taken, this game has to, because it is a record game, which means it's a game that has been recorded. Players have seen each other and have vision of each other. They've attacked, they've destroyed wards, they've killed each other. It cannot be replayed for, for, for really any reason, so it has to go on. And once this game is complete, any decisions about postponing uh, can be made. So that is the implication of that message that appeared in Korean earlier is the second game may be postponed. Yeah. And we'll update you further later. We'll see what happens. We're in the same boat with you guys. And you know, the one person who has avoided it so far out of all the casters, Ox. 
That's true. Coincidence? I think not. Somebody keep an eye on him. Onks sussed. Ox has, sussed. has many, many different angles. I'm just saying. Yeah, Twitch chat has. <laughs> they have had their suspicions in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling the strings. As you can see, um, some staff distributing stuff to the fans here and uh, making sure that they can get snacks and drinks because they they bought their tickets. They've been here for a while. All fans were compensated uh, last time as well. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, we do have one more break and we will be back afterwards. <laughs> Kingkongman, <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Okay, Alasa. 모셔보겠습니다. 위치 주시기 바라겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 개코맨입니다. 근데 남자답게 하는 거 좋아해서 크리스탑으로 가는 스타일이 하고 싶어요. 사실 킹콩이라고 해서 그거 하라고 어떻게 될지 모르겠는데 개코가 킹콩을 이기는 걸 보여드리겠습니다. 어 1대1 대결에 좀 자신이 있는 편이어가지고 잘 이겨낼 수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 개, 개코? 그래도 킹콩이 개코보다는 낫지 않을까. 개코맨의 코를 부수고 올라가도록 하겠습니다. 내가 널 부셔주겠어. 파이팅 하십시오. 근데 저는 저기 자리로 아까 걸어 들어가는 걸음걸이가 음? 저는 그 벌써부터 네. 들어오는 게 너무... 입장이 오버리 얼굴이 그냥 보였어요. 맞아. 어, 네. 얼굴이 보였다고요? 네. 이거 은원하면 되니까. 아, 일단 그렇습니다. 보고 보고 아, 얘기할게요. 아, 자 이제 또한번 시작됩니다. 미스터리 복면 칼바람 대전 후아 유맨의 두 번째 경기예요. 다이버딩 거면 서포 너 서포신데. 레넥 탑이야? 아니 아니야. 탑인 척하는 미들 수 있어. 미드 라이너도 레넥 좀 잘하지. 야. 이번에 좀 벤이 좀 특이하게 되고 있어요. 아 그래요? 어? 어? 이블린? 약간 상대 팀에 대한 존중이 없을 수 있는 그런 팀이 될수 있어요. 박벤한다. 박벤한다. 오 요네. 아, 아, 하이오. 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 하이오 딩거 이블린 요네. 오, 오, 야스오. 오, 야스오. 돌고왔어요. 이레이제 있으면 뭔가 오, 얼로의 냄새가 나는 것 같기도 하고요. 개코맨 이레이니아 락인 됐습니다. 그리고 킹코맨은 베이스예요. 이거 볼 만한 매치가 만들어진 것 같습니다. 와우. 와 이건 진짜 모르겠네. 이거 미드라이너인 것 같은데? 아니 탑 같지 않아요? 아, 탑이요? 그런데 이렐리아 컨트롤 하는 거 보면 딱각 나와. 각 나와. 큐 쓰는 거 보면 알아. 제이스도, 제이스도 딱 나와. 예전에는 탑에서 자주 만나던 매치업이죠. 제이스가 계속해서 견제할 수 있지만 이렐리아에게 한번 물리면 그 자리에서 음. 바로 가버리는 음. 그런 칼끝 승부의 매치업이 나왔습니다. 킹콩맨과 개코맨의 대결에서 어떤 모습이 나올지 궁금하네요. 그렇습니다. 두 선수 다 정복자를 들었고요. 스펠은 서로 간에 차이가 좀 있습니다. 아, 진짜 모르겠다. 
소메이커 선수 아니에요? 저도 그렇게 예상하는데 저 지금 약간 어? 소메이커 선수 어? 김신이랑 물어본 게 이제 또 아, 그거였어요? 네, 이제 별명제 아, 김어수가 있어요 네. 아, 그리고 이런저런 유추에서 사실 오, 오. 델리... 어? 어? 네, 아이템도 뭘... 좀... 네, 뭐 롱소도 막 3개, 4개 샀다가 막 네, 톱날 단검 샀다가 지금 정신 못 차렸어요 근데 문제는 개코맨이 좀 고민이 많은데 최종적으로 흡... 흡혈의 낫으로 결정을 한것 같죠? 어 그래서 아 일단 바꿨다가 도란검 들었다가 초반은 버티고 나중에 모란검 나면 그때 한번 승부 보겠다는 생각? 야 진짜 컵을 따겠다는 거네. 근데 이벨라 진짜 아, 하는 것만 봐도 아 따가 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 일단 첫 번째 기한 이후에 한방 승부를 노리는 것 같은데 네. 과연 그첫 번째 기한까지 점화를 들고 온 킹콩맨의 공세를 버틸 수 있을지. 어? 약간 늦게 나오는 과정 속에서 미니언이 조금 타긴 했어요. 그렇습니다. 어차피 어, 자 라인도 어, 어, 경험치 경험치 한 마리 놓쳤어 아이템 공유하다가. 뭐야? 그렇습니다. 어쨌든 이게 6레벨이 똑같이 찍히는 과정에서 손해를 보는 걸 거잖아요. 어 개코맨 그래서 벌써부터 이거 비상이 돼요 개코맨. 자 그리고 킹콩맨 제이스를 자신감 넘치게 들고 있는데 자 땅검 연무 빠르게 싸웁니다. 서로 간에 스펠 교환 오 밀어냈어. 밀어냈어. 정말 손재같이 다했습니다 개코맨 아 빠르게 싸웁니다. 서로 간에 스텔 교환! 오! 밀어냈어! 싸웠어! 개코맨! 개코맨이 승리하면서 개코맨 2라운드에 진출했습니다. 축하합니다! 개코맨! 네, 승리를 거둔 개코맨은 무대 위로 이동하셔서 2라운드를 주시, 준비하시면 되겠고요. 혹시 어, 어떠셨어요? 네, 아, 쉽게 킹콩맨이 좀 패배를 기록하게 됐는데요. 이거 어떻게 된 거예요? 앞에서 이제 세팅을 이상하게 해놔가지고. 아. <웃음> 아, 세팅 이슈. 그것도 또 패배 일부니까 뭐 인정해야 될 부분이고. 어, 우리 패널 분들은 경기 어떻게 보셨나요? 또 하이오 밴을 했어요, 밴도. 어? 이블린. 어. 맞아. 어. 타이머 딩거. 어. 요네. 어. 이렇게 또 퍼포먼스 식의 밴과 엄청 어. 잘하셔가지고 음. 저 쇼메이커님이지 않을까? 쇼메이커 선수일 가능성이 있다. 네. 저는 100% 왔는데요. 지금 딱서 계시는 어떤 팔의 각도? 어, 어. 고개를 돌리시는 어떤 이런 어, 어, 어. 실루엣. 어? 네. 쇼메 맞죠, 쇼메이커 선수. 캐리아 선수입니다. 어? 캐리아 선수다. 아, 어, 캐리아 아니, 선수일 네. 것이다. 어, 추가적인 의견 있으실까요? 저도 아까 하이오 배난 거가 이제 보통 이제 호수가 약간 이게 좀 좋은 그런 의미로 약간 배나는 그런 것도 있고 아까는 약간 인터뷰할 때 호수의 그좀그좀 하나 생각하는 약간 트레이 트레이드 맞아 트레이드 맞아 어 이거 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 캐리아 선수예요 이렇게 하는 거지 이쪽은 캐리아 파 저쪽은 쇼메이커 파 달렸어요 공정인님 보시기에는 아 그거보다 아, 좀 라인전이 아쉬웠던 게 <웃음> 와, 실버 아, 실버가 거리를 어. 좀 벌리면서 진입했으면 아 좋았는데. 아 저랑 피드백 따로 해야 될것같아또 아 그런 거 확실하죠. 예, 우정인 선수는 또 게임 <웃음> 내적인 이야기를 또 해주셨습니다. 자, 그러면은 아쉽게 패배를 기록해서 이제 1라운드에 탈락한 킹콩맨. 킹콩맨은 뒤를 돌아서 정체를 공개해주세요. 기도하시기 바라겠습니다. 킹콩맨의 정체는. 진짜 잘한다. 아니 잘한다. 우와! 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 바로 아! 내가 내가 아! 아니 아니에요. 한 번. 시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까 야 드디어
저희 우트라니 스프링에도 함께하게 됐습니다. 와, 한 방울 끝나지 않았어요. 너무 감사한 것 같아요. 또 2회차를 또 편성을 하게 되면 은 이번에 또 어떤 감독님들 모셔올까도 중요한 사안 아니겠습니까? 아 오늘도 말씀하신 대로 대단한 분들 한번 모셔봤습니다. 상수 씨와 이제 대호 씨가 음. 나름 저는 잘 됐다고 생각을 하거든요. 아니 뭐 대호 씨는 원래 잘 되고 있었고 아 그렇죠 그렇죠. 상수 씨가 굉장히 좋은 팀, 어 강팀에 들어가게 됐죠. 그렇죠. 딱 여기 이제 터가 좋은 느낌이 들기 때문에 네. 오늘 여기 와서 좋은 기운 봐서 맞아요. 좋은 자리 가면 좋지 않을까 컨셉에 오늘 약간 구직 특집? 좋은 길 마련해 드린 걸로. 그렇습니다. <웃음> 그럼 오늘은 바로 네. 구직 특집편 들어가 보겠습니다. 저희 오늘 함께해 주실 감코진 모셔보도록 하겠습니다. 정말 대단한 분들 어렵게 모셨습니다. 아프리카부터 광동 프리스까지 코치를 역임했던 스피릿 이당용 코치. 노초아 씨 와주 연이 깊은 분이죠. 자 그리고 이어서 진에어와 T1 코치를 담당했던 모멘트 김지환 코치. 오. 그리고 마지막으로 북미의 레전드 LCK 초대 우승자이자 해외에서 감독으로 활발히 활동을 이어온 복항규 레퍼드 감독님까지 안녕하세요. 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 아또 오랜만에 보는 분들 계시고 네, 우리 또 아, 옆자리네요 또. 아 이게 또 네. 아, 마치 다윤이를 불러선가 이게 옆에 술이 앉아 땡길 때가 올 수도 있을 것 같아요. 네. 아, 벌써부터 얼굴 시뻘개진 것 같은데. 아뭐세분뭐다 어떻게 지냈어요? 먼저 그 다윤 씨부터. 롤판에 좀 떠나 있었습니다. 음. 군대 이슈 때문에. 아 음. 모든 대한민국 남성은 급방부를 통하거든요. 아, 예, 예. 아 이거 또 어쩔 수 없는 상황이라. 쉬면서 방송하고 있었습니다. 아 네. 좋습니다. 네. 그럼 이제 지원 씨. 또, 네. 저는 T1 e스포츠 아카데미에서 이제 학생들을 가르치면서 지내고 있었습니다. 오, 네. 또 후배 양. 임을 쓰셨고 저는 일본 센고쿠 게이밍에서 CGO로 역임을 하다가 음. 올해 그만두고 쉬고 있습니다. 아 올해는 쉬고 계시고 네. 여기서 좋은 기둥 받아 가야겠네요. <웃음> 그렇습니다. 좋습니다. 그러면 또 이런 질문을 제가 해도 될지 모르겠지만 우리 다윤 씨. <웃음> 뭐. 아 예. <웃음> 이 섭외를 받게 됐을 때 어떤 기분이었는지. 돼요. 언젠가는 뭐 이런 자리가 있지 않을까 했는데 어, 오늘이구나. 생각보다 빨리 왔구나. 어, 때가 왔구나. 음. 음. 그래도 가기 전에 왔구나. 음. 이렇게 생각하고 있었습니다. 아니 평소에 본인이 담아뒀던 말, 뭐 하고 싶은 말할 수도 있는 거니까 그러니까. 어, 그러니까. 강호해 주세요. <웃음> 프로그램의 핵심적인 부분으로 들어가 봐야 되는데요. 자신의 어떤 틀렸던 이런 부분을 어떻게든 좀 음. 풀어볼 수 있는 시간을 음. 가져보겠습니다. 첫 스타트를 끊으실 분은 바로 스피릿 이다윤 씨 되시겠습니다. <웃음> 자, 나와서 아, 때가 어, 본인의 예, 틀리지 않았던 부분을 음. 적어주시면 됩니다. 아, 제가, 제가 긴장이 되는 거좀 이상한데요? 어, 네, 음. 이거 뭐 노철이는 틀리지 않았다? 이런 거 나오는 거 아니죠? 아, 좀 조철이는 틀리지 않았다. 감독님께서 이렇게 또... 뭐, 뭐 틀리지 않았을까? 그... 와... 나는 오. 그가 여기죠? 그는 어 그래도 저도 틀리지 않은 걸로 좀 쳐주셨네요. 왜 그러셨어요? <웃음> 갑자기? 아, 아, 원인은 여기 있는 아, 시장은 여기야. 좀 상황을 설명하고 들어가야 되는 게 아, 아닌가. 네네. 이게 모르시는 분들도 계실 수 있으니까 음. 19년도 아프리카 프릭스. 그 시절입니다. 전년도 굉장한 성적을 기록했던 저희 유칼이 들어오면서 음... 아니 긴 스피릿의 유칼까지 음... 이거 잘할 수밖에 없다. 그거 보고 들어간 거예요? 없지 않아 있죠. 네, 정노철이라는 사람까지 코치로 들어가면서 네. 네. 굉장히 시원한 출발을 했는데 그 시원한 출발과 다르게 굉장히 스프링이 저조했습니다. 왜일까요? 아, 갑자기 바로. 네, 설명 중인데 갑자기 또 왜? 너 지금 아, 이거 미안, 미안합니다. 아, 네, 네. 뭐 공격하고 싶어서 아까부터 안달이 나 있는 느낌인데. 아, 뭐좀 말씀하세요. 그때 당시에 여러 가지 이슈가 있었어요. 어? 어떤 이슈가? 하람이가 어. 경기에 나갈 수 없는 상황이 됐어요. 아하. 그래서 원딜을 메꿔야 되는데 원딜로 갈수 있는 선수가 없어. 근데 그나마 이제 경력이 많고 게임에 대한 이해도가 높은 다윤이가 비일 수밖에 없는 포지션을 메꿀 수 있는 유일한 사람입니다. 어... 그래서 이제 우리가 그때 당시에 일단 살려고 음. 한 판이라도 더 이겨야 되니까 별일을 다 했죠. 막 서포터로 갔다가 음... 그냥 원딜 뭐 모래가나도 했다가 애니도 했다가 애니도 했다가 어, 걸렸어요. 그러면 어. 이게 꿈인가요? 개인 걸려가지고 원딜 배틀 완전 그래서 공이 됐죠 일단. 왜 거듭된 포지션 변경이 이루어졌다 생각하냐. 냉정하게 개개인의 전력만 봤을 때는 음. 드레드 선수가 저보다도 위에 있어 솔로 랭크나 뭐 이런 게임 피지컬인 부분이라던가. 어리니까. 나도 음. 그날 때 그랬어. 아 그때 그렇게 네. 봤지. 그리고 각자의 팀에서 하던 플레이 방식이 이 아프리카에 와서는 좀 어... 조화롭지 않게 가는 제가 들어가면은 
그래도 오더를 좀 많이 했다 보니까 음. 이제 하나로 어떻게든 뭐 꾸역꾸역 뭉쳐지기는 해요. 그러다 보니까 이제 어쩔 수 없이 이제 빈틈의 실로다가 근데 정글로 쓰기에는 뭔가 아 그때 메타가 이게 또 정글로에서는 살짝 좀 아쉬운데 음. 정글로 쓰긴 아쉬운데 아 정글로 뭔가... 쓰긴 아쉬운데 아... 또 빠지자니 좀 아쉽고 리더는 필요하고 어, 리더는 또 필요한 거 같고 어... 또 그럴 만한 애는 또 당장에는 안 보이고 하니까 이제 또 여기 가서 한번 해볼래? 어... 근데, 어? 근데 생각보다 스크린 성적이 나오네 오 어, 생각보다 굴러가긴 하는데 뭐 살짝 이런 느낌이 없지 않아 있지 않았나 그 당시에 본인 기분은 좀 어땠어요? 불편했나요? 아니면 아... 새로운 길을 찾은 느낌이었나요? 그 당시에 솔직히 선수로서 포지션 변경이라는 거는 진짜 최후의 보루 느낌이죠. 음. 포지션 변경은 함부로 선택해서는 안 되는 그런 거라고 저는 생각합니다. 당장에 우리 팀이 하나가 되기 위한 그런 땜빵 같은 느낌? 아, 들어보니까 그런 귀인인데요? <웃음> 아 너무 고맙고 진짜 말한 대로 귀인이었죠. 근데 귀인인데 써머는 써머 웠지만 어. 5인에 들어갈 정도는 아니었다? 어 그러니까 왜 5인 로스터에는 없지? 고마운 분인데. 아, 고맙기만 했던 거지. 아 고마운 거랑 또잘 쓰는 거 다른 거구나? 어. 이제 서머로 갑자기 이제 들어가게 되면서 코치였던 노페가 감독 대행으로 이제 올라가면서 짝스러운 변화가 좀 찾아오게 됐죠. 안에 뭐 체력 싸움이 있었나요? 다윤 시파와 노철 시파가 있었는데 본인이 승진을 아니, 해서 상황을 설정하고 있는데 뭐 이제 벌써 계속 깐적깐적거리는데 아니 밖에서 보기 그림이 그래 보이니까 음. 그렇죠. 그래서 이제 이런 상황이었다를 설명드리면서 음. 저희가 스프링 때 역대 최악의 성적을 냈습니다. 음. 아, 맞아요. 큰일 났다. 음. 이거 뭔가 특단의 대책이 필요하다. 음. 새로운 변화가 어쨌든 있어야 될거 아니에요. 음, 재혁. 그렇죠. 혁신. 근데 그 방법, 방법에서 이제 <웃음> 선수인 저와 이제 저희 감독님이셨던 음. 정교철 씨. 음. 입장이 달랐던 거죠. 아 네, 아쉽게도 이게 입장이 달랐던 음. 겁니다. 사실 노철이는 다잘 되자고 한 건데 그렇죠, 다잘 되자고 선수인 한 나에게는 좀 출전의 기회가 사라지는 거니까. 솔직히 제 입장에서는 알바 녹이 나거든. 제 입장에서는 알바 녹이 나거든. <웃음> 왜 다윤 씨는 배제된 겁니까? 5인 구조는? 아, 어, 팀에 굉장히 큰 문제가 많았어요. 아, 말 못하는 문제들이. 예를 들어서 선수들 간의 뭐 신뢰라든지 음. 단결력이라든지 음. 서로에 대한 믿음 그리고 이제 코치진에 대한 믿음 이런 것들이 이제 겹치게 되면서 특단의 조치가 필요한 상황이 됐어요. 제가 그때 내린 결론은 당연히 하람이를 안쓸 수는 없다. 그러니까 유일한 우리 팀의 원딜이니까. 에이밍 선수. 파라미를 중심적으로 뛰어주는 것이 유일한 돌파구다. 대답이다. 그리고 이제 서브가 있게 되면 안 그래도 지금 단결이 안 되고 여러 불신 요소들이 많은 상황에 옆에 있는 이 자식이 아니면 대안이 없다. 라는 어... 거를 서로가 스스로 느낄 수 있게 해야 됐어요. 어, 일단 하나로 규합해야 한다. 그쵸. 그러면 왜 여기서 이제 질문이 들어가죠. 왜? 왜 스피릿이 아니라 드레드였냐. 어째서. 어째서. 이 고마운 분을 매칠 수 있었는가. 그 당시 솔로링크 1302점에 빛나는. 아, 아 이게 아니야. 이게 공격이 어마어마한 거. 나를. 팀을 하나로 뭉칠 수 있는 1 0 0 5회야 지금 울고 계신데요. 눈물이 진거 아니겠습니까. 아... 계속 말씀하시죠. 그러니까 이게 그때 당시에 이제 스프릿 때도 같이 합을 맞춰봤지만 음. 어, 이런 마음 좀 그런데 네. 그때 나머지 네명 기인이 정도 제외하고는 오. 말 그대로 진짜 짐승처럼 했어요. 아 짐승까지 가는 거예요? 네, 그래서 아. 다윤이의 롤 지식 그리고 템포 흐름 이런 것들을 따라갈 수 없는 애들이라고 봤어요. 아하. 아 오히려 더 본능적으로 플레이하라고 로스터를. 그렇죠. 다 같이 짐승이 그 되어라. 짐승처럼 할수 있는 애들로 구성을 해서 뱀픽하고 환경만 굴러나게 두 최소 반칙이나 하겠다. 시간이 부족해. 예를 들어서 나한테 시간이 저, 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 많았으면 저, 저. 멤버를 아마 다윤이를 넣고 그 5인 로스터로 길게 봤을 거예요. 아, 그 짐승들을 교육할 시간이 되니까. 그렇지. 근데 이 짐승들을 <웃음> 사육할 시 아니, 뭐 맞아. 내가 짐승을 하는 거 같아. 왜 이거 서커스 다니냐? 어, 근데 실제로 그때는 그런 서커스를 해야 된다고 저는 개인적으로 느꼈고 어. 정말 짐승 같은 별명이 비슷해요. 별명이 짐승이었죠. 드레드가. 차라리 얘랑 하면 다 각자 그냥 마음 놓고 할수 있다. 감독님들의 얘기를 들어보면 다 맞는 말이거든요. 저는 중요한 건 설득이라고 봐요. 감독들의 제일 중요한 일은 선수를 음. 설득시키는 뱀픽이 되든 뭐 플레이가 되든 설득시키는 과정이 되게 중요하다고 보는데 제대로 이해를 못 시켰나 봐요? 아... 어... 오늘 청문회예요? 뭐 <웃음> 아니 이게 그, 아니 아, 근데 이게 아까서 보기 피해자니까 아니, 웃긴 게 게스트가 다윤인데 마치 <웃음> 내가 아, 주제가 근데 그런 느낌이네? 아 이거 다윤이한테 물어봐야지 그러면 어. 이제 설명을 했으니까 네. 어떤 부분은 이해가 되고 음. 어떤 부분은 이해가 안 되는지 집판 이야기까지는 저는 몰랐어요 그 당시에는 음. 근데 선수는 안만 보고 가면 되니까 네, 저는 돈 받고 연봉 받고 일하는 놈이니까 음. 근데 이제 자리가 없었을 뿐이지 기회가 박탈당한 때 이제 그 증명조차 할수 없는 상황에 대해서 스스로에게 대해 
되게 힘들었던 시기였기도 했는데 코치로 전향하면서 그때 제가 좀 어림잡아 알게 됐죠. 아, 아 노버지 이게... 이런 마음이었구나. 짱구들을 <웃음> 어떻게 하나로 만들까를 생각했을 때 <웃음> 뭐, 그래도 상당히 <웃음> 어... 이게 뭐 극단적이긴 했지만 <웃음> 음, 그래도... 극단적이었지. 이제 그러고 나서 1년이 지난 뒤에 어쩌다 보니까 같이 적으로 만나게 됐죠. <웃음> 아, 저... <웃음> 그때 이제 나온 얘기가 노철 씨였죠. 아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아
아, 그렇죠. 뭔가 음. 따뜻한 어떤 자리가 있었는데 음. 이대로 마무리하기 뭔가 또 아쉽고 끝나고 나면 사진만 남는 거 아니겠습니까? 또두 분의 아. 그 따뜻한 화해 저항의 사진 한 남기면서 아. 네, 에피소드 마무리하면 좋을 것 같은데요. 어. 어떻게 좀 한자 차초 아. 아니 다. 아. 아. 웃으세요? 자, 웃어요. 아 좋습니다. 아주 보기 좋아요. 야. 다만 그야말로 음. 뜨거운 불타는 감자입니다. 불타는 감자인가요? 네, 다음 어. 주제가 아주 뜨겁거든요. 아, 근데 이게 감당할 수 있겠습니까, 이거? 감당은 저희가 하는 게 아니기 때문에 네. <웃음> 알파노가 저희는 어. 감당 상태거든요. 아니, 이게 저희가 안 그래도 이 촬영이 있기 전에 유튜브에 잠깐 그 설문 들어갔잖아요. 저도 봤어요. 어, 정말 엄청 뜨겁더라고요. 어, 쉽지 않을 것 같은데 여기 모멘트 코치님이 아하. 틀리지 않았다. 해당 주제를 적어주시면 저희가 들어보는 시간 갖겠습니다. 아, 너무 기대가 되는 키워드였어요, 이게. 한 글자, 한 글자. 자, 이게 또, 에, 진이. 아, 몰라. <웃음> 어. 당신이 굉장히 말 많고 탈 많았던 그 아, 조합 어, 아니겠습니까? 진유미 틀리지 않았다. 그러니까 이게 쉽지 않은 내용 같긴 한데 진유미가 뭐왜 틀리지 않았는지 기억나시죠? 22년 MSI 티원과 네. RNG의 결승전. 좀 동친격? 여차하면 어? 유미? 죄송한데 저는 음. 아무 생각이 없니다 저는 이해가 가요. 저 자리에 서서 뱀픽을 할수 있는데 꿈을 펼쳐야죠. 꿈은 혁명. 혁명. 아 이게 꿈이 꿈이 아니겠습니까? 꿈이, 꿈이 진유미였나요 이게? 그럼 한번 들어볼까요? 그 펼쳤던 꿈이 진유미인 건지. 뭘 그려 보신 건가요? 거짓 하나 없이 솔직히 말씀드리면 음. 난 전날이랑 그 전에도 몇번 연습했던 조합이고 제가 생각하기엔 초반만 좀 문하게 넘기면 제 우재가 이겨주는 게 상수고 음. 그것도 제가 알기로 진유미로 스타라카 상대로 초반에 좀 푸시하고 주도권이 좀 있는 걸로 알고 있어서 음. 시간이 조금만 지나도 사이드에서는 제이스 쪽으로 게임을 할 거고 진은 미래 혼자 냅두고 유미는 오공에 타서 유미 오공까지 시너지를 좀 발휘하면서 음. 괜찮을 거다라고 생각을 했습니다. 어, 듣고 보니까 꽤그 연결되는 과정이 많이 안 되진 않는데요? 근데 뭐 중요한 건 결과니까. 네. <웃음> 아니 근데 이게, 이게 네. 그런 거지. 과정을 설명해 주시는 건 너무 좋은데 네. 어. 근데 결과적으로 그래서 그게 생각대로 되셨나요? 그때 당시 웨이 선수의 플레이 스타일을 진작에 알고 있고 강남을 뛴다. 딜교 최대한 많이 하지 말고 우리 문안에 가면 밸류 높다. 충분히 선수들한테 이해를 좀 시켰다 생각을 했었는데 음. 어, 생각보다 막상 게임 들어가니까 딜교도 많이 돼 있고 리신이 개입할 수 있는 상황도 음. 많이 나왔다고 생각을 했고. 근데 그래서 네, 중요한 네. 게 네. 진유미로 포커싱 되긴 아, 했지만 네네. 대부분의 많은 사람들의 궁금증에는 네. 진유미에다가 추가되는 내용들이 아리와 그린이 꼭 들어가 있잖아요. 음, 이 네. 얘기를 네. 풀어주시는 게 어? 네 개나 들어가 있어? 시리 자체 네. 어, 풀어주시는 게 5세 때다 올라가기 전에 모여서 하이파이브 할때 네, 네, 네. 상대가 리산이든 그앤을 하더라도 아리는 그래도 잡기 쉽지 않을 거고 아리가 워낙 아클로 좋으니까 그리고 그앤은 무조건 배나자 하고 올라갔는데 들어갔는데. 막상 올라가서 그앤을 배날까 말까 어떻게 할까 얘기를 하다가 어. 그때 당시에 음. 갱플랭크랑 음. 제이스로 그앤 상대로 되게 라인전 단계도 사실 박살이 난 데이터가 되게 많았고 근데 박살 낸, 네. 낸, 낸. 이날 갱플이 아마 밴드했을 거예요. 음. 그래서 차선치 제이스고 연습 제일 많이 한거 하자. 본인이 이제 그 외인을 풀면 절대 안 된다라고 생각하고 올라가셨고 네. 음. 막상 올라갔을 때 선수는 풀어라. 음. 나는 상대하겠다였는지 아니면 뭐 풀어도 괜찮아요. 아 말의 뉘앙스. 어, 그렇죠. 음. 상대 중요합니다. 아 이게 포인트지. 아 저는 근데 이거를 좀 확실해야 된다고 봅니다. 근데 이거 네. 진짜 포인트예요. 어 되게 중요한 포인트야. 왜냐면 내가 이런 말에 도망치고 싶던 적이 몇번 있었어. 그러니까 저렇게 음. 말을 주면은. 아, 씨, 제말 듣고 저기 한번 기대봐? 이런 경우가 있거든. 어, 어 제... 그치? 알지, 알지? 어, 알지, 알지, 알지. 제가 말하고 싶은 건 네. 어, 네. 어느 상황에서 다전지 당연히 이런 중요한 경기도 포함해서도 언제나 코치진은 실수합니다. 그 외에는 절대 풀어서는 안 된다라고 확신을 하셨다면 그렇게 네. 하셨어야 되는 게 아닌가. 선수를 설득해서라도. 항상 많이 나온 난제 중에 하나인 것 같긴 해요. 제가 한 가지 첨언을 또좀 하고 싶은 거는 그 외엔 뱀이냐 마냐의 문제에서 이게 데이터가 있냐 없냐가 중요하거든요. 앞선 데이터가 있었어. 선수도 맞는 말을 하고 감독 코치도 맞는 말을 해요. 그쵸, 틀린 말은 아니죠. 사실 틀린 말은 없죠. 그 웬을 풀고 했을 때 승률이 잘 나왔다. 맞는 말이잖아. 음. 그쵸? 그 웬을 벤하고 싶다. 
음. 왜? 앞서서 이겼으니까 미, 어. 맞는 말이잖아 음. 그러면 이제 둘다 맞는 말에서 어떤 게 우리에게 베스트냐를 찾을 때 저는 조금 더 집중해서 보는 건 앞선 데이터 아, 바로 직전 데이터 그렇죠 바로 직전의 데이터 왜냐면은 아. 난 이미 충분히 증명을 했다고 봐 우리의 연습 경기의 데이터는 틀렸다 아, 그웬 두번 졌잖아 어, 두번 졌잖아 아, 그게, 아. 그게 그웬 때문에 졌던 뭘 하든 그 상황에 맞는 최선의 선택을 할수 있는 선택권이 있는 건 감독 코치가 맞죠 그러니까 뭐 저희가 <웃음> 뭐 이렇게 조언할 수 있는 위치인지는 모르겠지만 아무리 선배니까 <웃음> 어. 얘기 들어봤을 때 그냥 그런 얘기들을 해주고 맞지? 싶었던 네네. 것 같아요 네네 그럼요 네. 뭐 되게 많이 나오는 얘기잖아요 저런 사람들이 많이 데이터와 경기에 충돌되는 진짜 완전 다른 굉장히 많이, 많이 나오죠 근데 이게 중요한 게 플레이오프에만 나와 정규리그에 안 나와 어, 중요한 경기에만 나와 어, 야 그거 너는 단판이잖아 <웃음> 너는 단판이잖아 <웃음> 아나나그러니까 플레이오프는 해 아니 이거 말이야 네가 단판이잖아 니네 어. 그치 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 <웃음> 지환님의 얘기를 총합해서 들어봤을 땐 우리가 해왔던 연습 흐름이 있었고 거기서 굉장히 정답에 가까운 뱀픽으로 뽑았기 때문에 틀리지 않았다 로 가시는 거잖아요 네 그죠? 그럼 시간이 지나서 다시 되돌아 봤을 때 돌아갔어요. 아까처럼 아까처럼 그 19년도 아까처럼. 돌아갔을 때 어, 어떻게 하실 건가 사실 우승 트로피 없는 거 정말 저도 제일 아쉽고 슬펐지만 음. RNG전에서 짐으로써 그 이후에 경기에서 배운 게더 많다 생각합니다 음. 그래서 음. 똑같이 돌아가도 당연히 보완을 했을 것 같고 어, 기억을 가져가면 네. 어, 네. 네. 보완을 했을 것 같고 그 대신에 어. 후회는 하지 않는다 어. 네. 어. 이제 후회를 하지 않는 거는 굉장히 중요하죠 멘탈이 튼튼하다 후회는 안 하지만 음. 보완은 했을 것 같다 네. 네. 그러니까 변화는 좋을 것 같다 네. 그러면 또이 질문이 빠질 수가 없더라고요 너무 많이도 궁금해하시는 어? 그 질문이야? <웃음> MSI 중 격전 사건 <웃음> MSI 중 격전 사건 음... 이거 어떻게 때린 거죠? 이게 좀 어떻게 된 거예요? 스토리가 좀 있는데 네. 시크릿보드로 회의를 시작하도록 하겠다 지금이 어떤 시기냐? 어? 지금은 저희 시크릿보드룸이 활약에 절정을 달리는 시기 아니겠습니까? 아 그렇죠 그렇죠 뭐라는 거야? 그거 말고 이 자식들아 지금 뭐 엄청 중요한 시기잖아 몰라? 혹시 메뉴가 오늘 경기랍니까? 그것도 뭐 중요하긴 하지만 그것보다 더 중요한 일이 있어 LCK가 지금 어? 얼마나 진행되는지 다들 알고 있나? 맞습니다 1라운드가 끝나가는 시점이죠 그래 이미 절반이나 지금 지나고 있는 거야 그 말이 무슨 말이겠어 MSI가 이제 곧 다가온다 이 소리 아니겠냐? 그래서 오늘은 MSI를 대비해서 중간 점검을 한번 해보도록 하겠다 각 리그에서 지금 LCK를 위협할 만한 요소가 무엇인지 다들 준비를 해왔을 거라고 믿어 의심치 않는다 자 먼저 LA 너부터 한번 진행해 보도록 해요. 알겠습니다. s s 현재 진행 상황 말씀드리겠습니다. 현재 상황 한마디로 정리해 드리자면 정리해 드리자면 시작된 후니의 저주라고 너 설마 또 시나이니? <웃음> 내가 지난번 스토브리 그때 네가 했던 멘트 그대로 내가 읽어볼게. 아 준비해 오셨나요? 자 스크림 성적이 아주 좋다. 와. 고점만 보면 시나인이 무조건 우승한다. 이 정도면 월즙 8강도 가능하다. 아 라고 이야기를 했어. 지금 이제 저주가 중요한 게 아니라 왜 이렇게 되는지 원인을 알아야 된단 말이야. 왜 시나인이 지금 힘을 못 쓰고 있나? 시나인은 제가 봤을 때이 메타 변화에 있어서 되게 좀안 좋게 좀 많이 받지 않았나 그렇게 음. 보시면 될것 같아요. 음. 조조편. 조조편 아, 제가 강조 많이 드렸잖아요 시즈라인의 이제 핵심 전력 이 선수가 그 공격적인 픽으로 진짜 보여준 것도 너무 많고 음. 실제로 롤드컵 가서도 자기의 체급을 증명한 것도 어느 정도 있어요 계속 지속적으로 잘해왔던 거 팩트입니다 하지만 요즘 메타 어떻죠? 바로 아지르 오리아나 코르키 이런 것만 나오는 추세인데 조조편의 올타임 챔프 포그램 보시고 가면 더 좋을 것 같아요 보시면 이제 사일러스 아리 라이즈 
느낌 약간 오시죠? 음. 이런 픽들을 좀 선호하고 오. 보니까 코르키 오리아나 선호도가 저 아래 있구만 음. 딱 느낌이 나오네 라인전이 좀 약하더라도 중후반때 엄청난 피지컬을 보이는 챔프들이 주력 챔인데 그런 정확해. 챔 키원들은 요즘에 안 하잖아 어. 메타를 좀 아직 적응하지 못했고 이 메타 변화에 있어서 조금 되게 안 좋은 쪽으로 많이 받은 그렇기 때문에 지금 초반까지는 아직 많이 달리지, 달리고 있지 못한 상황입니다 아니 근데 이게 실력 아니야? 그러니까 챔피언 포기 야, 뭐 이렇게 좁아? 야 어떻게 아지르 오리아나 코르키를 미드가 못하면 어떡해? 아니 오리아나는 사실 미드라이너의 기본 아니야 그냥? 베이직 LCS는 기본기가 없습니다 <웃음> <웃음> 뭐몇 번을 말씀드려야 될지 모르겠지만 은 그러니까 지금 이런 날카로운 국장님의 질문을 LCS에 대한 기습적인 비난으로 해결하려고 하지마 그러니까 그냥 못한다 <웃음> 그래. 그렇게 말하지 말라고 그렇게 하면 뭐 이거 왜 하냐 분석 야, 나가 나가 이 자식아 Hello! We're back! Here in the LCK Arena at LOL Park. And hoping to get back into game number one of T1 versus Sphere X. I know you guys want to watch some more League of Legends, and hopefully we can get it done as soon as possible. I invite you to read this. So the Dark Forces that were at work is attempted sabotage as the LCK is currently experiencing continuous suspected DDoS attacks. And while we're trying our best to respond, the attack patterns and methods are constantly changing, which is going to make it very difficult to play game two. But after talking to both teams, both teams agreed to finish game one no matter what. So even if we have to continue to pause and then bring back the ping, down to a uh, you know, level where it's playable, and then pause again. That's how game one's we play. Game two will be played on a later date, regardless of what happens. So full refunds to anyone who bought tickets for this match. Uh, and then if you want to know more information about how we're going to be rescheduling, as well as more information about refunds, follow the LCK official social media. And we're really sorry about this, guys, uh, for, for those who are affected. For me, again, my my thoughts and my my most like I don't know uh, condolences. Let's say go to the ten players on the stage, uh, as I said before. But still, this is a really tough situation for everyone, as we have you know active sabotage attempted uh, at work, and uh, we're back in though. So let's see how if that teleport makes it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, the Senna root was not on time. And Willer's on the run, and Clear, meanwhile, is pushing the bottom lane. So all of this pretty much just a distraction attempt from the side of Fear X, as here's Execute just to help Willer get out, and that he will. Meanwhile, the bottom inner turret did go down. All right, golf claps for this team that paused for 20 minutes. Still got the teleport out. Rakan ult to protect Willer, get him out of there. Closer gets out, and they get the inner. After all that, got to say, mad props. Still, T1 will, of course, charge this Herald into mid. A little bit of pick up a turret themselves. So a turret and trade for turret. Inner, arguably more valuable as this Jax is well and truly online now. Trinity Force is complete. And let's see what, what, uh, what you, what you cook it. Did that do damage? I don't, I don't think it does. No, I don't think yeah. it does. But you might be able to get a charge on that bottom inner turret. Probably can. I mean, I nobody's mean, there. No there, so I <laughs> guess they just will. Uh, maybe, maybe clear gets there on time. Oh no, it's just not gonna charge. Okay. Um, so there you go. The Rift Herald is done. Mid turret went down, and you know the game definitely T1 favored right now, especially with the dragons. But still feels like this could be winnable by the side of Fear X. I mean, they're only about uh, two and a half thousand gold behind. They do have Azir and Tristana and Jax. So three, uh, it's a triple threat. You've got three potential threats as the game does come along. I know we did talk about the draft a, a very long time ago at this point, but um, you know, we'll see how they do play this one out. Yeah, we will, we'll have to see. Of course, the Corky for that next dragon fight is you know, still going to be sitting on two items, and you know, the package will make a large impact there. I believe he's only really used one package this game, and it wasn't in a team fight. And if I remember correctly, because it's been you know, it's been a while since this game has, has started off. But either way, uh, we'll see if they can get that mountain soul. It's going to be massive. Isaiah does not have vision, but he's reading this well. Let's see. Yeah, clear is getting in there, and there is a pause. Again, unfortunate timing. But, oof. 
Not much we can do about that as Execute is about to jump in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, Actually, as we said in the statement, game one will be continued even if continuous pauses are required. And so to further elaborate as to one location, as well as the both teams agreed they wanted to finish the game. They did not want to regame. And so both teams said, we are finish it no matter what. So that's going to happen. And uh, until they change their minds, which I suppose they could at some point, but I, I don't think so. That decision has been made. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to finish this one. So hang in there, everybody. We got a little bit closer to the end of this one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like two minutes, yeah. The the lead that T1 had feels so much less obvious at this point, and I'm not just saying that because we've had a few pauses, but they have been picked a few times. There have been some crazy skirmishes. The Jax is getting some side lane value, and this will, of course, give um, a little bit more map control to Phyrex, and without it, it's very difficult for T1 to set up on objectives the way they'd like to with this Senna Corky comp. The package, though, can be a game changer. As, uh, I just wanted to talk about the game for a minute and not the Yeah, um, I think it's pretty interesting that they, time and time again, Fear X are just attacking, as we have changed the wording of this, it, it's no longer kind of reported, it's kind of obvious what the issue is. Yes. Ping spike issue. Um, but yeah, they just keep on ganking him over and over. Like, even 23 minutes into the game, they're like, no, you know what? We're going to send our Rakan down there and try to kill him again. And they've done that many, many different times. So pretty interesting um, way to deal with the TF that if you do leave him in a side lane, he will eventually just take turrets. Yeah. Maybe inhibitors. So they've just given him no room. He hasn't really been able to cross the river, obviously, because he's always under threat. And even when he cleared the wave and then walked back, uh, it says basically the roster of T1 fighting here, Himne. Um, him nail, you said it politely, but uh, anyways, with an exclamation mark, with an there. exclamation mark, um, trying to gank a quirky on the other side of things with his Valkyrie makes it very difficult to actually guarantee success. Whereas Twisted Fate only has the card, and that's all he can really rely on, and Ghost, of course, uh, and his Flash. But yeah, a lot of different ways to layer CC on top of him, which has happened so many times this game, and it's really up to the scaling Senna and Corky. Once that third item comes through for Corky for T1 to win things. But you mentioned the three dragon stacks they have. They have Mountain Soul Point. So even if they give up a dragon, for example, they're going to continue to get stronger. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like you lose a dragon fight. Uh-oh, suddenly Phyrex is winning the game. They have so much time they can actually play around with. Yeah. It's pretty interesting that it is a Mountain Soul as well because, you know, we talk about how it's great with... Um, champions that are going to be building resistances, but also the Mountain Soul itself, the shield, is very good for champs that do not have as much defense, right? So can be still useful for the other members of T1 that aren't Tom Kench, because basically everybody else is not going to be building tanky that isn't Tom Kench. But also on the side of Fear X, you know, they do have a couple of tanks themselves, at least the one real one and the Sejuani. And we have been in scenarios like this before too, where the team that is playing against the Corky Poke ends up losing out on Drake Control, then they start stacking mountains, several of them, and then the Corky Poke and the Senna damage really just doesn't hurt anymore. And the Jax is extremely difficult to kill in that scenario. And even the Tristana with those additional resistances can then actually get on top of those targets and really do more continued damage. So it could be a problem if they give two Mountain Drakes and then the fights get a little bit tougher than they give a third one. I don't, I wouldn't predict that to be the scenario, but Considering the state of the game and the state of the ping and everything else that's going on, I don't want to make very many bold predictions about what the rest of this yeah. game is going to look like at all. Uh, we to don't be totally know. Frank. <laughs> yeah. Although it, it did look like, even though we did have the pause and the teleport timing, it didn't really affect the way they played that situation out. Like everybody was there, like immediately able to press their buttons and were ready to do what they had to do. So, yeah. I would assume that same for Execute, right when we get back in, he's going to press W onto. Or not W, but E onto the Jax, and then get right in there onto the TF, and it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Yeah, so, they should again, be. Again, the like timing going. is unfortunate. I don't know. I assumed Zayus had both summoners up, but I am not actually 100% sure about that. But uh, well, obviously, we'll find out. I don't want to speculate, as I mentioned before, but we will see. They were able to make the Great Escape plus Inner Turret take work out in the last one. Um,. So anyway, we'll 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 give you guys an update on the game state once we get back in.
Gentlemen, it is time to play some Yut Nori. Yut! 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 That's, that's just, that's this just is, the first of many Yut this, this episode. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a game that uh, people often play here in Korea for uh, the Lunar New Year. And so we're going to do it here. We have changed it up just a little bit. It is not anywhere near really the same as the game that you would be playing um, if you were a Korean family. But we have a canon. But we have a canon. And we also have a bunch of random questions. So basically, what this what this is is we throw the we yut these these uh, these things in, in the in the sky. They're paper that says back. That's not a good one. Um, but we yut them, and then we land. If we land on one of these that has the LCK logo on it, then we draw one of these cards, and we get to read it out and then give our opinion on it without any rebuttal. It's amazing. No rebuttal. It's like a superpower. And Thank then everybody else gets to vote. Yeah, if and then they liked it. yeah, and then basically the rest of the people will then hear the take, and they'll be like, "Nah, man," or "Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying." <laughs> and then we'll get points based on yeah, the amount dude. of years we get, and and we won't get any points for the nah, nah, man, that ain't it. So that's that's basically how it goes. How was my my description? Great, no. perfect great job. Now, that's a, there yeah. are there that's are some yay. Uh, there are some strategies I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, oh, whereas, yeah. pre- for example, if someone is a, perhaps going to overtake someone else, they may simply X every answer they say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we'll cross that bridge when we, when we come to it. We'll um, yut that bridge. Yeah, we it. there we go. Action. There we go. Not in my board game. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, a joke. Chronicler I love is never saying. never min maxed in a board game ever. Should we yut to see who goes? first like sure. whoever has the most like the most, really want to the most all right yeah. i'll go for all yeah you I'll should go first on time yeah, we should yeah, do yeah, you the thing first. where they do like a, a counter for right. yuts all right Here three two one yut 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 oh that's bad. not looking good oh. that's, not looking back, good. That's, that's a zero i got back. one plus back so yeah we'll just count that as a zero <laughs> yeah so back means you always go back chronically we'll go counterclockwise Oh, he's on a three. A That's a triple. A triple. Oh, baby, and a he didn't triple. even yell yut. Wait, does it even count? Because he didn't yell yut. yut. I mean, it yut. count. Oh, that's two. We're chronicler in the lead. I gotta get. I think it counts for this, but you have to say yut in the real okay. game. I gotta get so lose your turn, right? Yut. Back. All right, oh. chronicler oh. first. Yeah, chronicler's first. We'll go uh, clockwise, right? Let's go this I also way. Think in, clockwise, because right. yeah, yeah. I got and, second. And Kenny starts here. Mm. No, do it oh, again. you lost your turn. No, you yeah, lost no, his turn. No, you lost his turn. <laughs> 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 just, 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 just do, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. That's your one freebie. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Back. Oh, boy. Back so and I just one. Don't so st- Kenan, Kenan is, is lazy. The best part is we do might we not do anything. Do we want to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Oh, no, counter We've committed. Oh, oh that's, one. Uh, so that's one. That's one. No, 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 no. no. It, yeah, if but... you get it back, it's just back no ma- one no matter what. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. not minus one. We are one not moving draw. anywhere. Oh, wait. So then we go back twice, right? Yeah, but you can't go. I mean, I guess you could. Yeah. Wait. Back and then Brendan gets onto a thing. I'm, I like it. Yeah, Let's do it. it. Time to yut. 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 Oh. It was an X. It's an X on the back. floor, it and it's, it's a back. back. It's a one back because you got a back. Humbug. Yeah. Yogi. Humbug. All right. I'm maybe never gonna all... get to. No, even you're never gonna okay. take. <laughs> I'm actually pretty high chance because if I get a back, then yeah, you're I vibing. Get a... Yut. Oh, oh that's right. A, oh, that's a back. He did it. Finally, I get a card. Hell yeah. Which lane is currently the most important? Oh, I got the hard question. Oh, that's, oh, that's rough. <laughs> Good well, luck. It's, it's just very controversial. So, so, uh, I th- so do we X if we don't agree, or do we X? Yes. Yeah, I think so. We think, think it's not a good explanation. Mm, I think you guys can agree. decide individually um, how you want to exit or not. Because <laughs> maybe but... he's so convincing that he mm. wins us over. Okay. True. So I think everybody knows who's been on the space with me, which has been all three of you, like which lane I've been focused on the most this season um, and how it's been going and, and the impacts it's made. I think for the LCK specifically, the most important lane has been mid lane because it is the lane we are seeing the biggest lane gaps, like 20 CS, 30 CS differences in the early game without ganks. I think the changes to the rift have made it so it's d- more difficult to, if you have a bad lane matchup, looking at some of those bad drafts we were talking about earlier, if you have a bad lane matchup, you're going to get pushed in. If the other player is better than you and it's a bad lane matchup, then you're really going to have a hard time and you're going to end up with a call me situation where you're like, well, I guess I just can't play the game and the, my, I'm a huge liability for my team. But we're also even seeing when you have the proper matchup, you're losing lane anyways because you don't have jungle help because the other player is better than you. 
We are back. And as much as I would love to listen to more of your point, Wolf, um, we will cut you off there. If you guys are interested, you could always watch the Pog State. It is always a lot of fun to film and also to watch from what I've heard. So um, I, I went to go get more hot water. Is This is where we're at in this game. Oh, my God. Yeah. We're I'm pausing. And not much that Zayus can do. Again, just over the top. The Senna ult comes in, but he is doomed. Pause or not, that was going to happen. And I, again, Virax just keep attacking the side lane. I went to get some more hot water, and I failed because the, uh, the Korean broadcast resumed, and then I ran back here. So I'm <laughs> um, I'm very much jumping back to the action like everybody breath. else. Yeah. Um, You're kind of like the I mean, Jax. I'm, I do run, you know, quite regularly, but this is kind of like fear on top of, um, you know, the yeah. small amount of running I did, like about an 80 meter dash to get up here. Um, Okay, we're all right. Whew, that was very scary. We also had to climb some stairs. Yeah, I thought I was about to be fired, but uh, <laughs> I made it. We could always do the Valdez solo cast. And uh, or the wolf one, if I... Uh... <laughs> and g got my back. She she waited for me for the unpause. Uh, unfortunately, that'll be the fifth death for Zayus. And to bring it back to the game state for just a minute. Um, okay, owner, going in. Yeah, but a damage on Execute going to force the hop out of Henna. And you see that Closer was watching the last game, although he did go for Shadow Flame, which is pretty interesting. Generally, you'll see the Leandris come out uh, and then the Zhonyas, but instead it's Shadow Flame and then Zhonyas. Oh, man. And I guess it's just that a lot of players aren't going to be building too much health, although there is, of course, Viego and Tom Kanch. But he did get the Arm Guard in the end. And yes. And he's going to have that extra survivability. Killing... Either the Corky or the Santa instantly in this uh, in a team fight almost guarantees you the win as Spherex. Now doing that is much more difficult uh, than it is to say it because Corky has got Valkyrie is going to have package um, in these big team fights in two minutes. The dragon will spawn, so you've got to try to find an angle. If you can kill Faker or you can kill Guma, the Twisted Fate's damage output even with AD is just not going to stack up to Tristana as you're damaged with the Jax flying around the team fight as well. So. Layering CC, those types of engages are what Phyrex are looking for. And the Tristana, I mean, she's scaling on her own and can, once the range gets higher, you know, end up being that extra damage. She can follow up pretty well uh, with her jump. So it's not over till it's over. And let's see how this next fight breaks out here. In 75 seconds that Drake is spawning, Phyrex cannot give the Mountain Soul the T1. So they're yeah. not going to be able to avoid that one. Jax has teleport, so keep that in mind too. Maybe. He can put some pressure on the top side if he backs now, maybe be on the opposite side and then TP into the fight, something they could look to do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting that amongst all the issues is like both of these teams, they just want to sit back and scale. <laughs> Neither team is like, okay, we got to end this game. It's like both teams are kind of just sitting back, scaling either their, their Corky Senna TF or their Azir Triss Jax. And so we might be in for a bit of a longer game. Hopefully things remain stable. But um, yeah, gearing up for this next Drake. It does look like Phyrex does not want to give this one up. They are going to make a stand here and try to deny the Mountain Soul away from T1. And T1, you know, they could try to trade this for Baron. This is what the three Drake advantage they have really leads to is close call there and getting caught by Guma. There's the package take here from Faker. He's got TP as well. They absolutely are just going to contest this directly. Yeah. Interesting TP. I guess he really wanted to be there right on time. He has three and a half items already with the Eclipse and the Malignants done. He doesn't want to give clear time on the side. Clear is going to wrap around now. He's on the flank, but it's a long flank. So there's a big window here for T1. Yeah, the package, I think it's going to be pretty critical. Clear is on the flank, but they have pinged this out. They do spot him with the Senna. His damage already getting in on this one. We do see the TF ult. Utilizes. He is going to get in onto Execute, who has a McHale's very nicely timed as the package comes in. And T1, they are isolated. The Zeus is very far behind this fight, but Execute is getting pretty low. And now Clear is getting slowed up as Caria is just in the back line. The assassin, Tom Kent, gets the job done and will take out a couple of members eventually with the help of his team. That should be the soul going over to T1. A fairly drawn out fight, all things considered, but so many resources spent to kill Zayus, the tanky Tom Kench is actually more deadly than you'd expect, even with 
the build he's chosen does a decent amount of damage there. He's so difficult to lock down and kill. And the flanking Jax just does not work out. He gets rooted, which is somewhat on him, kind of just doesn't avoid that one. And then he's out of this fight. So imagine if you could pile onto Zayas here with clear during all of this. Keep watching clear because he's not able to do anything in this fight as the collapse comes through. And then, yeah, you eventually get the Twisted Fate, but Carrier comes in, the Rakan is down, this fight is so split up, there's no damage here anymore. And so much is spent on that Twisted Fate, the Drasana goes down, and you're sitting ducks as Fear X. 3,000 gold now behind and up against a Mountain Soul. Yeah, it's a bit of an issue. I mean, Carrier might just be unkillable at this point, um, especially once he gets into the fights. He's got great health, he's got jack shows. He has three items. Fear X, though, they're going for a Baron. They're looking for the flip. Owner tries to get in. He ults, and he will take it away with the smite. As looks like Willer also uses. Carrier gets hit with the Devourer as well, keeps him alive. T1 are in an excellent spot now, as Zeus, meanwhile, just bullying the enemy support. And Clear won't be able to get it done by himself. He does live for quite a long period of time, but uh, not going to be enough. As the root comes in onto the Tristana, and T1 finally triple kill here on the Zeus. And it looks like they know where Willer is as well. I mean, this should be the game ending fight for T1. I mean, they've got Soul, they've got Baron, Willer goes down, it's the ace, and they can push to end. It's looking pretty likely. I mean, with the Baron. Let's see. I mean, we got seven seconds on execute. He'll have to try to delay this. We have no way, right? on closer. I just don't see them being able to defend this. I think they're going to try to go for it. I don't blame them at all. And I think it makes sense at this point as T1, a couple of team fights later, and a mountain soul. They will be able to take game number one in about 30 minutes, plus a bit of extra as game number one does finish. T1 will be happy with that victory. Yeah, all things considered, as happy as they can be, but a wild, wild game. Um, ultimately decided uh, there in that final fight by a great steal from Owner. And he had a pretty good early game, too. I mean, he was going around the map. He was covering his laners pretty well. Top side, of course, became a little bit lopsided uh, after that one play from Zayas as uh, Faker remains seated. And... And the rest of the squad is already up. We'll see what's going on with that. Uh, some fans also wondering, but either way, a very much scale until the one team fight breaks the back is Faker <laughs> will have to join his, his team on stage to give the bow to the crowd and to, of course, uh, cross the stage. He's actually just going to walk out. We'll get a story on that later, maybe, but uh, either way, Valdez, it was a weird circumstance. The early game here, Zayas flashes down, right? And this is the beginning of a little bit of a comeback here for Clear. He did have a pretty good game in the side lane. But the team fight's just never going Virex's way. Very split up. Carrier also popping off in this game. The Devour <laughs> He was a the hungry ult. Tom Kent, man. <laughs> he got so many aggressive Devours. Not something you see every day, but when you're playing with Senna, anything is possible. Yeah, I remember this skirmish a long, long time ago where it looked like Fear X actually caught Owner and then Guma and Owner both get out and everybody on T1, well not everybody, but a majority of the T1 players actually live through this play. And it's very T1 in that it seems like you've got them, but you don't. And here, this play where Execute at the end of that extended uh, trade does so take out. <laughs> watch the package, it's just insane the amount of damage. Look at Henna. He, he never got to fire a single shot. Nope. I mean, he just hopped away and died to the package and, and poke damage. And clear, because he went for that long flank and got slowed down, it was absolutely the right call for T1 to actually destiny gate to the right side of the fight. And then this steal from owner is why I voted for him for POG, because frankly, I couldn't remember all of the individual plays we saw from everybody <laughs> else for the whole game. Like, Guma, I yeah. think, deserves a shout. Carrier deserves a shout. Faker's package was massive in that previous fight on the Mountain Soul. But... Uh, yeah, it was a pretty chaotic game, and T1 just knew exactly how they wanted to play this out. They had the better comp. Felt like a lot of desperation in the draft from Fearx, the Tristana pick that tried that one all in earlier and then just kind of constantly was behind. Yeah, so. Weird day. Weird day. Uh, that was game number one, and uh, we, will, we will give you an update on what will eventually happen to that. Hope that... Um, we can 
eventually finish the series. Uh, the game won, all things considered, kind of delivered. I thought that Firex found some interesting angles, you know, with the jacks and really trying to play around the side lanes. You know, you don't see that every day, especially from some of the east side of the standings teams. But, you know, they tried their best, and T1 still was able to get the victory at the end of the day. But, guys, we are done here on the desk for now. We're going to hand it over to the space. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for an arduous effort on the casting desk this evening. We're still here. Hi, I'm still Atlas, if you may have forgotten. I almost did. Um, I'm joined by Orcs and I believe Hooney. Um, you, they're, they're your names still, right? They haven't been changed? Not that I know of. All right, cool. Let's dive into the draft here and uh, cast our minds back to when this was a newborn series. Um, this was the draft. What did we think of it? I think one of the problems is, I mean, again, leaving the center open, we've complained about this all the time, but, you know, you have picks like the Azir who struggles and the Poke who struggles into really long range picks like the Corky, and it just feels like the Fear X composition does get outranged. Uh, they do have some tools to kind of deal with that, but I, I still think it's a hard sell with how safe Corky is having the Tom Kens to back it up as well. Yeah, I mean, this is like how many wins? 15 games winning streak on the yeah. center. Yeah. So I think it's, it's pretty. I'm not even surprised anymore, honestly, if Senna's just winning. So, yep. it is Bill Under, just especially at level 3, we thought, we thought the, we, we thought Fiorax, they're okay in lane phase, but they weren't from since the level 3 against Senna Tom, yeah. which is, that's no good. Also, TK was being able to just actually solo kill even animated carry, that hurts. Yeah, that was a bit rough. Um, we all know that carry is, uh, Tom Kench is legendary. Um, and it, it continued to be so here in this game. I think enabling Carrier with even more gold is just, um, that that feels like the blunder, uh, personally. Um, let's dive into our first highlight, though, because things didn't start off super clean for T1 in the early game. Zayus really got targeted, um, but this is where things started to go their way. Yeah, it felt like consistently Firax had attacked the top side of the map, and, you know, Ono starts with the Herald here, but initially they get challenged on it. You see Firax looking for this aggressive play, but they end up getting into a really compromised position because you see Guma flashes on the tower, owner's kind of safety, and this is when T1 start to collapse. This is like the really, really, really important fight for Fiorax because they're invested top so much, and this is the fight where around the actual their strength right now. If they lose here, they lose hold of the vintage, and the Jax is, the Jax is growing up, and here it's just like, it's so one-sided just being ends up on T1 because like, the Jax being ends up like, sure, like four death, a, a five death, but doesn't really matter because like just after here, it's just like Corky got the bounty on and the Senna TK was like already have a five kill, kill, put the K uh, KP on. It's just like, it's not only like TF, it's just the other were actually the main. Yeah. And the problem is, is that you can kill TF a bunch of times, but he still just makes way too much gold. Um, it's throws a stun card, you know, job's done. Yeah, no, he's still a mega valuable no matter what position in the game he is. He can also press R and give vision to everyone all the time and forever. Well, not forever, but just it, it is. So he was the support in the game. It wasn't Carrier Guma. He was I mean, it was definitely not Carrier. He was he was main damage dealer in this game. Let's have a look at our second highlight here, which was. The soul uh, for the mountain. Um, this this was uh, this was definitely a big victory. And Faker picked up the package and then just said go. Yeah, look at the angle and look how many people eat so much damage for the package. It hits two initially, but then both the uh, Azir and the Tristana fly over it and take more damage. Willa goes back onto the package and it's just getting burnt up. And then at the end, clear. I think it hit everyone but execute. Took damage from that package. So just doing so much work there. It's just like, I mean, the Faker just so smart and that angle was like so beautiful. Like no matter what, if you're act, they had to go on the right side. Otherwise, they, they're just going to get close on the left. So he knew that and then he made the all the, the the red carpet on the right side. It's It was really great. It's a good rumble play, you know? We, yeah, actually, yeah. can we rate the equalizer? How that, was e it? that equalizer is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so now we know exactly what to look for when Rumble is picked again. Just be more like Corky. Uh, let's have a look at who picks up the POG for this one. Is it? It is. 800 points for Faker. He will not be denied. He could theoretically still catch up to Chovy. It's funny. It's 777 DPM. And that's Which was Chovy's, Chovy's average, average over the season. Yes. Crazy. Yeah, it's all, it's all coming together. But yeah, I mean, this package was just... Considering the game had been a bit hectic before this, this just completely 
ensured this fight was so good in favor of T1. Managed to hit basically everyone. Uh, really impactful. And still really crazy to me is like being just picking the quirky even though it's like right now it's like it's not like actually like you know high presence to pick he just picked it up and then be able to still be, prove that still this pick is worth it valuable and also be able to carry it's kind of good and you know before this point he had the most farm in the game um i think it was over 300 at like 27 minutes so yeah definitely making it work Certainly was. And sometimes a boom boom damage vote does make some sense. My vote 100% would have gone to Carrier because he was a raid boss. Um, but I like this storyline of, uh, you know, Faker and Chovy fighting it out to see who's going to get up there. A lot of smatterings when it came to the votes, but uh, three of them going to Carrier makes me very happy. Everyone for Zayas. <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of <laughs> relatively unsurprising that there is uh, yeah. <laughs> no Zayas vote there. But unfortunately, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be the end of today's show uh, because the LCK is currently experiencing continuous suspected DDoS attacks. And although we are doing our best to respond, the attack pattern and methods are constantly changing. And it will make it and will make it difficult to continue with match 52 T1 versus Fox game two. After discussions with the teams, all parties have agreed to finish game one even with the continuous pauses and reschedule game two for a later date. So we're up to that point now. For fans who purchase tickets for the match, full refunds will be conducted and we'll further inform viewers through the LCK's official social media about the rescheduled match. We apologize once again for the inconvenience. This just sucks. It's just, it's, uh, it's a crappy situation. Yeah, frustrating for the fans, frustrating for the teams, frustrating for yeah. us. It just sucks. Just for everyone, it is just not good. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much once again for bearing with us. And we'll see you again for that game too soon. Good night. CLS에서도 만났었고 이제 LCK에서도 만나게 되었는데. 복권 제대로 터졌어요. 야 나이스 이긴다니까. 오래된 멤버끼리 이제 플레이오프 진출해가지고 좋은 성적 내보고 싶어. 어, 지우 선수 LCK에서의 대결은 조금 힘드실 것 같아요. 그래서 준비 잘 해오셨으면 좋겠습니다.